All right, guys. Good morning. Then Josh, Ella. Good morning. Now, na bell bell ke cook tiyan ante na. Don't think. Okay. Yes. So, how are you guys? How are you studying? Studying hard or hardly studying? Hardly studying. So, very simple. If you hardly study, always remember. After every June, there is December. What? No. That's all. If you don't, if you study, good. Otherwise, Dece June, December, June, December, it will keep happening. Okay. So uh, my name is Punarvas Jayakumar. I am the co-founder of Advait, uh, and uh, I've been teaching since almost like ten years now, more than ten years. I have taught over maybe fifty thousand students, and it's been a nice journey. So let's begin. Uh, foundation, I uh, handle law, inter I handle law and uh, taxation. and uh, in ca final law and taxation again income tax so let's begin my dear friends uh so this is a revision sessions so obviously the assumption is what you already would have studied there is one institute called icai i hope you know in that there is this book law book which you have opened i hope so you have at least gone through once correct that is the assumption because it's a crash course so plan is very simple we will uh, try to finish in a quick revision see indian contract act what i want to do is i took it in chennai actually a very much in depth uh, you know fast track generally not even like this it's more in depth almost i think if i'm not wrong 8 to 10 hours is there so it's like very very in depth it's almost like a regular batch only so you can do actually regular batch is some 25 plus hours but this is good enough So you please watch that. We will release it on my YouTube channel, Punarvas Jayakumar classes. I think uh, on Thursday. That's the plan, right? Thursday we don't have class, right? Yeah. So today and tomorrow we will. Today we'll try to finish, but doubtful. I don't want to rush it. Let's go slow. And tomorrow also we'll do it. We'll finish the other chapters. But on Thursday this will be uploaded. This will come for or almost how many marks? Any idea? First of all, how many marks is your sub uh, paper for? Ah, sixty. That much at least we know. Thank you. Ah, in this, how much? How much is uh, on track pack? Yeah, twenty, twenty-five. You can say easily twenty-five marks will come. And then, of course, we have four other chapters which form the rest of the syllabus, which are this is the Companies Act. Then, Companies Act, how many marks? Approx. Yes, very good. Fifteen marks will come. And then we have LLP one small law. That how much? Yeah, around five marks. It's not very. I mean, it's okay. We can finish it fast. Five marks. Okay. Then, ah, uh, the other two, Sale of Goods Act and Indian Partnership Act. Sale of Goods Act, ah, uh, twenty to twenty-five percent, and same. This also partnership also around similar lines. Similar lines. You will, ah, uh, you know, not twenty twenty-five marks. It's ah, uh, you know, percentage. So roughly, what is twenty-five percent of sixty uh, approximately? Sir, maths and all don't ask. We don't know. Yeah, around yeah, actually around like 15ish, 12 to 15 is what I can say, roughly. That's all. So what we'll do is this part already uploaded because for the lack of time, unfortunately, I cannot do it here face to face. But it's just like two weeks or three weeks ago I had done it in Chennai. Uh, it's very fresh and uh, you know it is material also. I'll give you no problem. I'll give you the material. Okay, so this you can go through. It's all okay, no fine. Uh, whereas the other one, the other things we will definitely do it in the, over the next two days. We will do this, not a problem. So we will try to finish it today. If not possible, no problem. We will take it slow. Nothing to hurry. Actually, today and tomorrow we can spend some time and uh, finish all these things. And this, if you study properly, I mean you will have a better chance of scoring in the examination. And BCR also, I have already uploaded almost around 15 hours of fast track batch uh, on my channel. So now, like my class, it has the timestamp also, so you can go to whichever chapter you want directly, and you can revise. So both, you please revise and go. It will help. And of course, all other subjects also we are uploading on the foundation channel. So please do it, guys. So now is the time to buck up and study. We have one month. It's sufficient time if you really. Study all these. Whatever we did last few months, you ignore. Uh, you also know how you have studied. I also know how you have studied. It's okay that you ignore it. But now, uh, at least the next one month, sit and uh, genuinely study. You can pass. So, I was a science student. When I only can pass, hundred percent you can pass. 
but you need to put efforts otherwise it won't be possible in this one month you should study like you have never studied in your life you have some college and all huh? or no okay college is like time pass anyway uh, you also know you study in college so it is what be calm be calm actually it has become be calm by mistake correct so there are, you go there and chill there nothing will happen but of course you have to study during the what time is your college what time to what time 8 to 1 10 to 2 aiva which college oh yours okay yours 8 to 5 8 to 1 sheshadri param okay no college is really got up okay fine she okay fine cool, cool no problem so you can um, chill there no problem yeah so contract act 8 to 10 all this uh, you have to check okay guys let's contract act you leave let's uh, maybe start with slightly easier one companies act will finish off and then one of these two will pick up maybe partnership act will as you wanted partnership directly i don't want to dive into that because i mean it's not the difficult as such it's easy only but let's go to a slightly easier one companies act companies act i will go to the institute material only guys it's a revision session so let's treat it as a revision session only so companies act right <clears throat> your institute material is there i am not going to do one line by line and all let's just do overview so what is this uh, what do you say one second Let's uh, see. Cool. So, company means what, guys? What do you mean by company? Artificial person, company. So, company definition is uh, basically there's something called Companies Act, as you know, 2013. Act means a law. Act means a law. There is something called Companies Act. And Companies Act, we have what? we have the definitions and definitions as such 2 clause 20 defines the term company what is a company no company as per the definition company means a company that's the definition they have what incorporated under this act incorporated under this act this act means what companies act or previous company law uh, so many other laws, previous laws, correct? Those laws, if it's incorporated. Now, the word is incorporated. Incorporated means what? It has to be registered. Where will you register it generally? Yeah, there is one thing somebody called ROC, Registrar of Companies. If you register, then it becomes a company. Is foreign company a company? We just said company means a company incorporated in India. Foreign company, is it incorporated in India? No. So, is foreign company a company? Think about it. Is foreign company a company? Actually, no. Foreign company is not a company. Why? Because see the definition. Company means a company incorporated in India. So, if, is, is Tesla, is Tesla incorporated which is in USA, is it incorporated in India? No. Then how is Tesla a company? It is not a company. Is it a company as per normal English? Yes. But is it a company as per law? No. Then what is Tesla then in that case? Yes, it is something called as body corporate. So, if you see body corporate definition in Companies Act, it says body co corporate includes a foreign company or a company incorporated outside India. So, a company will definitely be something which is incorporated in India. But a company what? does not include a foreign company. Why? Foreign company is a body corporate. It is not incorporated in India. That's the reason. But foreign company as per normal English is a company. Normal English. But here we are talking about law. In law, we need to go by the definition. So, that is generally what it is. So, ultimately guys, if there are like 4-5 people, 4-5 people, a come together and say, I want to start something. And they can start many things. They can start a partnership firm if they want to. They can be a Hindu undivided family. They can be a association of person. They could be a body of individuals. Right? They could also be a company. 
they could also be a company they could be a llp also it's their choice if they choose to register themselves they can be a cooperative society that's the best part five six people can come together and start anything they want if they choose to start a company they will be governed by companies act 2013 that's what it is like firm need not be registered hf need not be registered by default it will come registration not needed any association i mean can be registered again under uh, societies act or it can be uh, registered under cooperative societies act correct uh, like that but llp is a, you have a separate law llp act company on the other hand we have companies act so when we go to the uh, registrar and say boss we now want to register ourselves as a company he will give something called as after checking all the documents he will give something called as certificate of incorporation that is the certificate saying that you are now born into the company guys in my class you can eat whatever you want drink drink means guys don't bring old monk and all that yeah water and all you can drink please be comfortable that's what come come with comfortable clothing see i come like on chapadasi fellow good you should come like that only correct because you should be comfortable i don't like to come in jeans and all those uh, formal by hate formals and jeans also i come always in this this only i will be always so if given a choice i'll go everywhere like this but unfortunately society demands that we have to be very prim and proper and all that it's okay so the thing is yes you come comfortably because once you have comfort then you have you will you've seen nityananda how he is full comfortable correct okay you've seen sadguru always you wears comfortable clothing and he always is anybody everybody for that matter they have reached that stage so they can wear uh, not nityananda i'm talking about other people if you see be comfortable be comfortable and uh, of course you know you you can bring water you can uh, bring your food etc if you feel hungry you can start eating no problem i have no problem actually as long as you concentrate okay so you can eat uh, chocolate whatever you want but when you are opening chocolate wrapper open fast slow if you are opening more more sound will come so open fast right yes so anyway coming back to this what i was saying was you can see that no okay so this uh, company when four of us go and say boss i want to register myself as a company that fellow will give something called as coi certificate of incorporation the moment he gives coi this entire four people group will become a separate legal entity in front of those four people one uh, <coughs> wall will not come what will come wall will not come what will come veil veil will come correct wall will not come what is a veil then in that case a piece of cloth a veil is like your dupatta dupatta will come so can you see the people behind no it's like a you know very translucent dupatta you cannot see or opaque dupatta you cannot see who the people are behind but can you tear the dupatta if you want to yes you can basically they are trying to tell that these four people are protected by the veil whatever attacks will happen and whatever suing and whatever uh, contracts will happen it will be with the veil that is with the corporate status that is with the company that is called a separate legal entity that's the most defining feature of what company what is the defining feature separate legal entity means what owners are separate from the company so basically in a company there will be that veil that structure called company at the center two tier management one is the shareholder he will pump in capital into the company and who is the manager of the company board of directors board of directors management of the company who will appoint the board of directors shareholders only shareholder shareholder will say that uh, you know i do not know how to run the show you only run the show no problem i will give you money why what money in the sense through company i will give you the salary etc uh, and uh, fees whatever is needed but you run the show. appointment will be done by shareholders who owns the company shareholders so basically if i have invested in reliance 10000 rupees assume uh, i am the shareholder can i walk into the company and ask uh, and tell uh, mukesh amani sitting there can i tell get up this chair belongs to me because i have paid 10000 rupees no the moment you give money to the company that's it your job ends it becomes the company's money now and when the company goes and buys a chair for mukesh ambani it is mukesh ambani's chair or company's chair company's chair 
which means you can say there is something called as separate property separate property so a company has what capital of course separate legal entity separate property and all these things so which was the case law which you some of the case law you have to remember which spoke about separate legal entity solomon versus solomon solomon versus solomon spoke about separate legal entity so anyway let's not go into the facts of the case as such but yeah, solomon versus solomon spoke about what separate legal entity saying that the company is different from its members similarly one more case though it's not in your ism that's called lee versus lee air farming lee versus lee air farming there also what did they say that the company is different from the members company is different from the members let me show lee versus lee air farming so again just to revise there was one fellow called lee he was one pilot he was a pilot his name was lee okay then this guy had all the shareholders in the company who were his family members only basically started a company with his family members practically who held the entire share capital lee but then he had to distribute it among people for example you only tell public company how many people should be there minimum number of members public company seven must be there but i want to maximum unlimited minimum must be seven now i only want to hold the entire company shares can one person start a company one person company you can start but can i start a public company no so i want seven people on board i will tell i will hold 99% shares for remaining six people i'll give you 111 share just hold it like that lee had started a company though it was a private company but all with his what relatives only basically who was the main owner lee so lee was the owner so he had started a company called lee air farming private limited air farming means what he was training them to become pilots anybody who came to the lee air farming you could uh, train to become a pilot so he was giving uh, what do you say aeroplane lessons flight lessons basically so he obviously invested in shares of uh, lee air farming practically he only held the full shares guys he put in the capital he was actually one man show others were all dummy fellows others were all dummy fellows so basically he had the full control his wife his uh, uh, you know parents his brother sister everybody were there dummy pieces main director was him so here lee was a director lee was a shareholder and lee was a employee also of lee air farming why employee he was the main trainer he was the main trainer one day he was going by flight i mean he was training some student uh, some students was training the entire thing how to fly and all that one mental bird came bird was doing ci i guess correct so on full mental it became so the thing is you know that if the birds go and crash into this uh, engine part gone it has bird hits are there it's a, and because of that uh, many uh, damage also has happened across the world you know the entire aircraft has been damaged so this mental bird went directly true story this is by the way so this uh, mental bird went and what hit the engine gone what happens boom lee became what chakli no became what ripley died true story okay is there also is trying to fly yeah so he died so then uh, his uh, what do you say died poor guy then what happened the company paid crazy amount of money because employee had died no so there was this uh, policy of insurance so crazy that that if the main person in the company dies there is something called key man insurance key man key means the most important person in the company key man insurance crores of rupees they paid they paid to whom to the wife i had assumed the wife okay they paid to the wife she was full happy correct husband also died one problem gone full money also came second problem sorted life sorted now so if you see the thing is uh, paid money creditors i mean claim him she made the insurance claim crores of rupees she got so this uh, creditors are like no way boss i have invested in that one man lee that fellow only is no longer there correct so now you have to pay me money not the not mr lee it went to court what did the court say wife only will get the money why separate legal entity the court said lee is different from lee air farming 
No, but Lee is the same. No, Lee is a shareholder. Lee is a creditor. Lee may be a owner. Lee may be a director. Lee may be an employee. But here he is getting money as an employee, as a director basically. So he can get. Creditors will have no say. There is no difference between Lee and Lee Air Farming. You cannot say that. There is definitely a difference between Lee and Lee Air Farming. So this Madam Full became happy and all. And what? She got all the money. Why? Why did she get all the money? Because of what? Separate legal entity. So that is the concept of what? Separate legal entity. Very simple guys. Separate legal entity concept. So that is what? Basically that is one more case. Like that there are many cases. So nothing to worry. Some one or two I wanted to show. That's it. Okay. So Lee versus Lee Air Farming. So basically that's what it says here, uh, features, you see, meaning all these things you can go through, there's nothing, you already know all this, so nothing as such. Yeah, uh, provisions of this act will apply to what? Companies under Companies Act. It will also apply to what? Insurance company, banking company, electricity company, all these things, but provisions are inconsistent with the provisions are of Insurance Act, means what? Except where? If there are provisions which are different, then follow the respective law. So, when there is a general law and specific law, what will apply general law or specific law? Specific law. So, for example, if I sell this uh, mouse to you, Indian Contract Act will apply or Sale of Goods Act? Why not Indian Contract Act? Because we have a specific law already. We have a specific law. Specific law will always override the general law. So, if you see... Uh, here, insurance, banking and uh, electricity companies. So, in this case, there are already separate laws for them. So, what will apply? Separate law or Companies Act? Separate law. But if the provisions are consistent, then what will apply? Companies Act also will apply. For example, insurance, banking and electricity companies have different format of accounting. We have balance sheet P&L, no? You have seen the format in accounts. Full different format for these three companies. Sir, where will I study this? In CA Inter. In CA Inter, you have separate chapters called insurance accounting, banking accounting and also electricity is removed now for you. So, insurance and banking are there. So, you will learn a different format altogether. This is not your format as per Schedule 3 of Companies Act. So, then can you say it is going against Companies Act? No. Specific, uh, specific law will override the general law right so any other company governed by any other special act okay fine all this definition you leave so see the features features you already know separate legal entity separate legal entity we have seen now lee versus lee a farming and uh, which is with the other one solomon versus solomon and all these things legally separate from members perpetual succession means what for example there only lee died but will the company go on forever yes so, members may come, members may go, I don't care, but the company will go on forever. What is the only way to end the company? Through the yeah, through the law. That is what? Through winding up. Winding up is the only way where I can end the company. Insolvency, right? Next. So, you have a separate law called now Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. When you come to CA final, you will understand that Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. So, through that, you can end the company. Otherwise, there is no way that you can end the company. What's the difference between insolvency and bankruptcy? Just for your knowledge. Insolvency is for companies, bankruptcy is for individuals. So now onwards, when you say that the company is going down, you should say company is becoming insolvent. Earlier, before 2016, insolvency and bankruptcy had the same meaning. Now it has changed. Insolvency is with respect to companies. Banking is with respect to individuals and partnership form. So, in Indian Partnership Act, if you say that in Indian Partnership Act is becoming insolvent, actually now it is, you should use the word bankrupt. But it's okay. In your uh, Partnership Act, it still they have used the word insolvency. It's fine. But a law has been amended. It is not there in your syllabus. Leave it. Then limited liability. Of course, the liability is limited according to the liability of the members. That is the share capital. It's an artificial person, which means what? It can act through human agency only. Company can contract, sue and also be sued in its own name, but it is through what? To, through its human beings, through only human beings as such. So, basically guys, you have uh, in your question paper, I mean just to quickly glance through, this is your first ever question paper. 
uh, May 2018 was your first attempt. So, how many questions will be there in law? Six questions, of which first one is compulsory and remaining you have to answer four out of five. Correct? So, you need to choose. So, most important thing is those 15 minutes before the examination. So, from now, this month onwards, kindly do not sleep between 2 to 5. It is a really serious thing what I am telling. You cannot sleep between 2 to 5. Your exam, at what, what time to what time? 2 to 5. And 1.45, they will give you the paper. So, please do not uh, sleep from now. You have one month to the exam, 2 to 5. Because if you start sleeping now, in the exam also, you will fall sleepy. And even though you, because of the tension, you will not fall asleep. But you will, uh, it's all a reason of habit, no? Now, nowadays, I don't even want, need an alarm. By 5.36, I'm up. Because a biological clock, it will start ticking. It's, there's a clock within now. You, that's reason of habit. Same, I don't, if Sunday also, I feel like I'll get up late. But Sunday also, I get up at 6.30, 5.36. It's, it's become like a normal thing because of, habit. So, now you 2 to 5 if you rest or if you sleep etc. Examination also, though you don't want to sleep, you will feel sleepy. So, you have to keep your minds active from now one month continuously. You, what do you do generally 2 to 5? Study or I am asking, you sleep, do you sleep? If at all you are sleeping, please do not do it guys because it will impact your exam for sure. These are all small small points to keep in mind. 145 to 2, kindly ensure that you read the question uh, properly, question paper and choose the answers. So, you should choose the question that you are going to solve. Uh, each question you will write in one page or different different pages or rather same page you will write two three questions. Generally, you should try to write in different sheets if possible, otherwise no problem. Section numbers, is it important in law? Not at all important. No need to write any section number. Uh, but how to write the answers, case study questions, how to write provisions analysis and conclusion. First, you should write the provisions of law then the analysis, then conclusion. From today, you have to write at any cost one question a day. One question a day, you have to. How, why and all, I don't know. If you want to pass, you have to write one question a day. How many questions, I mean, how many hours your exam? 180 minutes. In that 20 minutes, you remove. 20 minutes is because of various problems that you will get where in your uh, examination all current will not be there, full tension. Then fan will not be working, tension, right? And you have to go to the loo. What happens in tension, you want to go to the loo, tension. Then now COVID and all is not there, but still they'll ask you to wear mask and all those things. The other fellow is uh, next to you or neighbor, you know, he's sick, he's coughing, full tension for you. Happens, no? What if you fall sick? Correct. He is having the cold, from everywhere it is flowing, joke falls, correct? Correct, and then you look at your face and do Akshi. Imagine, on your face you will get that spray, that barber will put spray, no? Like that on your face the spray will come, happens, anything can happen, full tension for you. So, you will go out for 10 minutes and you will come. So, that 20 minutes I am going to remove, all these things will happen in the exam. Somebody is getting married outside, stupid fellow. In outside your college, where you are writing the exam, he is sitting on the horse, horse is not moving only, correct, and full loud music, loud music, and you don't know what to do, and you have never studied in that, you have never written the exam in that environment, you are sitting in the school, nice environment and writing, there, you know, music, correct, now the thing is, music beats is so awesome that you feel like dancing, but you have, write, you have to write the exam, all that can happen, so 20 minutes I will exclude. Remaining we have 160 minutes, 160 minutes, 100 marks. So basically 1.6 minutes per mark. So it's a 4 mark question means 4 into 1.6, 6.4 minutes I need to read, understand, assimilate and write the answer. It is not easy. So from today you have to write, pick up any one question. So many question papers are there in ICA in the website. Uh, have you seen where are the question papers? There is one website called ICI, I hope you have seen it sometime. In that student section, BOS knowledge portal, there if you open the knowledge portal, some smiling assassins will come, all these fellows, yeah, keep smiling, you go down, they will make you cry, they will smile. So here, if you see, there is this uh, previous year's question papers. So there you go, 
then foundation so many papers you will get it's like a maze you have to keep on going yeah see from 18 everything is there sir i don't want the answers also there is something called suggested answers correct suggested answers is given by the board of studies okay one second here suggested answers so again foundation and again law here that three four years i mean four attempts they have given it's fine so you just pick up any random question and start writing number of marks you see time yourself see six point four minutes this is to read the question understand the question assimilate the answer and write the answer so it's not going to be easy you have to do it correct one apple a day keeps a doctor away you have heard it no yes so one answer a day keeps six months away that is my dialogue correct six months away it will go if you keep on writing that one answer a day six months you will save that's what so till today if you have not studied in the sense so seriously it's still okay at least now one month you should study like the way you have never studied in your life if you want to achieve something that you have never achieved in your life you have to do something which you have never done in your life that is what study properly so one month is actually good enough time if you start today and guys if you do not i mean nothing will happen if you fail also don't worry but i'll just tell you money wise what will happen if you 6 months if you delay then 6 months final exam also will delay obviously and which means your job also will get 6 months later what is the starting salary of chartered accountant 1 lakh per month which means your your 1 month othla that you do now correct right? what will happen you will lose 6 lakhs 6 lakhs you will lose for sure so that's why i am trying to tell please do not 1 month at least even if you fail it's okay but you should not feel that no i did not put in my best effort if you fail it's okay i'm not saying you know failure is bad we all fail in life it's okay but you should never feel that no i have not put in my best effort still no you are all feeling from your face only i can know i've been teaching for 10 years i know i can do face reading now the students i know that you have not been putting your good efforts best efforts that is you know it so but the thing is now one month is good enough time that's what i'm trying to tell one month you should change thing completely otherwise 6 lakhs gone loss one month is equal to 6 lakhs the next one month if you don't study 6 lakhs will go from your pocket with 6 lakhs you can buy a car 6 lakhs you can go on a world tour with 6 lakhs you can do so many things right you can travel the world with 6 lakh rupees easily you can travel the full world actually with 6 lakhs backpacking tour right or you can do 6 lakhs you can buy a car you can go anywhere guys 6 lakhs you know superb money it is so that is what it is that's the problem and then again because of this in inter also one one attempt if you miss out what i'm saying is 12 to 15 lakhs like that will go to do ca actually takes around 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees so by your one month if you are lazy two three people other people could have done ca you are missing out on that money you can sponsor two three other people to do ca think about it so please next i am whatever happened till now you leave it there's no point talking about it leave it from now at least one month you should study like you should do something that you have never done in your life like study in such a way that you will definitely pass the examination will definitely pass the examination for sure see the fourth thing is for us there is no point in doing this see why am i spending time to obviously do all these things because we really want you guys to clear you have not taken 1 rupee also from you that's not the point money is not at all the point the thing is we are i i only called you guys also that day because i want you guys to clear i want you guys to clear because the thing is uh, it is very important for us to clear all the classes here will be uploaded on youtube don't worry uh, everything accounts uh, economics everything will be uploaded but attend the class there is nothing as effective as face to face classes i know it for sure but i am actually famous for recorded classes but i in my recorded class only i'll tell that face to face nobody can beat face to face because i can see you and uh, you know you can obviously see and we can all feel each other's aura and that definitely matters a lot so anyway you're attending class no need to again watch the video etc you can just stick to it and if you want to watch the video also you can go to that particular concept directly and you can watch but attending the class is of utmost importance and next one month you have to become a different person what you have never done in your life you should do only then you will pass and again i am telling you one month is good enough time if you study properly 
after end of one month, even if you fail, I'm just saying, worst case scenario, you will have no regrets. You will be like, okay, I gave my best shot. Okay, next time we'll try again. But then if you don't put efforts and you fail, no, then you'll start. Hey, Chaprasi Academy, that fellow didn't teach me properly. Uh, my teachers are horrible. All that will come. I know. I've been teaching for 10 years. You will not see yourself. You will blame others. Correct? That one concept I didn't teach. You will not see whether you attended classes regularly. No. You were sincere enough. No. You did all the problems. No. Blame will come elsewhere. You know, elsewhere. So that's okay. I don't care if you blame us. But you will only deep down inside. You will feel deep down inside. You will not tell anybody. Deep down inside you will feel. No. Or actually I also did not study. That you will not tell outside. No. Because your parents have given money. Your two parents will tell. Hey, thu, Advait, it seems. Tabba Academy. You will tell all that. Correct? Then, uh, you know, then you will blame your college. In the college, they did not give me sufficient uh, support. Then you will blame your friends. Friends are not supportive. Girlfriend was always crying. Boyfriend was always crying. Correct? All that you will tell. And you will tell parents also did not support me. But then you will never, you know, introspect and think, okay, maybe I also did not put enough efforts. Did I attend all the classes regularly? No. Did I come every single day without fail? No. Did I do all the homework? No. Did I solve any question? No. So what I am saying is, in this one month, you can still rectify. Don't worry. I am only telling you, I did not, uh, you know, go for any coaching for CA Foundation. I studied on my own. When a science student, I am average intelligence. I am telling you that also. When I only can do it, 100% you can do it. You are way smarter than I am. I know that. So nothing to worry, guys. It's your hard work. You can definitely clear CA. So one month, you should forget about everything. And study like you have never studied in your life. Never ever studied in your life. You should go mad. Antara movie climax next one month. Correct? It should be like that. I am not joking. So, it should be like one month. It should be like as if some you are possessed by a devil. I am not joking. You are possessed by God and devil both. I am not. You should work hard. Like we all studied for 14, 15, 16 hours. Just like that. It was madness. It's a beautiful journey. You need to go through that. You have to. It's not just sitting for 14 hours. What I meant was effective studying. If you can do the 14 hours job in 8 hours only, good, no. But uh, next one month, forget about everything, guys. Worst problem is your social media. You switch off all those things. And all that chatting with friends and all that, you leave. And concentrate on studies. Do not compare with your friends also. They may be, they would have studied little better. Don't compare. And don't compare your answers also after the exam and all. It will create simply tension. So just concentrate. I am 100% sure you can do it. I have confidence. You should have confidence. But next one month, it depends on you solely. So we have done the fast track also to ensure that there will be a quick revision. But the other faculty told me, sir, vision only is not happening for some what revision. They told me. I asked them, how are the students? Are they studied? At this rate, they didn't tell specifically, they said overall. I mean, they did not pinpoint, no teacher will ever do that. But they say, I get a sense that they have not prepared well. You also know that's the truth, that you have not prepared well. It's okay. Till now, leave it. Leave it. I'm not even telling, oh, you didn't prepare, who, and all, I'm not telling. I am just telling, leave it. Whatever is that happened, leave it. And from now, from now, there is still time. I'm not joking, there is still time. But from today, you have to sit. I told you, no, climax, Kantara climax from today. It should be like you are possessed by somebody. And you should study in such a way that nothing else should matter. And foundation you can clear, guys. It's easy. Everything is easy. Inter also is easy. Just the pressure. Final is also simple. Final is like that book you have to study. That's why I kept it. Anyway, I have to study now after this. I have to go through something. So, yes. So, like that, those, those books will be there. Like that we should study. So, it's fine. You can use it as a pillow. You can use it as a dumbbell. Yeah, many, many uses for that book. So no tension. That is one book. In my office, 25 books like that are there inside. So you have to study all that. No problem. So if you see, yes, you can do it, guys. So will you study from today? You have no choice. You have to study. 6 lakhs, 6 lakhs. Think about it, 6 lakhs. After that, even if you fail, no, it's okay. That's what I'm trying to tell. Nobody will judge you. Nobody will judge you. It's okay. But at least you should feel deep down inside, I put my good efforts last one month. You should never regret the next one month. I am not talking about past. You leave that. From now. This one month you should never regret. Even if you fail also, it's okay guys. 
I'm just saying, don't fail, but even if it is done, it's fine. Don't say, okay, this fellow said failing is okay, let's fail, you know. So, I'm saying even if you flunk, it's fine. It's a part of the journey, nothing will happen. But uh, you should never regret the next one month. You should be like, no, I put my best efforts. I really slogged. I know till uh, first now that November I did not study till that time. After that I studied, it's okay, no regrets. Next time I'll do it, no problem. It is still better than, you know, listening to your own conscience telling that you did not study. Forget about those stupid relatives and all those things. Those are horrible fellows. They will ask, what did you do? What are you doing, CA? Which college? First question. You will tell, Cheshadripuram College, Hamanni College. CA will be from that college, you can tell, no problem. Then which year they will tell, what which year, every year we do, mm, every year, until we pass every year CA. In CA is the only course where seniors becomes juniors, junior becomes senior, I am not joking. So it, suddenly a junior will become seniors because they would have cleared the exam. Anyway, so section A in the first question, uh, basically every question will be for 10 marks, which are sub questions, 4, 4, 4, 12 marks, sorry, 12, 12 into 5, 5 questions, right? So. Overall 5. Question 1 is compulsory, 12. And remaining 4 out of 5. 4 into 12, 48. 48 plus 12, 60. So overall you will get 72 marks worth of questions of which you have to choose 60. First question is compulsory. Can I write 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D? Can I write that? No. Just stick to one question and write all the questions at once. Should I write 1A, B, C, D or can I write 1D, 1A, 1C, 1B? Within the question, I can jumble, no problem. So, in that, some questions will be, most of the questions will be direct. Like, see, state the exception, what are the essential elements, distinguish between wagering, like that. And some questions will be case study based. When they ask you case study based, how will you write? Provisions, analysis, conclusion. Provisions will be as per law. Section number need not be written, it's okay. But at least the act, act name you should write as per the provisions of Indian Contract Act. Sir, here I don't remember. It's okay. As per the provisions of Indian Contract Act. That's it. Sir, that con which, which law also I don't know. You can simply say as per the provisions of law. I'm just saying. I, you will 100% know which law it is. But in case you, in that tension, you forget about which law I'm talking about. You can say as per the provisions of law. That's it. As per provisions of BCR and all, don't write. If you write like that, I don't know. Right? As per provisions of economics, uh, logical reasoning, that I don't know, guys. At least law. There is one subject called law, right, that you have to write. Why this is important is now institute is going to change their syllabus. Final law is coming into inter. Inter law is coming into foundation. Yeah, so by the time, if you don't pass, I am not pressurizing you, I am just giving you the facts. If you don't pass like one or two attempts, they will give you that's it. After that, you will have to study for foundation what? Interlock. And anyway, if you pass, when you come to the next level, you will have to study which one? Inter, which is actually final law. Things are changing. In final, they are removing law. Stupidity, but they are removing and they are bringing everything to inter. So basically, in inter, it is difficult to manage the vastness of final, but no choice. Institute is telling, Boss, get up, wake up, you have to wake up now, no choice. So that's why I am saying, this is the right time, one month you just study. It's okay, till now, I again keep on repeating, till now whatever is done, is done. Nothing can be done about it, think about the future. So that's about it, that's how generally we are saying. Anyway, come back, we will finish this. So basically, artificial juridical person, all those things, perpetual succession, limited liability, all that you see. Common seal is a useless point, why? Common seal is the signature of the company. Now, common seal is no longer there. Correct? So, it, it has become an optional thing. Now, instead of seal, everything has become online. There is something called digital signature also, DSC. So, now everything is online. So, the Companies Amendment Act removed the concept of, this in 2015 only, they removed. From mandatory, they made it optional. Now, it is very op almost optional. You can use it or not. No, none of the companies I know ever use common seal anymore. It is always signature, digital, authenticated, authentication will be done by digital signature. So all these are various uh, concepts. Liability, 
liability can be what? Obviously limited, but there are certain things which are unlimited li liability also, some companies are there. Otherwise, it's what? Limited, limited by what? Shares or limited by guarantee? Limited by shares or limited by guarantee? Or limited by shares and guarantee also sometimes, mixed. Limited by guarantee means what? At the time of winding up, I will tell, I will give you this amount of, I mean, this is, this is the amount that I will give you at the time of winding up. That is limited by guarantee. Limited by shares means my liability is limited only to the extent of what? The unpaid share capital. Unpaid share capital. Yes. So, if you are feeling sleepy, it's natural because it's morning. So, you can drink water and all those things. You can keep yourself hydrated. No problem. And one more uh, psychological way is if you are feeling sleepy, eyes are closing. Think about caresults.nic.in. That result will be in CA results website. There one pink color dirty screen will come. There you have to put your what SRO number and all these things and hit submit. And round, 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 round will come. After that what you want to see? PSS or FIL? Yes. So then you remember FIL then you will automatically wake up. Second worst result is FIL. What is the worst result? Page cannot be displayed. Correct result not found. All those are worst results. Anyway. Artificial legal person. Company is an artificial person as it created by a process other than natural birth, of course, because it is a registration based model. So, it is an artificial person. It is created through some human agency. Common seal, all that. Now, what happens? Corporate veil means what? The moment I start a company, the moment I start a company, there is a veil that comes right in front of me. But that veil, so basically corporate veil refers to a legal concept where company is identified separately from the members of the company and also from the directors of the company. So when uh, Shri Vijay Malya, why Shri? Lot of respect we should give him because of him many laws have come, correct? Vijay Malya, when Vijay Malya went to the banks and said I want loan, there was a corporate veil there. The banks gave money based on the Kingfisher or based on Vijay Malya? But ultimately it is Kingfisher or Vijay Malya? Vijay Malya. He gave it to Kingfisher, definitely, that you are right. But looking at whose face, Kingfisher or Vijay Malya? It is always the person behind the show that matters. It is always the person behind the show that matters. But the person behind the show is governed by what? The veil, corporate veil. Like in classes, CA final, when you come, you will not care about which academy, nothing. It is only the person. This fellow is somewhere, I will go take this fellow's class. Whichever it is, all in, across India, there are so many faculty. You will have a choice to go through everything and you will choose whoever you like. Whether he is that academy name is um, whatever name, you will not care. Like that. So Vijay Malya went to them and said, boss, my company needs money. That is Kingfisher. So, the banks actually give it to Vijay Malya, but ultimately banks give it to Kingfisher only, but seeing whose face and uh, listening to which person Vijay Malya. So, ultimately guys, it is the person that matters and of course the company also matters, but Vijay Malya is shielded by the company. That's why it's called as corporate will. Today Vijay Malya is sitting in UK. And he is making dialogue saying that I did not take loan. Kingfisher took loan. He's right. He's right. I didn't take loan. Kingfisher took loan. So why are you behind me? So that's why law has many concepts called corporate will and also lifting the corporate will. Lifting the corporate will means what? The banks will say, Vijay, I did not give you money because of Kingfisher. I gave the money because of you. I gave the money because of you. So, I am going to disregard this concept of corporate will and make you liable. We will come to that, no problem. Let us see this first. Corporate will. The term corporate will refers to the concept that members of the company are shielded from liability connected to the company's actions. If the company incurs any debts or contravenes any laws, the corporate veil concept implies that members should not be liable for those errors. In, in, in other words, they enjoy what? Corporate insulation. They will be insulated by 
outside world. Solomon versus Solomon, I have already seen a similar case only, same. Solomon versus Solomon, it was held what? That Solomon is different from Solomon and company. Solomon is different from Solomon and company. But basically guys, they are trying to tell when outsiders deal with the company, there will be a corporate veil protecting the members, protecting the directors, protecting the members and protecting the directors. So there is this corporate veil. There is this corporate veil. When you dealt with the you know thing, you always dealt with Advait Learning Private Limited. Example, practical example. You did not deal with me. You did not deal with anybody. I have not even seen your faces. Only once or twice I would have seen. So the thing is, ultimately you have all dealt with the company. You dealt with the company. You don't know who are the members. You don't know who are the directors. You always dealt with the company. However, if I commit fraud, if I have commit fraud, let's say I have taken money from you and run away. Correct? I have taken all your fees and I have run away. Not even one class I have had, assume. Then, can you sue the company or you will sue me? Still you will sue the company only because company cheated. Correct? But when it goes to court, court can they put some fine on the company? Yes, they can. But since it's a criminal act, we saw it's an artificial person. Company committed the fraud or the persons behind? Persons behind. So, in those cases, court will say, company, you are also liable, but I will not allow people to hide behind the company and escape. That's why it's not a wall. It's a veil. That veil will be torn open and I will make the person behind liable. Who is he? Director. That is called lifting the corporate veil or piercing the corporate veil. Always me as a director of Advait Learning Prime, I am protected by corporate veil as long as I don't commit any fraud, etc. The moment I commit fraud and it is proven in the court of law, then what happens? The corporate veil is torn. Corporate veil is torn. It is lifted. And who is liable behind? Persons behind. Members also, directors also. They are liable for everything that happens in the company. So that is the concept of corporate will. Solomon or Solomon also same thing that happened. Now if you see, now the question may arise whether this will or corporate personality can even be lifted or pierced. Lifting the will. Lifting the will means what? Disregarding the corporate entity. Disregarding the corporate entity. So all the important, I mean, Things that we are doing now, I am just making underlying here, so it will be easy for you also. Disregarding the corporate means what? Banks are now telling Vijay Malya, you are liable. Kingfisher is not liable. They are anyway liable. Kingfisher is closed down. But who committed fraud? You. So is Vijay Malya liable today? Yes. Why? He committed fraud. He took loans and he did not repay anybody. He did not repay the employees. He did not repay the creditors. 7,000 crore loan he had taken that time and he did not give money to the employees also. Many employees, one employee committed suicide. Employee's wife committed suicide because of lack of you know money. That's what it is. Because in India, it's all based on trust. It's all based on trust. What is the, what is the proof that I'm a CA? I'm sitting here. What is the guarantee that I'm the director? Simply I told I'm director. I'm directing a movie. Chumma I told I'm the director. What is the guarantee? No guarantee. It's trust. What is the guarantee that I am a CA first of all? Degree where? I am. Have you seen my degree? No. Have you seen my membership number? No. Simply I told CA you are telling. What is my initial is CA? Correct. What if my initials are CA? Correct. So it's all based on trust. When I come and tell you that I am a CA, you basically trust me. There was this case in Malaysia only, that fellow for 25 years he was practicing as a chartered accountant. He was doing some scam activities. Income tax department caught him. Here only Malaysia. He, they said 25 years you are practicing as a CA. Then they sent one complaint letter to ICI saying that this fellow is committing fraud. ICI said, sir, this fellow is not CA only. So 25 years fake certificate is putting here only in Malaysia on next cross, two crosses later before. So he went to jail. Imagine. So like that, what if I am like that? I'm just saying, right? 
So if you see, no, no, you, my membership number also looks fake only, but this is my membership number. 232399. If you go to this uh, institute thing, no, here if you see members and if you select there, you can just choose actually, here members only will come somewhere. So you can uh, just Google search, say search member by ICI membership number, you will get. Then if you put this number, it will come. Looks only one fake, no, 232399, as if I made up. Whether I am lucky, I got that number, 232399. So that is my number. So basically what I am trying to tell is, anyway, this I all told you. But otherwise also, how, what is the guarantee that I am a CH? It's just trust. It is just trust. Very, very simple. Correct? So I think I had come to MLAC and we did one session initially with the parents and all, right? So there also we told it, we told that we are CH. What's the guarantee? Trust. So, in India, everything runs on trust. So, when Vijay Malya went to them and said, boss, see, this is what we are going to do. This is what we are doing. Bank managers trust. Definitely trust. If you want a loan, you have to speak to the manager and manager will trust your words. It is always based on trust. That's what it is. So, it is purely based on the trust of the other person. So, the thing is, but that has to have a contractual relationship. That's why we enter into contract. That's why we enter into contract. So, for colleges or for you, you guys, the receipt is the contract. Saying that, okay, you have entered into a contract with us. For you guys, your receipt from the college will be the contract. And the contract between us and MLAC will be the main contract where we have to fulfill our duties. You have to fulfill your duties, whatever it is. So, as simple as that. So, Again, now for example, today I will take fast track. Tomorrow I will say, no, I, am, I don't have the mood, I will not take. Can you sue me? Think about it. I will discuss that in contract. I have done it in contract. I am just asking you. Can you sue me? Uh, the thing is, tomorrow I will say, no mood. Sorry, I will sleep. I will have no mood, I will sleep. I am assuming. I'm, if I tell like that, can you sue me? You are all standing and waiting here. No, I'll say, no, I'm not going to take. You do whatever you want. So, uh, is that a contract? When I have told, I'll take classes for free. I mean, like tomorrow, that, to, that this example only. Fast track is free only. No, tomorrow you come, you are all waiting there. Poor guys, I am not coming 8 over, 8.30 over, not, I have not come. Then what? Can you sue me? There is no consideration. Correct, there is no consideration, so no contract. Actually, you cannot sue. But there is something else that is happening, which is deep. What is that? Breach of trust. Breach of trust. Correct? You will never ever trust me from today. Simple. That's true. Then tomorrow, if I tell something, you will tell, okay, this fellow, you cannot be trusted. So, as simple as that. Right? So, if you see, that's it. So, basically, guys, it's all based on consideration. So, everything is... Even company when you enter also, it's into a, it's like a contract only. So Thursday, please sit full day and watch that Indian contract ad video, 25 marks in your pocket. I can assure you that. So it's very important. So, and all the crash courses uploaded, that will, that will be uploaded. My subject only will be uploaded in my channel. Others will be uploaded in the foundation channel. Otherwise, foundation inter channel is there one. Go there and uh, go through all the stuff, whatever, like a revision and sit on it, no problem. Anyway, so for breach of trust also can be done, but ultimately you will pierce the corporate veil for what? For any fraud or anything for that matter. So the following are the cases. So if you see, where courts ignore the company and concern themselves directly with the members or manager, that is directors, the corporate veil may have said to have been lifted. And only in appropriate circumstances, courts are willing to lift the corporate veil. So these are some of the reasons where courts will lift the corporate veil, these things. It is there in page number 5.7. Trading with the enemy, where corporate end is used for, uh, to circumvent or evade tax, where companies from other companies subsidy to avoid a legal obligation. One or two examples will definitely take, don't worry. So, for example, what used to happen, this is an income tax, earlier, for individuals, this is an individual assume, for individual, there was tax. For company, they wanted to encourage more and more companies to come, there was almost no tax or very less rate. So, if you work as an individual, then there would be tax. But if you 
opened a company no tax so what would you open rather company because this was just to you know uh, support people from you know op to open more and more companies like foreign companies never used to invest in india why because of our tax rate politicians lot of red tapeism some 2025 approvals you had to take no one wanted to come to india everything changed in 1991 when two people who actually don't speak only a lot they changed the country who are those two people pv narasimha rao you don't even know about him because there is no movie on him not no article nothing he is the man who changed our country pv narasimha rao he was the prime minister and one more guy manmohan singh correct two people who don't even speak pv narasimha rao passed away also two people who didn't know, don't even speak you don't even know those people changed the country it was manmohan singh in the 1991 budget one of the most this considered as a, one of the best budgets in the entire world imagine he said enough of india being protected by everybody now we need to open our country to the world so he started lpg in economics you would have studied liberalization privatization globalization so he was the one who started and backed by pv narasimha rao two heroes unsung heroes of our country he said you please come and invest and then began our journey of development and today we are i mean more developed than uk correct and we have an indian origin fellow only running the show there a, you know complete you know turn so what goes around comes around it is really true correct what goes around will come around it is true with your exams also if you study properly you will pass if you don't study at least from now i am saying then of course you will not be able to pass what goes around comes around as you sow so you reap if you really study hard there is no way in hell you will fail so you will definitely pass don't worry so you need to put in that efforts guys it's all about efforts ca is all about efforts you will put incredible efforts correct all of us have worked hard to reach where we are now nothing comes easy we have to work crazily hard so ca is not for the faint hearted you really need to slog something like the way you have never done so i am not saying you are not doing it but you should do more you should do more at least from today there is no i am trying to motivate you so that you know you will start studying today at a different level 10 hours 12 hours minimum you have to sit you should only be three things eat study sleep eat study sleep eat study sleep you bunk your exam in your college gives you off or something no no okay you request them otherwise in class only behind you sit balcony seat and start rest, you know try studying doing something you have to manage no choice you have to manage no problem yes if your college gives you leave then go take take off for one month and if it doesn't give then figure out something you have to figure out Not, nothing is you know impossible you have to figure out anything anyway so why i was telling this is come back so this one fellow no he was earning lot of money and paying lot of taxes he didn't want to do that what he did the government was encouraging you to start companies and do business this fellow wanted to use company to save tax how did he do that rather than him getting all the money he started some four five companies all his investments he transferred there so now instead of him getting money who started getting money company and the best part was this company none of the companies was any doing any business all sham companies just you know just for the heck of it he had you know had those companies and these companies started giving back all the money all the returns to him as loan imagine super is loan taxable no is loan and income no companies gave loan to him he was getting 1 crore before as income he had to pay tax on that now he is getting 1 crore as loan he is still using that money interest free loan and income is coming to whom companies company no tax so superbly he did this i encouraged you to start a company to do business not to do this tax planning this is not even tax planning this is what tax evasion so 
income tax department suddenly from this guy lost 1 crore so they came to him and said sir where i mean, no, I mean tax they lost he said sir where is the tax he said i don't know i am no longer doing anything now all companies are handling so they went and said sir but those companies are not doing any business he says solomon was a solomon i am different company is different correct right? it went to court so the court said no all these things are mere sham sham means what some fraud you are doing i am going to lift the corporate veil of all these companies and make you liable why what are you trying to do yes evade tax case law you have to remember which one dinsha manek ji petit important you have to remember this name dinsha manek ji petit try to remember try to remember the name dinsha manek ji petit are you guys understanding it's been almost so many years since i took the same thing so that is one part one more couple of examples we'll take to understand one more is what uh, generally guys bonus is paid on what bonus is paid on what bonus is paid on profit right always bonus for the employees is for the workers factory workers factory workers bonus is paid for the factory workers on what profit so factory when they keep on doing this uh, you know when they start giving these uh, making these goods it is always based on the profit you will get a bonus this is given as per the payment of bonus act also every factory worker should be given bonus minimum 8.33% is the percentage you have to give them of of salary like that you should keep giving 8.33 is nothing but 112th 112th is 8.33 which is nothing but one month salary is what the idea is idea of law is 12 months they'll slog at least one month bonus you give at least one month bonus one month salary on profit so one company was there which uh, made quite a decent amount of profit workers were waiting for the bonus what did this company do they created one subsidiary company 100% subsidiary and transferred the main income here so workers were working for this company money was coming to subsidiary company at the end of the year profit was supposed to be let's say 50 crore on which the workers who actually worked on it had to get bonus but they saw in the balance sheet pnl only 5 crore profit was there 45 crore went off here so they got bonus on what 5 crore they went to court they said we have worked on the company sir what is the, what are they doing they said solomon was a solomon this company is different this company is different so the court went and investigated this company subsidiary basically it was not doing any business are you doing any business no you are just holding one asset here investments and income you are eating properly who is working for that somebody else so they said this is again cheating i am going to lift the corporate veil and add this income here only so again that is to do what why had you opened that uh, company to avoid a legal obligation what legal obligation bonus there workmen of associated rubber industry versus associated rubber industry same case like that there are many things then there is one more uh, you know daimler versus continental tire and rubber company daimler versus continental tire rubber company two english companies were fighting so when they are fighting i should see the board of directors who they are no i came to know that this company's board of directors are 100% from germany 
This was during the World War. UK and Germany were enemies. So when two companies have gone to the court, court is telling who are the directors. One company directors are Englishmen. One company directors, hundred percent are from Germany. So are you trading with a German company or are you trading with an English company? Though it is an English company registered in England, who are the owners? Germans. And Germany is my enemy as of today. Can I enter into a contract with them? No. So they said, because though you are an English company, I am going to disregard this and see who are the owners behind. Who are the owners? Germans. So though you are an English company, I will call it a German company. Hindustan Unilever, Indian company, foreign company. Just because Hindustan word is there, is it Indian company? No. So foreign company. Peter England. Peter England shirts, manufactured in Tirupur, Tamil Nadu. Correct, Indian company it is. Just because England word is there, is it an Indian company or foreign? Is it a company from UK? No, it is very much Indian. Hindustan Unilever, don't go by the name. It is hundred percent foreign company. So here also, though you are an English company, when I lift the corporate veil, it is Germany. I don't have any problem if Germans start a company. No, but war is going on, boss. You are an enemy. Hence, I will deem this to be a German company. So, contract is void. Daimler company and all that. Last part, all examples are enough. It's a fast track. So, Guilford Motor Company versus Horn. Guilford Motor Company versus Horn. Guilford Motor Company versus Horn. So, this buy two coffee fellow is there. Let's say he was working before in, uh, which is that place in Jainagar, man. Famous Idli place. Idli, forgot the name. No, no, in Jainagar, in uh, South Bangalore. Forgot the name of that place. Anyway, he was working there before actually. Let's say that other Idli place, I genuinely forgot the name. So, there was one Idli place. And uh, this guy, let's say, they one one chef was leaving from that place, and these owners of this entered into a contract with him, saying that you cannot start anything similar to this hotel. That's called non-compete. Is it a valid contract? Yes, no problem. You have learnt all the secrets here. You should not start. So this chef says, okay, I will not start. He said, I will not start. He will. He has written, signed everything. He will go, two friends, three friends, he will uh, tell, you start a company. Correct? You start. And I will supply all the, whatever I have learnt, I will be the consultant here. Consultant. Actually happened. That was Guilford Motor Company. In the motor company, this Guilford, I mean, Horn, Horn said, I will not do anything. Then he started his own company as a consultant. He was not a director, not a shareholder, anything. His friend started. Dummy pieces. Who was the main guy running the show? That guy. These people came to know. They came and sued the chef. Chef said, I did not start. You told I should not. I did not start. Some other company started. So what did the court do? Lifted the corporate veil. So the facts of the case lifted the corporate. And who is liable now? Chef. It is the chef himself. So if you see, that is the case here. Guilford Motor Company versus Horn. Guilford Motor Company versus Horn. Guilford Motor Company versus Horn. Right? Defeat or circumvent the law, defeat creator, defraud creator, and avoid legal obligations. So what? Corporate veil will be lifted in these cases. 
Now, if you see the classification of companies, classification of companies, there are various classification, guys. So, just one second, I have it here. You guys have got breakfast or no? No, we we'll late, we we'll late. Half an hour, 40 minutes and all, no scene, 15 minutes break, that's all. When you come to final, my classes will be from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. No choice. I am, I am experienced in like 12, 12 hours classes and all, normal for me. That's why I thought yesterday I told Sanjana, I'll finish from 7.30 to like 7 p.m. She said, sir, they'll die. Then I said, okay, fine, let me do it two days. Otherwise, I would have finished the syllabus today. But then I understand, no problem. One second. BCR. The BCR also they are removing in the new syllabus, which means 100 marks law. Students will die. Yes. Classification of companies quickly. On the basis of what? On the basis of liability. You have what? Company limited by shares. Company limited by guarantee. Unlimited. Limited by shares means what? Only to the extent of unpaid share capital. Limited by guarantee. Yeah. Switch off not possible because it's uh, there's no ventilation. No, you can sit somewhere where there is no, it's not direct. Come and sit here if you want, or there you can go. You are wearing everything now. You are wearing that full jacket and all. Still, it's cold. And then go behind. We cannot switch off. It's at 25. I can probably increase the temperature. Make it 26 or something. 26, 27. And I can decrease the speed also. Hold on. I mean, I can make the fan speed less. Yeah. 27 it is. Okay. Problem with that, no, directly it will come and hit you. So you can shift the place, then it's fine. Because if you're sitting there, most dangerous, direct hit it is. Yes. So liability, company limited by shares, company limited by guarantee, then what? Unlimited company. Uh, unlimited company means what? It is a company which, where the liability is unlimited. This is very rare on some 400 companies are there in India, that's all. Like that. But predominantly, how many companies are there approximately? 30 lakh plus. Um, I think it has every day 10,000, 20,000 companies are being incorporated in India as of now. Crazy it is. So, because now because of the concept of startup, etc., it happens. In Bangalore, everybody is starting up. Correct? Traffic is so bad, you get stuck in traffic. What we'll do is start up. So, the investor will be there. The main fellow also will be there. Investor, investee, both will be there. They'll look at each other in the traffic. Startup. Yes. So, company limited by shares, company limited by guarantee, and unlimited company. Then, members, OPC, one person company. Private company, small company, public company. Control, based on control, what is it? Holding and subsidiary. Then, we have associate company. Based on access to capital, listed company and unlisted company. Then others are there, government company, foreign company, section 8 company, dormant company, nidhi company, public financial institution and all these things. So if you see for example, if uh, 1000 shares of 10 each are there, A, B, C, D. So these are all the various uh, people who have purchased shares. So basically one is uh, 8 rupees paid up, 6 rupees paid up, 4 rupees paid up, 7 rupees paid up, all that. At the time of winding up, A has to pay how much? Unpaid capital, 2. B has to pay 4. C has to pay 6. D has to pay 3. That is the concept of what? Company limited by shares. Very simple. Then if you classify the capital, it can be like this. For example, authorized capital is 1 lakh shares of 10 each. Issued capital, 90,000 shares of 10 each. Unissued, 10,000 shares of 10 each. In issue, there are two types, subscribed and unsubscribed. Subscribed is what? 89,000, assume, 89,000 of 10 each, 
unsubscribed is 1000 shares of 10 inch. In subscribe there are two parts, called and uncalled. Called is what? 89,000 into 7. 7 rupees is called up, uncalled is 3 rupees. This is called uncalled capital. When will it be called? Generally at the time of winding up. They can, before also you can do or at the time of winding up also they can call it. Next. Called is of two types, paid up and unpaid. Paid is what? 6 rupees paid, 1 rupees unpaid. So basically, paid up capital called is 7, paid is 6, unpaid is 1. Which means I have already called, but you have not paid. So if you do not pay for some time, I can what do? Forfeit your shares. I can take away your shares also. That is all the provisions of Companies Act, which is there in inter, but just for your knowledge. So basically the Authorized capital issued and unissued, in issued you are subscribed, unsubscribed. So all issued capital has to be subscribed, at least 90% has to be subscribed. If it is not subscribed, then the issue will fail. That's why you will appoint somebody called whom? Underwriters to take up your shares. Then in subscribed you have what? Called and uncalled. And in called you have paid up and unpaid. Are you guys understanding guys? I am trying to go as slow as possible. Though it's a fast track batch, I'm trying to go slow that you, you guys will get it. So yeah, that's about the various, you know, types here. Uh, coming to the, you know, liability we saw that uh, shares guarantee unlimited with Coming to members, on the basis of members, what will you, what is the classification, OPC and all those things we have seen. One second, so I'll just, that is also written here only, it will be faster. Must be there. Yeah. Okay. So let's uh, see before OPC and all those things. Let us check the normal provisions. Small company, all that we'll see. No problem. Government company. So let's just see holding company guys, holding company, subsidiary company, important again. Holding company divide, defined in 2 clause 46, section number not important. Subsidiary company defined in 2 clause 87, section number not important again. What is a holding subsidiary relationship? What do you mean by subsidiary company? It is a company in which the other company has how much? More than, so I am basically directly diving into this, yeah, we will come to all this one person company in a while, don't worry, I am directly going into holding substrate, this one, page 5.12. So what is holding company, what is subsidiary company? Subsidiary company means in which the other company, that is holding company has two things, one, Controls the composition of board of directors or, mind you, it's or. Either this or it has more than what? One half of the total voting power. So basically, if one company called H Limited controls more than 50% of the other company, then S limited is called as the subsidiary company of the holding company. More than 50% of what? They will give in the exam. Issued share capital? No. Subscribed share capital? No. Paid up share capital? No. Total share capital? No. What is it? Total voting power. So these things are all keywords that the examiner will check. First is what? More than half. Second is what? Total voting power. What do you mean by total voting power? It means equity share capital. If they ask you issued share capital wrong, subscribed share capital wrong, paid up share capital wrong, 
वन हाफ ऑफ वॉट टोटल वोटिंग पावर दट इज इक्विटी शेयर कैपिटल इज इट ग्रेटर देन और इक्वल टू और मोर देन वन हाफ मोर देन वन हाफ मोर देन वन हाफ exercises or controls more than one half of the total voting power either at its own or together with one or more of its subsidiary companies of equity share capital only not anything else If there is anything else anywhere, it's wrong. In some of the answers, they may have given total share capital. It's wrong. It changed in 2018, 17. So as of today, it is total voting power. So if you see first example, holding company, subsidiary company, more than half of what TVP total voting power. Second example. Holding company, subsidiary company. I'm not holding it. Just H company and S company. H company in S company out of ten thousand equity shares, they only have five hundred equity shares. Is it more than half? No. More than half is how much? Five thousand. That is not a holding company. But H company has given a loan of hundred crore to S. Hundred crore. and in the loan agreement they have given we will appoint 6 out of 10 directors in s because we have given you so much money on your board of directors we will appoint our people 6 out of 10 directors we will appoint now tell me is h company holding company yes why controlling the composition of board of directors and mind you it is not and it is or one condition if it is fulfilled you will become a holding company controls the composition of board of directors it is or not and got it so control of composition it is not and mind you it is or one condition has to be satisfied you either control the composition or you hold more than half if you have both then it's a different thing again still you are holding company but Here the law says only one. Now, if you see, you no, know, let me just take another example. X Limited has sixty percent in Y Limited. Now tell me, is Y Limited a subsidiary of X Limited? Yes. Y Limited has forty percent of Z Limited. Is Z Limited a subsidiary of Y Limited? No, because it's forty percent, not more than half. On the other hand, uh, this X Limited also has directly thirty percent. So now, first, first of all, is Y Limited a subsidiary of X? Yes, sixty percent. Is Z Limited a subsidiary of Y Limited? No. Is Z Limited subsidiary of Y Limited? No, because it's forty percent. How much percentage does X Limited have in Z Limited? Ah, uh, directly X Limited has directly thirty percent. Indirectly, little bit maths now. Indirectly, sixty percent of forty percent. Sixty percent of forty percent. That is twenty-four percent. I have in Y Limited sixty. Y has in Z forty. So sixty into forty is what I have in Z twenty-four percent. Overall. Fifty-four percent. So, is X Limited the holding company of Z Limited? This was the question. The law says yes. Why? More than one of total voting or either at its own or together with one or more of eight subsidiary companies, either on its own or together with. one or more of its subsidiary company so definitely this y limited is subsidiary of x limited z limited is not a subsidiary of y limited but z limited is a subsidiary of x limited to you know not just directly but also 
indirectly through what through y limited indirectly through y limited through one or more of its subsidiary company apart from that if i change this example slightly x limited has 60% in y limited y limited has 60% in z limited x doesn't have anything now is y limited a subsidiary of x limited yes is z limited subsidiary of y limited yes x is holding directly how much zero indirectly it's holding how much 60 of 60 36% actually 60 of 60 36 so is z limited a subsidiary of x ideally no this created confusion among law makers in this particular case y limited is not holding z limited but still x limited is holding z limited because of indirect holding but in this particular case is the formula no a is equal to b b is equal to c so a should be equal to c correct that's the thing is a is greater than b b is greater than c all that you know that so a b should be greater than c using that logic if i am holding y and y is holding z don't you think so x should actually hold z yes but actual percentage is 36% so law created a fiction fiction means what law says it is assumed that you are a subsidiary when law wants to create a fiction they will use the word deemed you check this now here here you see a company shall be deemed to be a subsidiary of the holding company a company in my example z limited shall be deemed to be a subsidiary of the holding x company even if the control referred to in sub clause 1 or sub clause 2 which is that more than 50% rule is of another subsidiary means what why of the holding company x a company z is deemed to be the subsidiary of x even though the control referred to is through one more subsidiary y so general rule subsidiary of a subsidiary is also a subsidiary maths formula a greater than b b greater than c a will be greater than c so subsidiary of a subsidiary is also a subsidiary so if x 60% y 60% x is definitely a holding company of z undoubtedly it's not actually if you do maths mathematically it's not but it is deemed in this case why can't you take that because y is not a holding company of z or rather z is not subsidiary of y that's why i should do that mathematics thing 60 is 1 then 30 directly and 60 into 40 i should do but in this case slight change why is what a subsidiary so that 36 and 36 i need not 60 16 into 60 i need not do if this is also a subsidiary and this is also a subsidiary and that subsidiary of a subsidiary rule 16 into 60 will not come did you understand this guys yes or no yeah so one is direct subsidiary one more is what indirect subsidiary that's what they are trying to tell that is what it is then what is uh, the associate definition of associate in this example only for example here y limited and z limited let's just take that y limited is controlling 40% of z limited is z limited subsidiary no it will be called as a associate what's the definition of associate at least a significant influence correct associate company means significant influence means what it should have how much percentage 20% 20% of what again total voting power please do not go to subscribe share capital issue share capital paid up if you write all this you will lose marks 
Examiner will only see this. Have you written significant influence? Yes. Have you written 20%? Yes. Have you written TVP? Yes. There ends the matter. He will not care whether I have written anything else. Or section number, leave it. No problem. So, what is subsidiary company? Two things. Controls the composition of board of directors or controls more than half of TVP. Total voting power. On the other hand, associate company means what? Significant influence means what? More than 20% of TVP. Total voting power. Then what is government company then? More than? More than or uh, greater than or equal to? No, it is greater than or equal to. Because they have used the word not less than. See, every word in law is important. Not less than is not more than. Not less than means it cannot be less than 51. Which means what it is? Greater than or equal to 51. Of what? Here it is paid up share capital. Here you cannot try total voting power. It will be wrong. Government company definition minimum 51% of paid up share capital. Can you write law in your own words? Yes. Should you write exactly what is there in the Bayer Act? No. Except definitions. If they ask you definition, then you have to write exact words. It is difficult, but it's okay. But otherwise, you should write law in your own words. Correct? I will keep on telling write law in your own words, write law in your own words. What you will say? Yes, sir. Write your own law. Write your own law. Write your own law. I will create more than 50%. More than 50.5% creation of own law. Of what? Total share capital. Of total issued voting power. Create your own law. Correct? No, it is paid up share cap. Is held by whom? CG, SG or any combo. Central government, state government or any combination. It's called a government company. It's called a government company, any combination. So, as I told you, CG, SG or any combo holding minimum 51% of paid up share capital. Here it is both equity and preference, paid up share capital. Paid up share capital. So, example you see here, if central government, state government or any combination holds 60% of X limited. Is X limited a government company? Yes. X limited controls 50.5% equity share of Y limited. What do you think? Is Y limited government company? Okay, is Y limited subsidiary of X limited? Is Y limited subsidiary of X limited? Yes. Is Y limited also government company? Is X limited government company? 100% yes. Is Y Limited also a government company? You see, ideally no, you are right, ideally no, but see the definition. Ideally no, you are right, because it is not a government company, but see the definition. Again, I will just the keywords, means any company in which not less than 51% of paid up share capital is held by what? CG, SG, any combination and you see here. The section includes a company which is a subsidiary of such a government company. The section includes a company which is the subsidiary of a government company. So, is subsidiary of a government company also a government company? Yes. Why limited? Does it follow 51% uh, rule? No. But it is a subsidiary of X limited. Is it also a government company? Yes. Why? Because it is given in the law. Which is a subsidiary of such a government company. Couple of points and we will can take a break. So, if you see here, central government, state government, any combination has 52% paid up share capital in X limited. Is it a government company? Yes. This, this company X Limited has 23% equity share capital in Y Limited. Is it a, is Y Limited a subsidiary? No. Y Limited is an associate. But X Limited has given 100 crore loan to whom? Y Limited. 
and Y Limited, X Limited has appointed 6 out of 10 directors of Y Limited. Is Y Limited a subsidiary of X Limited? Yes. Is Y Limited a government company? Yes. Because it is a subsidiary of a government company. Last example. Okay, the fourth, three, one more example. CGSG combination, 51% paid up capital of X Limited government company. Yes. This company holds 20% equity share in Y Limited. Is Y Limited government company? No. Y Limited is an associate of a government company, but Y Limited can never be a government company because Y Limited is not a subsidiary of a government company. Subsidiary of a government company. What about this? Last part. CGSG and combination have given 100 crore loan to X Limited. And 6 out of 10 directors they are controlling. And X Limited now holds 70% of the total voting power of Y Limited. Question. Is Y Limited subsidiary of X Limited? Easy. Yes. Is Y Limited subsidiary of X Limited? Yes. Second, is Y Limited a government company? What do you think? Is Y Limited a government company? It's government company? What do you think? Okay, forget about it. Is X Limited a government company? Is X Limited a government company? No. Why? Where is 51%? Not there. See the 6 out of 10 directors, did you see anywhere in government company definition? No. For government company, controlling the directors and all is not there in the definition. What is there? 51%. So is X Limited a government company? No. If X Limited is not a government company, then a subsidiary of some company which is not a government company, will it be a government company? No. Is Y Limited subsidiary of X Limited? Yes. Is Y Limited a government company? Depends if X Limited is a government company. Is, is X Limited a government company? No. Since X Limited is not a government company, Y Limited is also not a government company. Then what is X Limited then actually? It is, not, is it a subsidiary of the government? No. Can you call X Limited a subsidiary of the government? No. Because CG, SG are a combination should hold 6 out of 10 and subsidiary company is a company in which the other company has more than 50% shares or controls the composition. Can you call government as company? No. So X Limited is actually not a subsidiary at all. Though 6 out of 10 directors are there. So what is X Limited then? It is called as a government controlled company, not a government company, government controlled company, GCC, government controlled company. Got it? So answer, Y limited subsidy of X limited? Yes. Is Y limited a government company? Depends whether X limited is a government company. X limited government company? No. Because the rule says only is a subsidy of such a government company. X Limited is not a government company. It is a government controlled company. Any subsidiary of a government controlled company is not a government company. Got it? So we have done all these things. Other part of the story we will finish after the short break. 9.40 it is 10 o'clock. That's all. More than enough. Quickly go and come. Are you understanding yes or no? Cool. 10 o'clock guys. We'll finish. We'll continue and finish it off. All right guys. Shall we begin? I'll just close the door now, last person, please. Thank you. Okay, so we were doing 
So when I release this on YouTube, you can just check and wherever you want, you can just pause. That's the best part about YouTube videos. You can pause me. No, you can't. Right? So you, know, you can pause yourself, but not me. So that is what it is. Uh, yeah, you can check and you can see these examples again. This is the neatest I can write. Beyond this, if you expect, then I don't know what to say. I told you know I cleared CA because of my handwriting only. The evaluator saw my handwriting and is like, if I fail this fellow, next time again paper will come to me only. So he almost was about to commit suicide. Then he thought, let me pass this guy. And then later we will see. That's how I passed. Yes. So if you see, my, my I am the best example to prove that handwriting doesn't, what do you say, depend. I mean, that then nothing depends on the handwriting to pass CA or not. Even if you have the worst handwriting, you'll still pass. As long as it is legible, that's all they want. Legible handwriting is what is needed. Everybody is wishing today the ultimate. If I ask them how it started, they will not know. Who started it? Don't know. Do you know who started the procedure for a separate state of Karnataka? Sir, first two laws, sir. Later, we'll see all those things. Right. Uh, today's Rajya Sao, that also we don't know. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Come back. Come back. First, we'll do law, then we'll do other things. Yes. So, if you see all this ten. This is all done. Uh, coming back to uh, private, public and all those companies, guys. Private company. What is a private company other than public company? What is public company other than private company? Like that if we write. Yes. So what is a public company? Actually, public company is other than private. Which means you have to see the definition of private. Private company means what? Other than public. Yes. Private company means what? It is a company, yes, owned by private individuals, no, no, not listed, okay, maybe, basically it is RLP points, RS, LM and PI, R, restrict the right to transfer the shares, these are the keywords that the examiner will look at, I am seeing here only it is there, page number, which page number, uh, there, page 5.10. CRS, these are all the keywords I am talking about. Limits, LM, number of members. Page 5.10. Correct? RS, LM, PI. Then what PI? Prohibits any invitation to the public for any securities. Prohibits any invitation to public to subscribe for any securities. RS, LM, PI, restrict the right to transfer shares, limits the number of members to how many, 200 and prohibits any, what, prohibits what, any invitation to the public for any securities of the company, RS, LM and PI, prohibits the invitation to the public. These are the keywords, guys. You cannot write restrict the members, wrong answer. Limiting the shares, long, wrong answer. RS, LM, and PI. How do you remember RS, LM, PI? Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha members had loose motion. Correct? And what did they do? They prohibited the invitation to the public. They didn't want the public to come meet them because they had loose motion. Like that, you remember. Yes, RS, LM, PI. Correct? They don't write Rajya Sabha of shares and all that. Yes. Lose motion of members, no. Restrict the right to shares, limiting the number of members to how many? 200. And prohibiting the invitation of, what do you say, uh, securities to the public. They have used the word securities, mind you, not shares. Securities means what? Equity shares, preference shares, then mutual fund units, derivatives, everything. This securities is defined in Securities Contract Regulation Act. Bonds, debentures, everything is covered in securities. It's not just equity shares. 
don't write shares, it is securities. This, I am just seeing in the crash course, we cannot do full in depth. To be honest with you, holding subsidy act itself in my CA final, I do for four hours. When you come to CA inter, four hours will be only on holding subsidization. That we cannot do now, there is no time. It's just revision. So in that revision, I am just telling you keywords. I am an evaluator, I will see only these things. Restrict the right to transfer shares, limiting the numbers of 200. That's all you will see. Other things you will not see. Then prohibiting the invitation to public to securities, not shares. That's all. So if you have written this, good. Then, if I am a joint holder, I am taking it as 1. Joint holders are considered as 1. And what about ex-employees? Ex-employees are considered, like for example, you are a member of a private company or you are an employee of a private company. I have given you shares. I am a startup. I have given you shares. Are you a shareholder? Definitely yes. But will you be counted in that 200? No. Employees who have been given shares are not counted. Law only says so. Otherwise, if I want to give it to 300 employees, then should I convert to public company? No. So to encourage companies to give shares to their employees, because if you make an employee, what do you say, worthy, then you will obviously ensure that the employee will do anything for your company. Like we have very good employees. I am not even seeing what is happening in Adwai, to be very honest with you, because our employees will take care. I will know everything. Don't think that I will not know what is happening. But what I am trying to tell is, I, we are not taking care of the day-to-day -day operations because we are busy with our classes. 12, 13 hours classes, for one hour of class, we need to research for at least 4-5 hours. The entire book, if I study, I can deliver one hour of lecture. I am not joking. So to do study that full book, I have to study. So the thing is, it takes a lot of effort. So if you give that responsibility and ownership to the employees, they will obviously do wonders. That's what the law is also telling you. Intention of law is that only. You give it to employees. 500 employees are there, give 500 shares. Does it make you a public company then? No. Keep it private only. That's why shares given to employees are what? Not to be counted. You are an employee today. One year later, you left the company. You are still a member, shareholder, but you are not a employee. What about that? Then also they say no problem. Because they have done very good work for your company, it's okay. You can still exclude them. So who are all excluded? Employees who are members or who are shareholders. Second, ex-employees who were shareholders that time. Who are continuing to be shareholders now also, but who were employees. At the time when they were employees, I had given them shares. So if you see, persons who have been formerly in the employment of the company were members of the company while in that employment. And have continued to be members even after the employment ceased. An ex-employee, if he buys a new share today, then he will be counted. An ex-employee buying a new share today will be counted. Ex-employee who had got a share when he was an employee, that is not counted. Logic I told you. Because you need to make the employees feel that they are owners. Only when they feel that they are owners, then you will get the sense of belonging. You will get the sense of belonging. So we have a library also, reading room. Reading room also, you never go see there. Because that employee will look after it as if it is his own. At the end of the day, we will know everything whatever is happening. But what I am saying is, we are not involved in the day-to-day -day operation. Because we are, of course, busy with other things because here we have delivered the quality education, inter, final, and of course, foundation, whatever. So that's what we have to believe, trust other people. Otherwise, there's no point. That same intention only the lawmaker has framed this, honestly speaking. So he's not stupid to exclude employees. He's like, if there are 500 employees, give 500 shares, no problem. But you will not count them as members. Then it will become horrible. Then it means that I can never give beyond 200 doesn't work like that. And I will prohibit anybody from subscribing. So when some of you said that it's not listed, yes, it's not listed because I'm not inviting it to the public at all. So this is what you should write. And all these dialogues are written where? One more keyword examiner will look at is this. Where is it written? In the, written in the Articles of Association. It is written in the AOA. It is written in the Articles of Association. MOA and AOA are the charter of the company. 
they are the external charter constitution of the company it should be written in the moa as well as aoa in this case aoa all these points rs lmpi should have been written in the aoa that's all should there be any share capital not required public company share capital not what is public company other than private company easy that's it then what is a one person company interesting to know that one person company is a private company one person company is a private company opc is a private company what about small company small company also is a private company so if i say what are the types of private companies if i say what are the types of private companies i can say three things private companies opc private company is small then other than opc and small what is opc one person company as the name itself suggests only one person will be a member one person will be a member what about uh, directors they can have this is the concept where sole proprietorship is converted to one person company they wanted many many sole proprietorship to be converted to companies that's why they said start a company which is one person you don't trust anybody no problem one man only can start the company can i have many directors yes in one person company directors can go from 1 to 15 no problem you hire people to manage your business but you will be the sole member tell me will there be any meetings of one person company no it's like you telling your mom i am going to coffee day why to meet myself for a meeting minimum two people must be there i am going on a date with whom myself now that seems all spiritual and philosophical nice but in real life meeting can happen only with two people correct minimum two so here in one person company there will be no meetings will shareholders meet what will they do meeting one fellow will directors meet yes because it can be from one person to 15 on the other hand small company is also private company only but in small company the crux is what paid up capital and turnover paid up capital and turnover paid up capital and turnover let's see that one second anyway one person company will stick to it now one person company means what guys private company only one person as a member it is a private limited company there are many exemptions for them that's why its conversion of sole proprietorship to private company many people are doing it because there are many exemptions given to them key factors only one person is member minimum paid up capital is not there the memorandum of any company moa what are the contents of moa guys name you write your name and the sole objective of your name is to become a ca so no you are writing your name and what is the sole objective of your name to become ca name clause situation clause objects clause liability clause e is silent capital clause association clause these are all the clauses of a memorandum of association one extra clause will be there in opc nomination clause if that member dies i should give it to somebody else that somebody else is called nominee nominee so if you see here memorandum shall indicate the nominee and you should take written consent of that nominee you can't just put your ex girlfriend's name there correct you should obviously take the uh, you know consent such person can withdraw the consent also and you can also change the nominee It's up to you now important there is been amendment recently this is important only a natural person can become a opc means one company cannot start an opc it should be a natural person natural person means what individual individual second he should be an indian citizen third he should be a resident what is the change amendment is this nirmala aunty nirmala sitaraman she told that 
I want more and more fellows from abroad who are NRIs to come back to India. The reason why they actually shifted from our country is because they could not, that time when they shifted, Indians were in India, it was not allowed for them to do a lot of business. So they shifted abroad. Many people study here and go abroad. Why? For better opportunities. My Many of my friends are settled in Canada and other parts, Australia, USA. They are very happy there because standard of living is there. They also pay 30-40% tax, but they get the returns there. Here our politicians will eat. There, at least you get the return. So they go and shift there. Nirmal auntie wanted them to come back. So it's called reverse brain drain. Brain drain means what? From India, the, the brains. You see, every big company in the world, in the top management, our fellows will be there. Our fellows will be there. If you see any company, I'm not joking. Correct? Now, even Twitter, I mean, that fellow was thrown out. But anyway, Twitter also had an Indian, Adobe Indian, Cisco Indian, every single foreign company, if you see, in the board of directors, one Indian will be there for sure, 100%. Correct? Countries only are being ruled now. UK is being ruled by an Indian origin man. Correct? And you see Google, Microsoft, Satya Nadella, Sundar Pichai, see Indian origin. So if you see, top management will be there. So Nirmala Aunty wanted reverse. If they can come here and start, if they want to do some sole proprietary thing, I can give them a chance. So, this one. Or otherwise. Otherwise means what? Non-resident Indian. Resident or otherwise. Otherwise means other than resident. Means what? Non-resident. Otherwise doesn't include foreigner. Foreigner cannot come and take over, start on company here. In the sense as an OPC. So, it is basically now the rule is natural person, Indian citizen who is a resident, or an Indian citizen who is a non-resident, which is simply called NRI, non-resident Indian, and has stayed in India for a period of not less than 120 days during the immediately preceding financial year. Even if you are a non-resident Indian, you should have come to India and if you have stayed for 120 days at least. When? Previous year. I should know that you want to start business, right? Who is a resident? You should have stayed in India for minimum 120 days. Non-resident, as per the rule, non-resident should non-resident to be a resident, you should have stayed for minimum 180 days, 4 out of 10 previous years, all that rule is there in income tax, etc. Here they are relaxing it. Instead of 180 days, what they are doing? 120 days. And should you stay for 4 years? No, you are a non-resident. Please come and stay here, no problem. And see, and it is. I stayed in India for a period of how much? Not less than 120 days. If you are a resident, anyway you are dying here only, no problem. For a non-resident, at least you should have stayed how long? 120 days. 120 days is what? From 4 months. That's all. If you have stayed 4 months in the previous year, I will give you, you are eligible to become what? To start a OPC. Don't come for trip year and start OPC. Not allowed. Right? You come to India, stay for a while, 4 months. You want to come back to India? Good. I am allowing you. You don't want to trust anybody and start any company? No problem. You start on your own. I will give you a chance to become a OPC. So this was 180 days. That also they changed to 120. Two changes. Change number one is this. Change number two is this. Important. Because it has been amended. Okay. So one person, can he have more than one OPC? No. So Mr. A can have OPC A. OPC B not possible. But A's friend B is there. He is starting OPC B. Can he make A as a nominee? Yes. So maximum A can have one OPC. Then he can be the nominee of another OPC. That's it. Nominee of another OPC. Sir, what if B dies? If B dies... A has to now take up either OPC B or he should continue his OPC. So law gives him a choice. You take your call, I will give you some time and then you can choose one. In the other one you have to exit. Or you can appoint one more nominee and come back. Now you can exit, no problem. Can you be a nominee in two companies? No. Can you be an OPC of two companies? No. One OPC, one nominee, that's it. And conditions, natural person, Indian citizen, resident or non-resident, whatever it is, should have stayed in India for at least 
120 days where in the immediately preceding financial year for me to be called I mean, eligible to be to hold a OPC. So this came recently one year ago where Nirmala auntie wanted people to come back to India as per whatever she got information she said okay I will allow this to happen amended accordingly. So all these things one member company encourage entrepreneurship and corporatization procedural requirements are very simplified separate legal entity will be there limited liability. How separate legal entity if you die no problem you can uh, have a nominee. So perpetual succession will be there. Sir can I convert that can I incorporate that into a section 8 company no section 8 company is for charitable purpose not possible. There was one uh, this thing conversion of OPC to private company etc that all has been removed recently. Private company done uh, small company now small company. Small company is other than public company means what small company is a private company. Paid up capital this 50 lakh is as per law or higher amount has the higher amount been prescribed already yes shall not be more than 10 crore. So you see. So guys as per law it is how much 50 lakh or higher amount has higher amount been prescribed as of today yes 2 crore turnover 2 crore or higher amount has the higher amount been prescribed yes 20 crore. So what is small company this one now small company is a company private company where paid up capital is less than or equal to 2 crore plus turnover is less than or equal to 20 crore. This is the as of thing as of now this is what it is. This is very very important why because in 2022 this limit also is changed which means from the next attempt this limit is no longer the same which means last time ever CA institute can give a question on this old limits will be when this attempt. Why? Next attempt onwards these limits have been changed. What is the change? I am not discussing. It will confuse you obviously. Which means the last time ever these limits can be asked in the exam will be the coming attempt for you. That is November 22. December 22. From May, June 23 onwards small company definition will change. So institute whenever whatever is going they will ask that only because it is going. So I am just saying this is an important uh, thing. This 2 crore and 20 crore has been changed now. What is the change? I am not confusing you. Leave it. The last time ever in the exam they can ask you this one. What is a small company? Private company whose paid up capital is less than or equal to 2 crore or sorry and and turnover is less than or equal to 20 crore. 20 crore that is called as a small company. Both conditions must be satisfied. It should be less than or equal to 2 CR and less than or equal to 20 crore. Both conditions have to be satisfied undoubtedly. Both have to be satisfied. So if you see this 50 lakhs is not there because higher amount is already given 2 crore. Similarly 2 crore is not there because higher amount of 20 crore is already given. This 2 crore also can be increased whenever they want. Maximum government can increase up to how much? 10 crore. Between 2 crore and 10 crore they can increase any amount they want. As of today they have increased it. Similarly, here how much is it? Higher amount is 20 crore. They can go up to 100 crore. So, government as per law it was 50 lakh and 2 crore. Government has already increased to 2 crore and 20 crore. They can still go higher up to 10 crore whenever they want. This also 100 crore whenever they want. 10 years later they can tell small company is a company where 
Head of capital is less than or equal to 10 crore. Turnover is less than or equal to 99 crore. They can tell. In between, they can increase. They have already increased now. Somewhere here. This will come in June 23 onwards. This limit will come last time ever if it comes December 22. Got it? Understood? Yes. And this small company should be a standalone company. It should not have any holding subsidy relationship. It cannot be a Section 8 company. It should be a normal, pure, standalone company without any relationship. If it has a holding company, subsidy company, etc., all these things will not apply. It means small company is only, benefit is given only if it is standalone. Means what? It should not be linked to any other company. It should not be linked to any other company. That they have given here, see, I already discussed 2 crore to 20 crore. 1421. In 22, again increased. This is the last time ever, last attempt. Next attempt, it will change. So, public companies other than private company. Very simple. What is the minimum number of people for public company? 7. Maximum unlimited. Private company minimum 2. Maximum 200. Yes. In that 200, I will exclude employees who are members. Ex-employees who had become members that time. I will exclude. Holding subsidiary done, all this associate done. A listed company means whose shares are listed in the stock exchange. Not just shares, securities are listed in the stock exchange. Unlisted is obviously other than listed company. Other things are fine, guys. Foreign company is a company which is not incorporated in India, but incorporated outside India, but has a place of business in India, either directly or through some, uh, you know, uh, online mode also. And uh, private uh, foreign company actually is a predominantly body corporate. Section 8 company is what? It is only for charitable purposes. Predominantly, commerce, art, science, sports, education, research, social welfare, religion, charity, protection of environment and all these things. So all your colleges, commerce, art, science, sports, education. That's why if you see, believe it or not, colleges, colleges, they are called charitable organizations. Your colleges eat money, no? They will not pay it's not called profit only. It is all charity. All your colleges will be registered under a trust. You see any college, they will register under a charitable trust. So your college, whatever you are giving them is charity. Correct? I am not joking. In tax, for tax saving purposes, every college is taken as this thing. What about BCCI? It is a charitable organization. Believe it or not. It's a sports body. Association, charitable, doesn't pay tax. IPL, it mints money, doesn't pay tax. Recent Supreme Court judgment has come. I released a video on it. So, that Supreme Court judgment has said, bro, what is this? IPL are minting money. Now, you are telling it's not for profit. So, just recently, October 19th, one Supreme Court deadly judgment has come. Where they have told all these schools, colleges and this uh, BCCI and all, they have to start paying tax. Now, all these colleges will be shivering because till now they are minting money now it is not possible if you see all these big big builders all will combine and start colleges why conversion of black money to white money that's the reason and it's easy tax will give you thinking that you are charitable organization even see section 8 company you can start a section 8 company also where commerce art science sports education sports bcci Correct? Education, research, social welfare, religion, charity, protection of environment, all these things are called what? Charitable objects. Even though you make profit out of it, it's called charitable object. Right? So, you should remember all these things. But the recent Supreme Court decision has told, no, object is one thing. Second one is profit. If you have an intention to make, how can you say schools and colleges don't make profit? Huge profits they make. They make huge profits, right? So, you can never call it as a charitable organization. Whenever we go for college tie-ups, we have many college tie-ups. When we go, that we meet trustees only. First thing they tell is this only. Sir, we are a charitable organization. 
said, bro, I have seen your campus. Why do you lie? We are a charitable organization. We are only there for the betterment of students. Correct? You should never tell that. Lie it is. Correct? I will never say that. I am not here only for the better, only for the betterment. I am definitely there for the betterment, but that's not the only objective. Our shelter, car, everything comes from you only. Correct? Simple. I am very honest about it. We are not a charitable or Advait is not a charitable organization. Our library reading room is not a charitable organization. You have to pay money and you have to come. But it is very reasonable. I never could study under proper, uh, you know, there was no library for me when I was studying. I should go to the Jayanagar library. So we had thought that once we become CS, if at all we have some extra money, we will build a reading room. We built, is it charity? No way. But we will charge reasonable amount. We will not charge 10,000 rupees per month and all. 1,000, 2,000, whatever it is. I don't even know the rates now. Uh, 1 or 2,000, 2 and a half thousand maximum it will be per month. Full day you sit and 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. you study. That's it. So tomorrow you can't come to me and say, sir, it's a charitable. No, it's not charity. I'm telling you it's not charity. But it is not exorbitant. You will wear, you will think, oh, no, no, it's not like that. No. Right? Very simple. So, even for example, any fees that we charge also is extremely reasonable because we pay a lot to our faculty. As simple as that, 450, 500 hours if they take, uh, we pay good sum per hourly rate, uh, which means we are not left with much. It's okay. But I will never call myself charity because it's not. But the schools and colleges call themselves charitable organization, which is what very annoying. When we come to discuss the financials, we'll say, sir, this is the rate, sir, we have to give quality. No, no, we are charity. Please take, give it less. Are you reducing the fee? No. From the students? No. You are minting money from the students. So you should pass it on like that. So that new judgment, no, will change all these meanings later. So if you see, charitable object is one. Second one, do you have a profit-making objective? If that is the case, things will change. But a charitable organization in this Section 8 company will not have a Profit making objective. Even if it makes profit, it should flow it back into that Section 8 company. Can it give dividend to shareholders? No. These are the features of what? See, prohibiting the payment of dividend. This is a feature of Section 8 company. So, license will be given if all these things are satisfied. If it is not satisfied, can government withdraw the license? Yes. This is a Section 8 company. So, if you want to open a college, you can open it as a Section 8 company. You can open it as a charitable trust. You can open it as a society. 99.99% of all colleges are run by trust. Trust, there will be trustees. So, it's actually a charitable organization. And uh, that company cannot add the word limited or private limited. If it's a private limited company, you will add the word private limited. If it's a public company, you will add the word limited. Such companies cannot add any of these things there. Which company? Section 8 companies. Then revocation of license. The government may revoke the license if you have found to be guilty of what? That's what? Fraudulent. Affairs are conducted fraudulently. You are violative of the objects of the company. You are violating the objects. Means what? You are no longer using it for charity. Then they will punish you. All that thing you can see. In law, whenever there is fraud, one section, you should remember 447. Whenever there is fraud, automatically it goes to section 447. So, the same all dialogues, whatever I told is given here. You can go through. Since it's a revision, I'll not repeat it. You can, whatever I just given the gist of everything, you can go through that. So, what can the government do when they revoke? Revoke means cancellation. Revoke means withdraw. Government will withdraw the license. What will it do? It will convert the status and change the name. They will say, boss, you cannot call yourself charitable from today. Second, okay, leave it. I will wind up the company. Third, I will amalgamate your company with some other company. Merge. So, all these things are there. What is a dormant company? Dormant. Sleeping. Dormant company is inactive. Guys, dormant company can be two things. See here, it says or here, no or. So, dormant company can actually be two things. 
it is not just one. Dormant is two, th two things. One is, it is an inactive company. One more is what? To hold on to future asset. Plus, no significant accounting transaction. Whereas, inactive company means what? Of course, no significant accounting transaction will obviously be there. You see there? Or not filed annual accounts. Not filed annual returns for two years. SAT, SAT is both the same year. Inactive company is a company which was active before but off late because of COVID or any reason for that matter, they are not able to do business. Hence, if you see, they have not able to do business, not been carrying on any business or operation. Inactive means no business or operation is being carried out recently. Plus, no significant accounting transaction, no business transaction only. Plus, not filed annual accounts, not filed annual returns. When business only is not there, what will file? For how many years? Two years. Which means, it was an active company, now it has become inactive. Maybe, let's say, because of COVID. All the hotel industry, many hotels closed down, restaurants. So, it is two years not done anything. So, today I should go to the com uh, 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 MCA and say, ROC and say, sir, please get, grant me an inactive certificate. They'll ask, will you start again? Yes, sir, I need some time. Please grant me an inactive certificate. So, they will issue a dormant certificate to you. Tomorrow, when you are ready to come back to business, you can make it active again. Correct? So, this is one part. But, can I start a dormant company only? Till 2013, it was not possible. Can I start a dormant company? No. But now, I can. I can start a dormant company. Right? So, if I want to hold on to a future asset. For example, there was a 17-year-old kid. Or let's say, there was actually a true story. He was studying in IIT. 18, 19-year-old kid. This was some 15 years ago. That time, these taxis and all were not there. The taxi companies that were there, you have to call the taxi. So, he wanted to go for a party. He's from IIT. He called for a taxi. Taxi didn't come. So, he missed the party. He was very pissed off. He was very angry. He's like, I wanted to attend the party. He came back. He searched. Biggest taxi company in the world. Uber came. Then he checked the financial statements. How many taxis does Uber have? Zero. Uber has zero taxis. Basically, he came to know the concept of taxi aggregator. Means what? Uber is just a platform where if you own a taxi, you can list your name on Uber. That's it. Do you, does Uber own any taxis? Zero. He thought, why don't I start the same in India? His name was Bhavesh Agarwal. And he was learning Spanish that time. True story. He was learning Spanish. So, his roommate of... Uh, IIT came to him and said, Ola Bhavesh, what's up? Ola in Spanish is what? Hello. So, he's like, okay, let me start this company, Ola. He started coding everything when he was in IIT only. Now, let us say, under the new law, after 2013 this came, if Bhavesh had a brilliant idea, in India, we all have ideas. What matters is the execution. Many times you would have seen something, somebody would have done something which you had thought of two years ago. But what's the point? Have you have you found that you had an idea? In two years, somebody has already done it. So, like for example, it's rainy, you know. I was thinking one to myself. I generally, in Bangalore, I never take my car out. It's either cycle or two-wheeler. Horrible it is to ride in Bangalore. So, when I was driving, day before yesterday, I was cycling full night. I got drenched. Cycle, nothing can be done. But bike, at least you can do something. I was thinking, what if we have a covering and all those things? When I was thinking of that, I saw, right, one fellow has already done it. So, in India, all of us have ideas. The persons who implement are the ones who have a first more advantage. During COVID, that, uh, you know, 
hands free sanitizer where you had to that mechanical to you know press that leg that you know the liver and then that sanitizer would come that was an idea somebody thought of and somebody started in two months there were thousand such you know sanitizer dispensers on amazon in india we are like that only one person starts others will copy but one person should start already there is this umbrella sort of a thing for bikes especially people who go to leh ladakh expedition and all that they have a sunroof already it has come now slowly you see now people will start in a place like bangalore you definitely need it but it were like a sunroof or like a roof for the vehicle which can be dismantled whenever you want so awesome it will be i'll not take my car out only then in that case because now the reason i take out my car in bangalore is rain now if that is not there if i can get a covering good so if you see yes now i have that idea now i will go to the trademark company and register my trademark first mover advantage i have thought of it i don't care if you have thought of it i have implemented it go and register a trademark then i will go to mc and say sir i have this wonderful idea but i need one more year time because i am doing my ca or i am doing my bcom whatever after this i'll come into this full time please can you protect my intellectual property government will say yes they'll start a dormant company that's the beauty that is what hold on to a future asset hold on to a future asset if you have the trademark with you already you can start a dormant company in india so in 2013 onwards this law came before it was not there so in ola gila and all that fellow actually almost flung his iit because he was coding one more guy ritesh agarwal he was also the 16 year old college dropout why did he drop out of college because he wanted to do something he went to these hotels and was asking for free stay he taught three things in the hotel what are the three things you need in a hotel clean bed sheet obviously clean linen the and what do you say towel etc must be clean that if you you don't care about the size of the room and all if the if it's very clean it's fine neatness second wifi in india we need wifi even if we have our own network also we will use wifi third one he said it should be what do you say you know good breakfast and some freebies like toiletries etc should be nicely kept that's it he went to these hotels and said why are you charging 2000 3000 charge 1000 rupees your people who will come will increase charge 1000 rupees that's enough nobody agreed they said you are a fool few hotels accepted it few hotels accepted it and overnight he became a success overnight means success was overnight but he's worked at 5 4 5 years for that ritesh agarwal founder of oyo rooms right he created a brand called oyo 16 year old college dropout he was why did he drop out of college because of this idea that he got many others had the idea but he implemented it and today he wants to make oyo one of the world's leading chain in india across india it's already there as the tagline itself says har jagah oyo which is true everywhere it's there so it is a good budget accommodation budget good and some you know luxury properties are also there but fine but what i mean it's not like a five star hotel and all but what i'm saying is yes good budget i'm traveling from one place another one quick one i have to just sleep for a night and get out and go next day good oh your rooms fair enough if any problem the oh your rooms are there anyway to handle it so one simple idea multi millionaire he became billionaire forget about multi millionaire right that's what i'm trying to tell so if you have an intellectual property you can protect it to what dormant company do you know in uh, you do know abroad people protect their throat singers have an insurance for their throat i'm not joking they have an insurance of crores of rupees for their throat cold play that guy recently had a throat infection he claimed insurance on his throat millions of dollars of insurance he has put already yes which is the most fixed asset for a teacher throat for a singer throat for the teacher eyesight and throat can i insure my eyes and my throat yes i'm just saying so that is a what intellectual property but that's not a future asset it's a present asset but future asset is yes if i start something 
correct there was this guy who was teaching in manipal university for uh, you know he started with eight students later he was you know taught in manipal university for 2000 he was excellent in maths so 8000 3000 students he was teaching so there was this guy called mohan das pai he was the cfo of what infosys then he joined manipal so he went to that fellow and said hey, you teach really well man come today i will invest in you hi i am mohan das pai that fellow said hi sir my name is baiju ravindran what did he start baiju's see intellectual property the way you are teaching that is an intellectual property protect it mohan das pai told him protect it how will you protect it start a company sir i don't know how to start don't worry let's start i'm just giving an example the government is giving you option sir this is my teaching methodology protect it nobody should copy protect the methodology so if you see this correct if i want to hold on to the methodology to the idea intellectual property then hold on to a future asset correct why because they will pay you for your intellectual property correct so today when i go to give lectures outside or when i obviously go to give talks etc they don't pay me for my face and all that they pay me for the intellectual property simple even for you guys once you clear ca they will not pay you for your face how you look how you are no they pay you for your knowledge that's why i am telling just work hard and finish off this exam you will it will secure your future for sure so today we are in a position if i want to work i can work if i don't want to work i don't want i love working so i work i can quit also because it's on you you are the boss tomorrow you will be the boss if you want to work you will work if you don't want to work don't work whenever you decide to work you will get money again so for that you need one two letters before your name ca so if you see hold on to a future asset plus should not have any significant accounting transaction the oyo rooms or ola caps he will go and say sir one year you give me let me finish my education oyo and ola time these laws were not there that's why they almost flunked their college vipesh agarwal college dropout bhavesh agarwal just pass they could not concentrate on their job bill gates is a what college dropout but they are all few success stories lakhs and crores of people have been wiped out of the world because they could not get an education you cannot say bill gates became world richest man by not getting a degree i'll also not do ca no bill gates is one in a million we are all normal people we have to slog we have to get that degree right yes and no significant accounting transaction that's it can i have an office and start paying salary rent and all that yes is that significant accounting transaction no significant accounting transaction means business transactions can you start doing business no that's called dormant company got it so dormant company is two things inactive company or hold on to future asset come back now all these things are there nidhi company nidhi company is what guys mutual benefit society chit fund business nidhi company there are a lot of differences but it's okay nidhi company also is uh, separately recognized under companies act pfi lic idfc uti all these are called as public financial institutions and also it should be established under any state lac and it or or it should hold what at least 51% of the paid up share capital is held by the government so basically pfi can also be a government company why 51% of puc is held by government nothing but government company definition so what is a pfi pfi can also be a government company or pfi can be set up under a separate act like this lic idfc uti etc uti unit trust of india how will i incorporate the company through a promoter who is a promoter he is the person who starts the company what does a promoter do he gives the idea of a company he should give an idea what is the idea behind the company so if you want to start something like for example bhavesh agarwal he was the promoter then ritesh agarwal he was the promoter 
Bansal brother, the Bansal uh, friends who are the promoters of Flipkart. Correct? So basically, the ones who actually ideate, think of an idea, is called as a promoter. Correct? So that's how it is. So they will be looking at the feasibility study and all these things. This by two fellow, if you have observed, been observing since for many years, opposite you have CTR, very, very famous dosa. I mean, that's what they say. People stand in line and all and stand. I don't like the dosa there. Personal choice. I don't like it. But people die behind that CTR dosa. Personally, I, I, I think it's like horrible. I didn't like it. So anyway, so, but yeah, CTR is famous. Of course, people like it. It's okay. We cannot say they are wrong. It's my opinion. His opinion. Other people's opinion. No problem. So those, those people like, they stand in queue and all on Sunday. To have dosa, they stand, waste their time, stand in queue. But good for them. Now, this fellow, initially when he started, no, he did not have dosa, this guy, Y2 guy, did not have dosa. I've been observing him since the last 4-5 years, actually. He did not have any dosa. He only was selling idli and chutney, because that was what he was famous for. And he named the company only Buy2 Coffee. And because coffee was very, very famous. And he was giving Buy2, as the name itself suggests, 1 by 2 6 rupees it was. So, you can buy 1 by 2 coffee by paying 6 rupees. Today, there is no buy to coffee. Name of the shop is buy to coffee. You ask him for buy to, he says, sir, not available. You have to pay full. So, how we change, you see? Because CTR is the for the people who actually want to stand there in queue and die and eat. This is a quick bite. Then we realize many people like me, we don't have, I don't want to waste time standing in line, to be honest. I will stand in line for other things. I will not stand in line for this. I will probably stand in line to meet some actor. I'll stand in line to sort of, you know, watch a movie. That That is my choice. But people's choice here is they want to stand in line for those are Fair enough. Good for them. I will not do it. That's what I'm trying to tell. They may not do sit and stand in line for a movie. See, you cannot say he's wrong or I am wrong. My opinion and my choice. So, if they are standing, I don't want to stand. I went and told him that day, sir, why don't you start dosa? He said, no, sir, CTR is there. No, I said, sir, there are many people who will come like me who will want dosa. Like that, apparently many people told him, like me, many people are there who don't want to wait in line for a dosa and who want to eat dosa. And there is no dosa place here and close by. So he started, imagine, he started dosas and he ensured that the rates are reasonable, 20-25 rupees he started. Then one more problem happened, he used to open till 12 o'clock and close, I am not joking. And then only 4 o'clock he used to open. Then many people went and told, sir, what about food? Masrana, chitrana, something you give, sir, rice and sambar. Because I know I have eaten your food, sir, it is soda and all is not there. I cannot bring uh, parcel from home and all, please. He started that. See, who is he, promoter? He will keep doing all these things, feasibility study, that exactly understand what is needed in the market and then he will release. So he did that, Chitrana, Masrana, all that he started. He started all the meals also. Then one more fellow will came and said, Sir, please give some arrangement to sit and eat. And Sir, you are a South Indian restaurant. Why don't you have that proper yele uta, banana leaf uta? I said, Okay. He started temple meals. It all in front of me only it happened four years. I'm not joking. He started temple meals. Only he listened to the people what they wanted. That's it. He started temple meals where people, if you want, you go on top and eat and come, no problem. You just want to sit and eat, you want that entire experience of the plantain leaf meal, please. Your so he catered to each and every person. He is a promoter who will look at the feasibility study of the entire proposal and then he will do the needful. So then slowly he started the savouries and all that. He is now selling all this uh, mixture, cold vale, chakli and all is selling. Yes, it's an addition to the same. Buy to coffee removed. That's the best part. Name of the shop, buy to coffee. Buy to coffee available? No, not available. Correct? So that's the best part. See, he actually, why he started, that only he removed. Because he now said, what people want, I will give. Correct? And people in South India, especially like many people, most of them love coffee. Tea lovers are there, but not many in this area. So he said, do you have masala chai, that chai? No, one, only one tea. You want to drink? You drink. No masala chai and all I cannot give. This is the only tea available. Coffee, I will give you strong, less strong. 
So sugarless tea not available, sir. It's pre-made. I'll give it to you. That's it. Yes. So that's the beauty. You see the area and then decide. If this fellow goes somewhere else, it will not run. He's seen, obviously, he will put in those places where it will run. He has made one in South Bangalore also where it will really run. It's running also. So, you should see the condition and then decide is what I am trying to tell. Teas also. In North India, you may not believe, I am not joking. For foundation, guess the fees. See a foundation. 1.2 lakhs. I am not joking. You please search. 1.2 lakhs for CA Foundation coaching. I was just speaking to my friend, my faculty friend. He asked how much you charge for foundation. I said some 25, 30 thousand. Huh? You were shocked. Like, sir, it's 1.2 lakhs here. I'm like, what? Really? Yes. And uh, then in some places, 60, 70,000. And uh, inter cheapest is 1.2 lakhs. And it can go up to 1.82 lakhs and all. CA final per subject used to charge, not now, now it has become all, you know, normal. They used to charge 40, 50,000 per subject. I am not kidding. I am not making it up. I am telling you the truth. Correct? So, when we started, I was like, what is this nonsense? 40,000. I put it at 7,000 rupees and I told I will never go beyond 10,000 for law subject. See, income tax and all will be, lot of books have to be given that can go beyond 10, but Law 7000, 7, 8000 beyond that we will not go. So from 2019 till now, our video classes have never increased beyond 8500, including GST. GST only is 20% in that, think about it, 18%. Right? So this is not charity though, but it is reasonable. The thing is, if you see, if you are in North India, you have to pay 1.2 lakhs for foundation classes. And ours, I ask, ours is lesser than us. Shocking. So, the thing is, and it's hybrid model. Some are online, some are offline. Actually, 60% is online. 40% only is offline. I was shocked to see all these things. But if I go there and charge 25,000, will people come? No. Chaprasi fellow, they'll tell. Quality is not there. That's why it's charging so less. Similarly, yes, very true. But if they come here and charge 1 lakh to 20,000, will people go? No. So, if you see, you should, you should see the place. Who does that? Promoter. The promoter is the person who does all that. So, who is a promoter? Who will be named as such in the prospectus. Means, named as a promoter where? In the prospectus. Tell me, prospect is an offer or invitation to offer? Yeah, invitation to offer. It's inviting you to invest in the company. Who has control over the affairs of the affairs means what? Financial affairs, not other affairs. Correct? Our ministers and all have affairs. No, not that affairs. Control over the affairs of the company, directly or indirectly, whether as a shareholder, director or otherwise. Then in accordance with whose advice, directions or instructions, the board of directors is accustomed to act. Means what? I will open one company, one dummy director. I told you know, that uh, Guilford versus Horn, chef. Chef started one company, all these three people were blindly listening to him. Who is the promoter? Chef. Board of directors are accustomed to act. Means habituated to act according to whom? Advice, directions and instructions of the chef. So, even though the chef is not directly linked to the company, you will know that the chef is the main promoter, man behind the show. That's all it is. Promoters. Formation. So, for public company, seven or more. Private company, two or more. One person company, one. Incorporation is very simple, guys. First, you should have a... Uh, the MOA, AOA should be signed. When you sign below, it is called as a subscriber. Sub means below. Scribe means right. BCR. This is one subject, right? Sub is below. Scribe means right. Subscribe means what? Who will sign underneath the MOA. So, there is a 15 hour BCR crash course. Watch it. Already in, on my channel, it's there. Signed by all the subscribers to the memorandum. Sub means below. Scribe means to write. Subscribers to the memorandum. A declaration by a person who is engaged in the formation of the company. Like an advocate, CA, they will come to you only for starting the company. You need to sign a declaration saying that they have followed all the rules and regulations. 
then a declaration by the subscriber saying that he is not convicted of any offence, he is not a fraudster. Like today can Ramalinga Raju start a company? No. He was con convicted of fraud in the Satyam case. Correct? So can Vijay Malaya start one more com company in India? No. Can Nityananda start company? No. Correct? He has been found guilty of any fraud. Address and all other details you should give and they will issue something called as Certificate of Incorporation. For example, if you see, I will just show you Infosys, one of the largest companies in the world. Their Certificate of Incorporation looks like this. See, it was issued way before all of us were even born, 1981. It was Infosys Consultants Private Limited, imagine. Correct? It was given by in Mumbai that time. That time ROC was only in Mumbai. Now it's there everywhere. So, on 2nd July 1981, he gave. He will give based on what? MOA and AOA that you have deposited there. Declaration. This is the MOA. Full MOA is there. And you see, these are the subscribers to the memorandum. All deadly people. NR Narayan Murthy. Father-in-law of the Prime Minister of UK. Yes, N.R. Narayan Murthy. Or rather I should tell the other way around. UK Prime Minister is the son-in-law. Because Narayan Murthy is way beyond any of those people. Right? So, UK Prime Minister is the son-in-law of Narayan Murthy. Right? So, great man, Narayan Murthy. Started in a garage in Mysore. In Mysore, on garage, he borrowed money from his father-in-law actually. Sudhamurthy's husband, uh, Sudhamurthy's Sudha husband borrowed money from Sudhamurthy's dad, 5000 rupees or something, and started Infosys. So, one equity share. Then, Nadatur Srinivas Raghavan, N.S. Raghavan, one. S. Gopala Krishnan, one. Today, you and I have Aadhaar card. You have Aadhaar card? It's because of this man only, nobody else. Nandan Mohan Nilekani. He was the one who started, implemented, created Aadhaar. The entire software for Aadhaar. So, if today we have Aadhaar card, we have one man to thank. That is Nandan Mohan Nilekani. So, deadly fellows, four people. Started what? Infosys. In a garage in Mysore. This is the, this is called, they signed the MOA. This is called subscribers to memorandum. And one company secretary or chartered accountant will sign here. That's it. This is called subscribers to memorandum. The moment you subscribe and the moment he checks all this and gives the certificate of incorporation. That leads to what? Birth of the company. From today, the company is born. The moment the certificate is issued, one veil will come in front of you. That's the corporate veil. From today, I am different, company is different. Till now, four people only were going. That is, these four people were going. But the moment that 2nd July 1981, Infosys came in front. So, that's the corporate veil concept. So, if you see back here, allotment of corporate identification number, then they will give one thing called SIN, corporate identity number. If you falsely give some wrong, wrong information, I told you, fraud, 447. If you suppress anything, if you cheat, then again, 447. The National Company Law Tribunal, NCLT. If they come to know you have committed fraud, they will do what? Lift the corporate veil. And make who liable? Not only the directors, but all the members. You see? Director that the, direct that the liability of the company shall be unlimited. Direct what? Removal of the name of the company from register. Order winding up. But in India, everything is, everybody is innocent until proven guilty. So, will they give you an opportunity to speak? Yes. That is called what? Principles of natural justice. Even Ajmal Kasab got a fair trial. In India, it's like that. Everybody is innocent until proven guilty. Ajmal Kasab, there was evidence of him shooting everybody. Still, the court asked him, why did you kill in India, law punishes the mind or the body? Mind only. 
not the body. Body is attached to the mind, so no choice. But I punish the mind. That is called mens rea, criminal intention. It's a Latin term, mens rea, means criminal intention. Law, criminal law, it always looks at the mind, mens rea. So that is called what? Principles of natural justice. Reasonable opportunity of being heard. Yeah, reasonable opportunity of being heard. It's there, everything is there. The entire process in India is called what? Reasonable opportunity. Principles of natural justice. Principles of natural justice. P O N J. Principles of natural justice. Now all these provisions were there before. Now they have made it very simplified with one more way of incorporating the company called Spice. Simplified pro forma for incorporating company electronically. Spice. In SPICE, all these formats, see, you have to file many forms, INC 22, INC 21, INC 8, INC 9, INC 10, instead of all those forms, SPICE will have only one form, INC 32, that's all. Just out of syllabus, I am just telling you, INC 22 is one form you have to file, simplified pro forma, rather than Going through all these procedures, one form you should file yeah, with the ROC. In a step towards easy setting up of business, MCI simplified the process of filing the forms. Earlier, some 10 forms were there. Procedure was same only, but 10 different forms you have to fill. No, now only one form. INC 32, that's called simplified pro forma for incorporating company electronically. Today there is something called Spice Plus, which is easier than Spice, practically. So leave it, this much is there. So if they ask you incorporation question, you should write the original one. All these things you should write, if they ask four marks. Then what happens the moment you register the company, it will become a separate legal entity. That's what shall bind the company. Classification of capital already discussed, issued, subscribed, called up. Share. Share definition is like on rap song. Share is a share in the share capital of a company. That's the definition. I'm not joking. Share means what? A share. Where? In the share capital of a company. And includes a stock. Stock means what? Collection of shares. Collection of shares is called as a stock. And share capital is divided into two types, equity and preference. And in equity, it is uniform voting rights, differential voting rights. Uniform voting rights means what guys? One share, one vote. Differential voting rights means what? There can be two things. For example, if I make it one share, one vote, I will come to you, I am a company, I will come to you, I will say I want to take over you. You will say no, I will not allow myself to be taken over. Let's say I will go to Mark Zuckerberg and say I want to take over your company. You have 50% shares, give me the shares. He will say no, no way. Public has shares in uh, Facebook, let's say Mark Zuckerberg has some 20%. If you see Ambani, how much Ambani has in Reliance? Individually. Just 1 or 2 percent. That's it. Individually. But he'll have other companies who works for him and overall he'll have over 50 percent. But anyway, if I was supposed to take over you, correct? How will I take over? Like recently, uh, Adani took over NDTV. Did he go directly and take over NDTV? No. He took over the company that controlled NDTV. Correct? Some company controlled NDTV. I took over that company. Subsidiary of a subsidiary? Subsidiary. So that's how you do it. So they will, Adani did the same thing. He did something called as a hostile takeover. Hostile takeover means what? 
he first went to ndtv he said boss please uh, give me your shares ndtv said get out so adani went in direct route from the market only he purchased all the shares because one share is equal to one vote is there that's a problem so to protect companies and you know, especially for example i am a startup founder if for me one share one vote will not work for me i want more voting power what i'll do i'll make it one share 10 votes example one share 10 votes so how much share does uh, mark zuckerberg have in facebook some 9 10 percent but what is the voting power of mark zuckerberg more than 50 percent that's why who's the shareholder of actual shareholder of i mean founder and controller of facebook or meta mark zuckerberg simple what is the shareholding 10 percent ambani shareholding one percent but who's the whenever you say reliance you'll say ambani there are others who have more than one percent correct Tata, Ratan Tata has 0.00001% shares of Tata. I'm not joking. But he controls one more thing called Tata Trusts. Tata Trust has 76% shares. 18% shares is by Shapurji Palanji Group. Cyrus Mistri, who recently unfortunately died. Cyrus Mistri is the, I mean, was the chairman of Tata Sons, who was thrown, thrown out. All those things. So, the real power comes in the shares only. <coughs> J.K. Shah recently was taken over. Today, J.K. Shah is not controlled by J.K. Shah. 76% of J.K. Shah is now by an, another company called Veranda Learning. So, Veranda Learning controls 76% shares, including voting power. Which means any decision of J.K. Shah will be now taken by whom? Veranda. But the name is still there, J.K. Shah, because the brand name is there, right? That's what. Goodwill, yes. Goodwill is what we need to <clears throat> check. That is what it is. Sorry. Yeah, differential voting rights means what? One share is equal to 10 votes. Mark Zuckerberg. Reverse also can happen. I don't want people like, for example, Veranda, uh, J.K. Shah will tell, I don't want Veranda to come and take over. See, J.K. Shah is a private company that you leave. If J.K. Shah was a public company, he may say, I don't want Veranda to open, go in the open market and buy my shares. So, he will reverse it. What he will do? 10 share is equal to 1 vote. This already they have released. No, Tata Motor is there. Then your... Uh, Gujarat NRE Coke company that is there. So many companies have issued DVR in India. It is called differential voting rights. This is to protect the company from takeover. This is to protect the promoters from, you know, taking over the power. In India, it's allowed. This recently got allowed in 2019. One share 10 votes concept. It is called superior voting right. SR shares, it's called superior voting right. This is called differential voting right. I mean, both are differential only, but this is ideally called DVR before. One more type of DVR is SVR, superior voting right. So, equity share capital with uniform voting right with differential right. Preference share capital is what is preference share capital? What is the only difference there? You have preference over the dividend. Dividend you will get first. And when the company is going down, after everybody is paid, among the insider, who will be paid first? You. Will they have voting power? No. These fellows will have voting power. Will they never have voting power? Nothing like that. They will have voting power when it comes to preference shareholders meeting. In um, inter, you will learn a subject called internal reconstruction, chapter in accounts. That is nothing but legal begging. Going with a begging bowl and then going and standing in front of equity shares and reference shares, saying that we don't have money, you have already given us 10 crore capital, why don't you show it as 8 crore? Equity share all, huh, what? Why don't you show it as 8 crore? What about 2 crore? So that you please, I am begging you, please give me that 2 crore. That is called legal begging. You will learn that, don't worry, internal reconstruction. You will learn it later. So, if I want to go beg preference shares, preference shareholders, in BCOM you may have guys, Internal reconstruction you may have in BCOM. Sir, CA only, we don't know. 
B com and all you are telling B com what we know. Which subject is there only we don't know. Our teachers also don't know what they are teaching. Yes. So if you see, that's how it is. Come back. So anyway, so in a preference shareholders meeting when I go and beg them, that is called, then that the voting power will be there. Otherwise, no voting power. That's all. That is regarding all these things. Preference share capital, same thing. I explained everything there. Last part, MOA, AOA. Memorandum of Association is the charter or constitution of the company. Whereas AOA is the internal regulation of the company. What all clauses are there as discussed? Name clause, situation clause, objects clause, liability clause, capital clause and association clause. Same thing given here, see. All the clauses, name clause, registered office clause, Objects clause, liability clause, capital clause, association clause. Format of the MOA AOA is given where, guys? In the Companies Act, Schedule Number One. Table A, Table B, Table C, Table D. Table D is the format. In that, mainly you have to remember Table A. Why? It is only for company limited by shares. What is the format? This only name clause, registered clause, objects clause. So if you see, I'll show you the MOA of Infosys. Name of the company is Infosys. Registered office will be where? Will you give home address, office address, or state only? Only the state. In the state of Karnataka. So, where will be the actual address? It will be there in the certificate of incorporation. It will be in the certificate of incorporation. Yeah, this is the MOA of Veranda Learning Solutions Limited. I just want to show you everything. See, this is how the certificate of incorporation looks after changing the name. Sir, where is the address of the company? It will be here. See, full address. In the MOA, where, what will be there in the MOA? Then only the state. So, if you see, this is the final. See, name of the company, so and so. Registered office is in Tamil Nadu. Then, of course, the objects of the company will come. One question, in this objects clause, if it is not mentioned that company is allowed to take over some other company of similar nature, can they go and take over Jekisha? In the objects clause, if they have not given that I want, I, you, can, you are allowed to take over some other company, can they take over? No, cannot. Objects clause should have everything should give everything. For example, if I say, Advait Learning Private Limited Objects Clause will say, what is the business objects of the company? Torturing students. Objective. Now, for torturing students, I have taken this on rent. I will go to the landlord, landlady who stays on top only. I will go to the landlady and say, ma'am, see, I want to torture. See this. Okay, take. She gave this on rent. I did not pay the rental to her, assume. Can she sue me? I did not pay the rental. Can she sue me? I will ask her, Madam, please show me in the MOA where it is written that I will pay, I will take a room on rent for torturing. I have just told I will torture students. So she will say, No, no, but to torture students, you need a torture chamber. So this, like this issues went to court. I am not joking. Many issues like this went to court. Main object was given. But for furtherance of main object, I have to take a room on rent. That power was not given in MOA. To take a room on rent for selling the goods, for, in this case, teaching, is not written in the MOA. So, is it valid or void? In many, many cases, it was held that the landlady will lose the case. I will win the case. I cheated. No, I didn't cheat. I have written the MOA, AOA, you should have read it properly. I have written, in my MOA I have just told torture. 
have not told I can hire a room to torture. So MOA is the most important clause, object clause is the most important clause in the MOA. So now you see here, if that dialogue is not there in Veranda Learning Solutions Private Limited, then what? You cannot take over. Obviously it will be there, right? It will be there. So you see, somewhere it will be there. In the carry on in India, carry on in India, providing books. Ah, see here. To invest, acquire, set up, participate directly or indirectly in certain special purpose vehicle in certain companies, whether having identical objects or similar objects, whether situated in India or abroad, they can take over some foreign company also, foreign uh, institution, they can, because of this dialogue, if this dialogue was not there, the entire J.K. Shah veranda deal is void. Right? That's why it is very, very important to read the MOA, AOA. So, for example, Infosys also, I'm just reading, okay, this only came again. Let's see. Infosys on the other hand. Infosys actually opened uh, many accommodation for their ex-employees. I don't know if you know that. Tata and uh, Infosys opened for their ex-employees accommodation facility. If you are an ex-employee, accommodation they are giving. Imagine. They are charging money, no problem. But they are giving accommodation. Now, if that is not mentioned in the, what do you say, MOA, valid, invalid? Invalid. Everything should be mentioned in the MOA. Objects clause is the most important clause. See, Infosys beginning only to provide for welfare of employees. Or, if this dialogue was not there, no? Giving an accommodation to ex-employees is void. So, you should be very, very careful in reading the MOA. Who frames the MOA? Chartered accountant. They will come to you and say, Sir, please frame the MOA. Madam, please frame the MOA. So, this chapter I left in choice in the exam. Please don't ask me this. Like that, if you tell, they'll tell, how did you become CA? It's the worst uh, insult that you can ever get. How did you become CA? Better to ask, hey, you are extremely knowledgeable, are you a CA? That is still better. Than asking, how did you become CA? Right? So, this forming the MOA, MOA Lawyer, Chartered Accountant, Company Secretary, they will come to you. That is why we should study properly. Yeah, of course it can be. You can keep on changing the MOA. Definitely yes. You can keep on altering the MOA. Who should agree logically? Shareholders or Directors? Shareholders. Because they have put money into the company reading these objects. If you want to add more, subtract, Change. Who should you ask? Shareholders. So, basically you should call a general meeting. General meeting means shareholders meeting. And you have to pass a resolution. What resolution is that called? Special resolution. Special resolution means 75% of them should agree. So, it is not easy to change. 75% should agree. That is called Alteration of MOA. How to alter and all you will learn in CA inter. It's not there in foundation. But you should know that's something called alteration. How to alter? Inter. In inter, company law is 160 hours. Current inter syllabus. If that final also comes, God only should help you. Right? It will come. Yeah. So, if you see, that is what it is. So, they enter into partnership or into any arrangements for sharing of profits and all these things. Now, I am running a, what do you say, fruits and vegetables store. I enter into a partner, basically buying and selling of fruits and vegetables. I enter into a partnership with one more guy to buy and sell fruits and vegetables. I enter into a partnership with all these marts. All these marts are there, no? Shine Mart, Super Bazaar, that Bazaar. Saying that you, I will supply fruits to you, you sell. Partnership. Whatever you sell, for 50% to me, 50% to you. My objects class says buying and selling vegetables. 
have entered into partnership with many people is it valid or void void buying and selling is allowed where is partnership allowed have you written in the moa no even that i should write entering into partnership with other people to further the business see they have written here also see here most important clause most important clause is objects clause if i don't write this then it is void i am not allowed to enter into partnership if i don't write this in the moa right i can definitely alter the moa from time to time no problem see they have also given so today veranda can enter into any of the partnerships of this as well any of the partnerships next to spend money on experimenting and testing and improving and all these things yes all that so can i sell my business yes that also should be there everything can i sell a part of my business yes sell or dispose of undertaking or any part thereof right could jk shah have sold only their ca division assume they have ca cs everything could they have sold only their ca division yes that's what that's all guys very simple so basically that is what moa is all about quickly you are seeing as much as possible let it go cool all the clauses that's all very simple now aoa is again internal regulation now let's see doctrines doctrine there are three doctrine that's that's the end of the chapter after that we can take a short break we'll finish off 10 minutes doctrine there are three doctrines doctrine means what rule this is the last part of company law easy no very easy doctrine three doctrines are there doctrine of ultra wires ultra wires and all don't write ultra wires but then doctrine of what constructive notice constructive notice yes and doctrine of indoor management indoor management doctrine of ultra wires constructive notice indoor management ultra means what beyond wires powers ultra means beyond wires means powers so can you go beyond the powers of something is what the doctrine doctrine means in bcr you study doctrine means rule vocabulary chapter doctrine is rule basically doctrine means to learn so that learn obviously will have this has become over the years rule one second yes so ultra wires means beyond the powers of the management beyond the powers means what guys so basically when the act is there act is supreme under the act what is there moa and under the moa we have the aoa act means companies act can i do any illegal activity no can i open a business to smuggle goods no can i say i'll write in the moa moa what moa object of the company killing people so i'll kill moa it's allowed no anything which is against the act is what so anything which is ultra wires the act ultra wires the act means ultra means beyond wires means power act does not allow you at all it is what illegal and void you cannot do any illegal activities illegal and void second 
अल्ट्रा वायर्स मेमोरेंडम ऑफ एसोसिएशन इंट्रा वायर्स द एक्ट एग्जाम्पल एज आई टोल्ड यू एम ओ ए शुड टेल एवरीथिंग एम ओ ए शुड ऑल्सो अलो यू टू बोरो मनी इट शुड अलो यू टू लेंड मनी शुड अलो यू टू एंटर इन टू पार्टनरशिप एज आई टोल्ड यू यू आर अ फ्रूट सेम एग्जाम्पल एट बाइंग एंड सेलिंग ऑफ फ्रूट्स इन एम ओ ए पार्टनरशिप एंटरिंग इन टू पार्टनरशिप इज नॉट देर यू गो अहेड एंड एंटर इन टू अ पार्टनरशिप विच इज अगेन्स्ट द एम ओ ए बट एंटरिंग इन टू अ पार्टनरशिप फॉर लीगल बिजनेस इज वेरी मच अलाउड एज पर एक्ट एक्ट अलोज यू नो कंपनीज एक्ट अलोज यू टू डू एवरी एनीथिंग दैट इज लीगल सो कंपनीज एक्ट अलोज यू टू एंटर इन टू पार्टनरशिप ऑल्सो नो प्रॉब्लम बट इज एम ओ ए अलोइंग यू नो what you have done now by entering into partnership is you have gone against the moa question now is will this be valid whatever you did now partnership no why it is ultra wires the moa but actual question is can this be approved approval little bit stylish language it's called ratify can it be ratified what do you think answer is no since it's against the moa it cannot be ratified but in future i want to enter into partnerships please allow that can i do that yes only way is to alter the moa so future transactions future transactions in order to cover future transactions what should i do alter the moa by passing special resolution as we know but what happens to that particular action already done that is void future action okay maybe i will allow this action void future action i will allow only by amending the moa without amendment of moa everything is void again so is it valid or void void second can i ratify no third future actions yes now as i told you borrowing power lending power everything should be given as per moa now let us say third example third example is what it is intra wires the act intra wires the moa also but ultra wires the articles can the company borrow for a legal purpose yes let us assume moa is also allowing you to borrow moa allows you to borrow fair enough articles are the internal regulations articles say you can borrow only up to 10 lakh rupees for business cannot borrow more than that articles are the internal regulations articles are restricting the directors from borrowing beyond 10 lakhs now this director goes and borrows 12 lakh rupees from somebody definitely uses in business also no problem use in business question is when he is coming for recovery the lender company says sir only 10 lakhs we will pay 2 lakhs we require from director that fellow will say how how is it possible act is also allowing mo is also allowing sir but aoa is not allowing sir it's only restricting to 10 lakhs so the lender will say this one time just let go i did not read the aoa my mistake please allow me now the question is is this transaction valid or void generally void valid to the extent of 10 lakhs void to the extent of extra 2 lakhs but can i ratify this i'm not talking about future transaction can i approve this which is already void yes answer is yes aoa can be ratified in law follow four steps you'll get the answer step number 1 close your eyes step number 2 take a deep breath step step number 3 there is one gut feeling feeling from the stomach it comes always you the answer will be the gut feeling so you think about the answer so when i asked you ratified you said i mean it cannot be ratified you said no the gut feeling said no fourth reverse the gut feeling that will be the answer so in law always reverse the gut feeling so in law and dcr that's the answer so you trust your gut and reverse it 
correct that is always you will get the correct answer here so if you see can i borrow 12 lakhs no i can borrow only 10 but i borrow 12 what to do that extra 2 for that it is void but can it be validated act says yes doctrine of ultra wire says yes aoa can be ratified with shareholders approval moa cannot be ratified mind you aoa can be ratified so if anything it is intra wires intra means allowed intra means within the powers intra wires the act intra wires the moa but ultra wires the articles can be ratified obviously what about future transactions future transactions can it be covered yes when present transaction only is covered future also will be covered no by altering the aoa for altering aoa moa what resolution special resolution special resolution this is the doctrine of ultra wires one important case to remember is ashbury railway carriage company versus ritchie I am using eraser and thinking it's highlighter. Awesome. Four eyes also not enough sometimes. Yes. Ashbury Railway Carriage Company and Iron versus Ritchie. So here you see objects was what? Make, sell or lend on hire railway carriage and wagon. To carry on the business of mechanical engineer and general contractors. To purchase, lease, sell and work mines. To purchase, sell, merchant agent. Okay. All this was there. Are you seeing anywhere you are taking loan, financing, anything you are saying? No. So this company entered into a contract of financing money with somebody else. Is this ultra wires the MOA? Yes. Financing is not given only in the power. But they went and argued in the court. Sir, general contractors means financing it seems. They said mechanical engineer and general contractor. General contractor means financing. So the court asked, if I say cat, dog, cow, bull, horse, etc. Does etc. include tiger? <laughs> what do you think? This is an actual case law. I am not joking. This is state of Andhra Pradesh versus Royal Hatcheries, uh, you know, Andhra Pradesh case law, 1976. I am not joking. Same question. Cat, dog, cow, bull, horse, etc. Does etc. include tiger? Does it include tiger? Animal. This is also animal. So it includes? No. These are all what? Domesticated animals. This is what? Wild animal. So tiger is not allowed. What about Koli? Hen. What about Koli, hen? Possible? No. These are four-legged domesticated animal. This is a court case. I am not even joking. Four-legged domesticated animal. This is what? Two-legged domesticated bird. Imagine. When I say etc. Or for example, when I say general, it should match whatever is there before. Court set. General means what? Mechanical engineer related, civil, construction, other things, not financing. You would have seen many stores, no? You would have seen Decathlon. Decathlon, have you gone? What does Decathlon say? It says sports and other equipment. I will go to them and say, give me 1 kg basmati rice. You have written other equipment, no? Others means rice also. Correct? Can you ask? No. You would have seen general provisions, general stores and other stores. Sir, give me one bat. I want cricket bat. MRF. No, it is provision and others. So, others means everything. No, give me. Can you ask for medicines? Others will include medicines also. So, you can't ask anything like that. You can't uh, go to... Any, you would have seen medical and other stores. Have you seen medical and general stores? You can't go and say, sir, one egg puff. Motte pop. Give me. You cannot ask motte pops there. Correct. So, if you see, you cannot ask, guys, because it's not a bakery for God's sake. Other, just because other is there, it's not everything. Other medicines, yes, and other general stores means, okay, some, like, if you want, like, strepsils, or any, like, normal stuff that generally you'll have, wicks, all that, that is the meaning of others. 
related to that particular thing, field. Apart from strong medications, you'll have other like cough, syrup, all that will be there. Or some other random chocolates, chocolates may be there, dairy milk and all that they'll give. But you can't go and ask for egg cough, sir. Go and buy two coffee. Right? No, it is not possible. So if you see, that is the quote they interpreted the word general. So they said you can't just say general will include anything that you want. This is ultra wires. Ultra wires the MOA. Hence the contract is void. Ashbury Railway Carriage. Right? Yes, same way. Now, Articles of Association is the internal regulation. We have all seen all these things. In Articles, one extra point is there. That's called entrenchment provision. What is entrenchment? What is entrenchment? Entrenchment is to restrict. Restrict. I'll come to the other two. We still have to do constructive notice and indoor management. We'll finish it off. Entrenchment will just finish. Entrench means what? See, in articles there are many points. Let's say there are 1 to 40 points are there. Internal regulation. Assume, I'm just giving an example. Each point is called as a regulation. Now, simple question. Can I alter these regulations? Yes. What resolution is needed? Special resolution I can alter. But the shareholders decide point number 2, point number 7 and point number 40 are very important. Example I'm giving. They decide point number 2, point number 7 and point number 40 are very important. Let's protect them. Generally, if I want to alter any of the regulations, what resolution is needed? 75%. But let's all decide today that for point number 2, 7 and 40, they are important regulations. Example, let us, if I want to amend that, let us give a provision which is more restrictive than special resolution, means higher than 75%. Let's keep 85% for this. Or let's say, only with a 90% majority you can change this. So when shareholders decide, entrenchment means restriction. In this Chikmangalur etc. if you go, all these coffee tea estates, coffee estates when they are there, around the coffee estate there will be like pits there. 10, 10 feet pits would have been dug up. And elephants cannot come. Correct? 10 feet wide, 10 feet depth it will be. Elephants cannot jump. Many times elephants jump and go also. They are very smart. Correct? Many of the coffee estates are destroyed. Elephants are damn smart. If you put a fencing, they will put a tree and they will, you know, uh, take down the entire fence. Extremely smart they are. Electric fence also. They know that this electric electricity will be running here. So they will they break down a tree and throw it and destroy everything. But this trench, that's why they make it 15-20 feet. Elephants can do many things. They can't do long jump. Correct? So, the thing is 10 feet trench. Trench means what? Restriction. So, entrenchment means what? Restriction. So, the shareholders have decided to restrict the amendment of 2, 7 and 40. They are saying let's not make it 75%. Let's say to touch that we need 90%. Now, to insert this provision, it's not there anywhere. To insert this this is called entrenchment provision. What is entrenchment? It is more restrictive than special resolution. Means if anyone wants to touch 2, 7 and 40, it should be what? 90% majority. They will insert the 41st regulation. Correct? No, 40 are already there. 41st they will insert and say protection of 2, 7 and 40. To touch 2, to touch 7 and to touch 40, you need 90% and not 75%. This is called entrenchment. Now the beauty is one question. To insert the 41st one, I have to amend now again. 1 to 40 only is there. To insert the 41st one also I have to amend. Yes or no? Don't, have things, don't you think so I have to amend the AOA to insert the 41st point? Yes. So what resolution is needed to amend this? Very simple. For a public company, it is special resolution. For private company, it is unanimous. Everybody should agree. Because private company, small group of people, everybody should agree. Public company, 75%. This is to insert the point, 41st point. In the 41st point, 
some regulations are protected in this example 2 7 and 40 and to touch those things what resolution is needed more than 75 that is in my example 90 so what are entrenchment provisions entrenchment provisions are there to protect existing regulations from amendment how will i protect them i need a more restrictive clause more than 75 percent it can be 80 85 90 95 whatever okay how will i insert the amendment obviously by amending the aoa how will i amend the aoa special resolution in case of public what about private in private everybody should agree because members are less that is the entrenchment provisions got it last two points before the break done constructive notice and indoor management but see, constructive notice is a more evolved mechanism of ultra wires more evolved is constructive notice basically if that same fruit example i'll give you fruit fellow if i say buying and selling not allowed buying and selling not allowed or sorry buying and selling allowed partnership not allowed basically it's missing in the moa <laughs> I enter into a partnership with, let's say, Mahabazar. I will supply fruits to them on partnership basis. At the end of the day, I will collect the money, 40% or something, whatever it is, leave that. Now, Mahabazar, I have not supplied the goods and they have already paid me some advance also. I have not supplied the goods. Mahabazar wants to sue me. Can they do it? No, because in the MOA it is not there only. In the MOA, there is no permission to enter into partnership. Mahabazar will go to court and say, Sir, he did not give me the MOA and AOA. I am sorry, he did not give me the MOA and AOA. So, I did not read. It's like telling, like today after class, you will go in the bike without helmet. Karnada Rajyotsa, let's see what happens, you'll go. Mama will be waiting behind the tree. Correct? He will jump. You cannot stop also because you'll be going fast. And by the time, you'll only, you can't see Mama. He'll be hiding. Only Mama's stomach is seen. Pregnant. Correct? Correct? He will, you will just see. By the time you are, you do anything, Mama will jump in front. Now immediately you will turn the vehicle and then you are going back, one more Mama will come. The two Mamas converging with big tummy. Two buns are there, middle you are the cutlet. Burger is happening now. Correct? Right? They will come. Then they will say, hey, Raj Yotsava collection, give me 500. You will say, sir, I didn't know, sir, rule. Can you say that? I did not know helmet rule. No. They will say, boss, I don't, these are the rules. Emission test, emission test you have to get done every six months. Right, emission test for a vehicle, it's not there, 1000 rupees fine. What's the rule? Drunken driving, 10,000. Correct? So, you will tell, sir, I don't, didn't know the law. Can you say? No. Like that, same year. Should I give MOI to Mahabazar or Mahabazar should read it? So, the law says the moment AOA and MOA are filed with the ROC, it will be uploaded on the MCA website. Pay money and you can get it out. It will be uploaded on their website also. That veranda, I got it from their website only. You go to veranda solutions, whatever, you will get the MOA there. Yes, many of the companies put their MOA directly on the website. They will tell Mahabazar, only thing you have to do is go to MCA website, pay 100 rupees, get the documents. It's a public document. Ignorance of law is not an excuse. It's a public document. You should have seen it. So, sorry, I didn't see. I cannot help it. So, sir, I did not know about it. No, you knew about it. You already had notice about it. Sir, how did I have a notice? I did not know. No, sir, I did not know. Yes, you knew. How? Expressway or implied way? Implied. That implied another word is constructive. You did not have actual notice. What did you have? Constructive notice. 
How did I know, sir? It was there on the website. You should have checked it. Sir, sorry, I did not check. Ignorance of law, not an excuse. In Latin, it is called what? Ignorantia juris, non-excusat. Means ignorance of law is not an excuse. You cannot escape by telling I did not know the law. In Singapore, if you go and spit one day jail, I am not joking. To chew bubble gum in the metro, 50,000 rupees fine. You are from India. Wherever they say do not spit, seeing that only you are spitting. On that only you will spit. Do not urinate. You will be reading. And on that people will be urinating. Correct? So the time pass. And you urinating, you have to read. No, do not urinate. Yes. So do you think this is the same there and you will go there? That is the problem. And I had gone to Switzerland to use the restroom. 500 rupees it is. This uh, public restroom, 2 rupees we give. There it is 500 rupees. So, 500 rupees worth, no choice, that's, that's the rule there, you have to pay. We Indians will put a dagger on our heart and we will pay. Uh, paid and obviously we are using, some Indians also are there, stupid fellows, they will saw, hey, we will pay, come down, we will go behind. They went behind the tree. They did everything and came out, mamas were waiting, foreign mamas. One day jail. I am not joking. That day, those Indians we met, random fellows in Israel, and one day jail. Policeman also was waiting for them. So, you have to follow the rule. You cannot say, I did not know the law, sir. I am sorry. No. You should always lo know the law of the land. So, in Singapore, if you have jackfruit, jackfruit, you know, here you all, we all eat there, correct? Alsnan, no. There it is called, little bit extra, some stylish durian. It is called durian. I am not joking. Jackfruit is called durian. There, everywhere in Singapore, they have written no durian, no durian, no durian. I'm like, what the hell is this? Then you see, if you eat durian in public, 20,000 rupees fine. S smell, smell. It will actually do, give others discomfort. Imagine Singapore law. Correct? It will give discomfort. Correct? It will give discomfort. That is the thing. In India, nothing. I am I always right two-wheeler, I am very scared going next to buses. Why? Two, you will get showers. Correct? Different, different color showers you will get. So, that is why difficult. Correct? That is what. So, you are very, very scared to when signal I will not go near the bus only. In the correct time, in that correct, you know, destiny. And the ice match. Your line, ice is not meeting. Something else is meeting. Correct? So, difficult. Okay, at least spit somehow you can manage. They will vomit also. Have you seen on the road only they are vomiting and going? Shameless fellows. Correct? You should carry a plastic bag, you should vomit into it. Correct? You are leaving your trail everywhere, full Malayshwaram trail. Correct? Happens in India only. Nothing can be done. So, public properties, everything. You see on front morning only are seeing all bottles here kept. They think it's public property. All beer bottles here right in front. They think it is what? Public property. That's uh, Public property is their property is what they think. Unfortunately. Anyway, so basically constructive note. Tomorrow you cannot tell I did not know the law. You are supposed to know the law. That's called constructive notice. So, constructive notice protects the company against the outsiders. Outsiders should know. Last rule is the opposite of constructive notice. It is called indoor management. Indoor management. It is called indoor management. It is called indoor management. So, let's for example, Advait Learning Private Limited will communicate you that today is the class and all the, whatever those things, fine. You will come here and you are waiting. Let's assume you have paid fees also. Only then it will be a contract, no? Let's say you have paid fees, contract is there already. I have told the office that, you know, class will not be there, it will be tomorrow, whatever it is. You have come from, you know, far off. So, nobody knows about it. Then they will come and say, sorry, today class is cancelled. Class only is fully cancelled. It's not going to happen next two, three days. Can you sue ALPL? Can you sue Advait Learning? 
I have told the office to inform on time. They did not inform you. Correct. So the thing is, of course, you'll get a refund. That's not. That's what I'm saying is, when I say, can you sue them? Yes, you can sue for the refund for sure. So the thing is, now ALPL is telling, no, no. I had told my uh, employee to tell. ALPL means the management. Let's say me. I am telling, no. I told my employee to tell. If they didn't tell, I am sorry. I mean, I cannot think I am bad. It's already. If I have told them, it is. It means that they have already told you. No. And it happened like that. No. In constructive notice, it would have happened. No. If I have uploaded on the website, it means you should have seen. Here, same thing. I am trying to tell. I told my employee. I my hands are washed. If they didn't tell, I cannot help. You will say, sir, what happens within your four walls of your company? I don't care. I am an innocent outsider. I should have been communicated. For example, same example, like fruits, fruits. You have the partnership point also in that already no problem. So Mahabazar enters into a contract with Advait Fruits. Assume. Now, so the thing is, you enter into a contract with the Advait Fruits. MOA allows partnership. Allowed. Hundred percent allowed. Hundred percent allowed. Mahabazar says, sir, just give one board resolution where they have all agreed to the terms and conditions. Sign the board resolution and give me. So board of directors meet, will sign a resolution and they'll give. And sir, also I need one resolution of the shareholders where they have agreed to all the terms and conditions. That's my policy. You take. Now, guys, this meeting when I call, it should be called on time properly. Which you should follow many rules and regulations. The company secretary has not followed those rules and regulations. Means notice should be sent 21 days before the meeting. Notice should be held properly. Venue should be given. Notice should be given. Nothing has been followed, but resolution has been passed. When I give the resolution to Mahabazar, Mahabazar will say yes, sir. You are given me, which means I am assuming that everything is okay. Later, can you cancel the contract saying that notice was not given on time? No. Mahabazar will say, sir, your internal regulations, how you do, that is not my concern. I asked you for a letter. You gave me the letter. I am assuming when you gave me the letter, all the procedures when to get that resolution would have followed. Now you are telling me that uh, resolution was not passed properly. I don't care. Or uh, everybody's signature is there. For me, it is passed pro properly. Exact opposite of constructive notice is what? Indoor management. Outsiders are protected. Outsiders are telling, I do not care what happens within the four walls of the company. I do not care what happens within the four walls of the company. If you say that you have done it, you have done it. I don't care about other things. So that is indoor management. But indoor management also has an exception. Constructive notice exception is indoor management. Indoor management exception is two, three things. For example, if I am a director of Advait Fruits. I am also a director in Mahabazar. Two companies are entering into contract, common directors. In Advait, I know that notice has not been given on time. Can I stand in from Mahabazar's point of view and ignore that, that important information? No. In this case, don't you think so? I had knowledge of the fact that internally it was not done properly? Yes. Indoor management only protects innocent outsiders. Am I innocent? No. I know from inside what is happening. Outside, I am standing in some other company. I should tell them everything. If I don't tell them, I cannot claim protection under indoor management. Same directors. Or one more example. What if all these signatures are forged? Four signatures Mahabazar gets. Mahabazar takes it in good faith, but the signatures are forged. Unfortunately, no protection for Mahabazar. Because, guys, forgery is null and void. If you tell, sir, it is valid, I am giving validity to something which is illegal and invalid, dangerous. So, in, my, in this example, though Mahabazar is innocent, they will have to face the loss, unfortunately, because forgery is a 
nullity null and void same provisions are here check it out all this we have done constructor notice indoor management and in indoor management important case law royal british bank versus turquoise popularly called as the turquoise rule exceptions to indoor management also they'll ask in the exam one is what actual notice of irregularity means what you are a you are only the director director of mahabazar also director of advert fruits also then the suspicion all you can go through then forgery doctrine of indoor management applies to irregularities which might otherwise affect a transaction you cannot apply to forgery because it's a nullity it's an exception to turquoise rule a forgery cannot be validated because it will be validating something which is invalid from the beginning right it is void done that's all next we'll do what partnership act after a break you want come on let's begin indian partnership act we'll finish this and maybe end for the day because uh, again tomorrow again we can take and finish all the other two chapters cool so partnership act earlier partnership act was where it was in the indian contract act so basically everything was part of indian contract act that's why indian contract act is called as the mother law from part contract act two things came one was the indian partnership act one was sale of goods act so the concept of sale of goods and the concept of partnership both were where it was in the indian contract act it was removed and then put as separate laws one is partnership one more is sale of goods so partnership extends to what guys whole of india except jammu and kashmir no after the abrogation of the, you know 370 it extends to the whole of india extends to whole of india last person can you just close the door thank you earlier where was it it was where it was part of the indian contract act it came into force all this you leave guys don't worry yeah is correct came into force on when 1st october all that not needed now leave it yes partnership act definition definitions are generally given in section 2 but partnership definition is given in section 4 because it's the most important definition in partnership act whatever we have blanks here these are the keywords that the examiner will see when you are writing the exam partnership is the dash the relation relation between dash persons persons who have dash agree to share the dash profits of dash yes of business carried on uh, carried on by all or any of them acting for all any of them acting for all yes partnership act you've been studying in school in college also no not there huh? business studies second pc what you know not there in that was that yeah these are the keywords and accounts of course persons who have entered into partnership with one another are called individually they are called as partners and the name and collectively they are called as a firm and the name that you give is firm name there is no difference between partner and partners there is no difference guys if a partner is there three fellows are there there is no difference between the combination of these three and this what do you say any association basically for a company the moment you register as a company you saw four examples that uh, nandan nilekani narayan murthy four of them came together and started a company then it became infosys but here it will become an association the invisible bond that they share that association will be called as a firm does firm have a separate legal entity no firm doesn't have a separate legal entity it is individually the same and uh, collectively also the same where does it have a separate entity only in the eyes of taxation income tax department used to uh, used to only tax individuals what did they do they started making into coming in together as partners and then started creating partnership firm so they started charging income tax for firms also later in the eyes of income tax department only there is a difference otherwise there is 
no difference between partners and partnership firms. So here keywords, relation between persons, agreed, profits, business. So if I break it down, it is what? Relation between persons who have agreed to share the profits. And one for all, all for one, we'll see that. Of business, of course. Relation. Is this legal relation or social relation? Legal relation. If you say, come, let's go bat, do batting today. Karnataka Rajyotsava batting, that batting. Correct? Let's do in partnership, me and you, Shivaji Military Hotel. Correct? What do you think? That is what? That is partnership? No. It should be what? Legal relation. Other fellow will say, sorry bro, today lose motion, cannot come. So can you can you sue him? No, correct. So it is what legal relation. Legal relation. It should be not social obligation. It should be what legal relationship. No social obligation. It should only be legal. Which means what? There should be an intention to create legal relationship. There should be an intention to create legal relationship. Most important. In contract, right, you have seen it already. When I say persons, minimum two people must be there. One person cannot be a partner to oneself. It should be what? Persons, minimum two. Third, agreed. This agreed should be voluntary or what? Yeah, at knife point, if I threaten you, is that agreement? Never. So this agreement should be voluntary. It should not be coercion. It should not be fraud. It should not be undue influence and all mistake, all that. It cannot be voidable at any cost. It should be void. Sorry, valid. Agreed. Voluntary. Then I am agreeing to share the profits. Profits will include losses also. In income tax, income will include illegal income also. Obviously, if I smuggle goods and made one make one crore, income tax department will say, sorry, sorry, it's in, it's not only income tax will only charge legal income. No. Illegal, all incomes are income. So, all profits will include losses also. Income will include negative income also. Negative means loss. So, yes, I am going to share the profits also, losses also. Of what business? So, basically, guys, there has to be an intention to create a business. It should not be some charitable thing. For example, if uh, all of us say, let's enter into a partnership, legal relationship, we are agreeing to do what? Uh, services for orphanage, etc. We'll collect money, we'll collect funds, we'll collect uh, clothes, etc. and give it to the orphanage. Is it partnership? No. There should be an intention to do business. There should be intention to do business. So, if we had started the reading room for charitable purposes, anybody can come, first come, first serve, first serve basis, then it is charity. Otherwise, actually it's run by a partnership firm, honestly. That partnership firm, the intention only is very clear in the objects. It is what? Running the business of reading rooms. Yes. Intention to make profit must be there little bit. But it should not be like, not there only. For example, if it's charity, anybody can come, anybody can go. Charitable purpose, that's a different thing. Many of these community halls will be there, no? Like your... Uh, Jain community will have a special hostel only for Jains. This uh, Vakkaliva community will have only for Vakkalivas. Brahmin community will have for Brahmins. Gauda community will have for Gaudas. That free hostel will be there. So if you can go and prove that you are that from that particular, uh, you know, religion, caste, subcaste, you know, community, then you will give you will, they'll get give you that benefit of free, etc. So if you see, yes, that is what, that is not partnership. Partnership should have an intention to have business. Business should be at the crux of everything. And what do you say? Relation between persons who have agreed to share profits or losses of business. Business. And then last but not the least, one for all, all for one. That is the most important rule of partnership, mutual agency. In all other partner, in all other things, even uh, companies and association. AOP is an association, BO is an association, everything is an association, but what differentiates association with partnership? It is the mutual agency. One partner does something, everybody will come down. Correct? One down, everybody will be down. 
so one partner does something commits a fraud entire firm is down so it is one for all all for one so if you want to start a partnership there should be incredible trust there should be very very high trust among the other with the other person otherwise starting a partnership will be a waste so we have had amazing relationships before bad relationships in partnership so that day only we decided no more partner day before yesterday also we were having a meeting where somebody came and said i want to be a partner in advait i said thank you so much first of all it's a private limited company nobody is allowed so if we want we can have association yes association will have you work we'll also work we can share yes but no concept of partnership no concept of uh, you know the mutual agency should be there because wavelengths do not match wavelengths do not match our our thing is never charity but never looting the students never all our fees etc is always uh, either to the market level or slightly lesser that's the policy it is you know other people charge extra you for example i have seen no 25000 you will join then they'll say test series 10000 something else 5000 individual attention 5000 whatever they charge now here nothing here it is that is the been the policy predominantly so greed will come guys the moment you join with others no they will say sir why don't you charge this why don't you charge i have had that experience before so we realize that then i realize partnership really well for partnership to work there should be a wavelength not just at the beginning but also later your your uh, objective should never change you can loot the students easily today i will tell one half an hour story after that i can assure you you will come and join if i tell 500 rupees you have to join this let's say i tell motivational course next 3 days if you join the course 100% you'll pass the exam i can assure you half an hour if i speak you'll join also but we don't do that correct we don't do that i'm just saying so the thing is even this crash course also for us it really doesn't matter we have charged some 1000 by 2000 just to give that seriousness to outsiders we know one person also will not come we know it we didn't want them to come that was the reason why we actually put that money Uh, you know charge that money to outsiders but yes uh, to you guys also i came and told come and join because i want you guys to clear you guys also we are doing it you uh, for you because we want you guys to clear as simple as that so the thing is we'll charge money and to ensure nobody will come because the thing is you only want you guys to come that's the idea but whereas others will charge some 500 rupees peanuts and give some horrible quality so that's the beauty of partnership why i am telling you all this is this mutual agency should not be at the initial stage also but also throughout it should be throughout the partnership whenever it ends now when will the partnership end no is there a partnership for fixed term yes can there be partnership for uh, perpetuity until the partner dies possible you can have partnership both my previous partnerships were this only partnership till one of the partner dies or is thrown out in both cases they were thrown out because the wavelengths did not match with us greed came in whenever greed comes in they are out so the thing is that's what mutual agency so if you see that's what it is so if you see guys what i am trying to tell relation between persons who have agreed to share the profits of business most important thing all for one one for all this is the most important thing with that if that goes in all my partnerships in the past have failed because of this point only then i realized this dialogue that mutual agency is the true test of partnership what is the true test of partnership mutual agency it is the most important rule cardinal rule card means heart cardinal means heart so cardinal means most important card means heart cardio cardiograph cardiovascular surgery cardiology card if you throw somebody from the heart it's called discard really i'm not joking discard word is derived from that only throwing somebody from the heart discard correct yes discard yes i discarded my ex girlfriend's pictures correct it is discard means what throw some from something from the heart that's the meaning of it actually card and cord both are the same discard also you would have heard discard there is one app also no discard yes so discard is one thing discard discard basically means what 
your arts are not meeting there is a discord so they have used that name actually there for discord actually to connect people they have used the word discord nice you know marketing strategy so that is called discord but you would have seen the hotel you know where hearts are coming together you would have seen this hotel group concord yes or no concord is a five star hotel group concord yes concord means what all the hearts coming together yes so if you see that's what it is anyway so what is the mutual what is the true test of partnership mutual agency so mutual agency is a true test and personally i have experienced it that's why i'm telling yes this is definitely the true test it should not only be at the beginning but throughout your journey the wavelength should always match the moment wavelengths don't match that is the end of the partnership that is one of the reasons why we started a private limited company because we said enough of partnerships it will not work academy will run but partnerships will not work so it is no point so let's uh, be you know separate only and let's start a separate wing which is which nobody will come and interfere in the way we run business because our uh, policy is completely different from others honestly speaking yes so partnership meaning in other places it's very sad they will take students for some fees and then later they will do these talks motivational talks extra 1000 rupees extra 2000 rupees by the time you come out of it 50000 gone then you'll realize how did i pay 50000 wasn't the fees 30000 initially it will happens so they'll come and do do this extra that is extra this extra they, they will get business tactics i don't know to do business to be very honest that's why we are like this we are small and we are happy we don't know to do business if we do business no we can print money but that has never been the idea because i have rejected many proposals where i told you know before they turned try taking over offered us crores you keep your crores to yourself we are happy with what we are so if you see that's what partners are collectively called what firm and the name under which their business is called is called as firm name this is the most important thing done okay mutual agency capacity of partner to bind other partners by his acts is called as mutual agency now here coming back guys now when i say persons who are here relation between persons these persons must be competent or incompetent yeah means what major sound mind then not disqualified by law not disqualified by law in indian contract you would have studied that persons competent to enter into contract can become cannot become can become partners or what minor minor is incompetent hence minor cannot be a partner but yes admitted to what benefits of partnership admitted to the benefits of partnership can company be a partner can company be a partner yes that is the concept of joint venture two companies entering into a partnership there is a legal term for it joint venture jv starbucks is between tata and starbucks hero honda hero and honda maruti suzuki maruti and suzuki then uh, you know you have many such things which one even the uh, what which one ah uh, idea and vodafone now they have merged basically that's a higher level it's not a jv it's actually a merger correct so the higher form of jv is merger only they'll merge two companies will merge together correct so now you cannot call this veranda and the jk sha as jv that is take over similarly this uh, you know this example of vodafone idea is a merger two entities are merging one is merging one is take over then one is both of us have ventures let us come together and jointly do one thing you've seen this spectacle company vision express vision express on the road you would have seen vision express that is a uh, joint venture between reliance and grand vision of netherlands They have come together grand vision supplies the technology and uh, reliance su supplies the manpower and the entire running the show in india like that so when two people have a uh, good objective they'll come together uh, have a common objective they will do a jv joint venture that's what it is so association it is so company as can be a partner partnership between indian national and alien friend not enemy alien friend can I enter into partner with a foreigner yes why not it is valid alien enemy is invalid alien friend is valid alien means somebody who is not from my place not foreigner not from my land foreigner 
डोंट थिंक अबाउट जादू एंड ऑल दैट दैट स्टूपेड मूवी वाज देयर नो कोई मिल गया दैट कोई मिल गया ओनली नो व्हिच इज दैट मूवी हां दैट ओनली करेक्ट ईटी एक्स्ट्रा टेरेस्ट्रियल वन मूवी वाज देयर स्टीवन स्पीलबर्ग्स मूवी यस two partnership firms can they enter into a partnership no because there is no difference between partnership firms and the partners how can two firms come into a partnership no can two partnership firms respective partners enter into one more partnership yes but two partnership firms cannot enter into partnership why there is no separate legal entity relation of partnership arises from relationship or from a contract obviously from contract guys there has to be a contract and not from status status means relationship in a hindu undivided family if you are born into the family automatically you are a member but in partnership if you are born as a partner as a you know son of some daughter of a partner are you a partner no you have to work and become something many of my students their part their fathers have uh, all partnership firms big big partnership firms one of icai presidents i will not name him icai past president his son is my student so he is like sir i just want to clear this exam so that i can join my dad's firm as a ca imagine he is some 21 20 22 now he is unable to join his father's firm because he is not a ca His father is telling, "Boss, you become a CA. That's it. You can take over my legacy. It's a firm which is there since 30 years. Superb it is. But nobody will listen to him until he becomes a CA. That's why those two letters are very important. Father is ready to give his entire thing to his son, but the degree is not there. That two two letters are not there. So he's trying. Two times he wrote. This time he will write. He'll pass. I'm sure. So yes, to uh, one one group is already over. One more group is pending. So once that is done, that's it. He will become the partner of a legacy. Entire legacy he will take over. Yes. So if you see, relation of partnership arises from contract and not from status. Just because you are the son or daughter doesn't make you a partner. You should obviously enter into a contract. Members of a HUF and uh, Burmese Buddhist husband and wife, all that. just because they are doing business are they partners no they are not partners they don't have any agreement don't have any agreement contract association of two or more person what is the minimum number of people in the partnership firm to where does it say section 4 of indian partnership act by using the word persons they tell it indirectly what is the maximum 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 is 50 as per 464 of companies act companies act says everything is an association even companies an association you can have associations up to 50 the moment 50 first member joins please convert to a company that's what companies act says If you don't convert to a company after 51. Actually, companies act says 100. Companies act says 100, or any other sum as the government may prescribe. What is this? Uh, what is the number now as of today? 50. You should write 50 only in the exam, not 100. Okay? 100 is what? Like for example, small company. What is the limit now? Two crore. It can go up to 10, like that. It can go up to 100. But what is the prescribed limit now? 50. Got it. Tomorrow they can make it sixty. They can make it seventy. Can they make it hundred and ten? No. They can only make it up to hundred. So, in your stupid college, PUC, what was that? Ten in non-banking. Remember, twenty in banking. All that nonsense is still there in your textbook, I guess. That changed ten years ago. That's the quality of our education in uh, Karnataka, unfortunately. we are studying some old stuff in uh, second pc you studied this no 10 in banking then you studied the same thing that changed 10 years ago only you wrote your second pc 10 years ago no which means you wrote some 3 4 2 3 years ago your 2 years 1 year ago this year you wrote 2 years ago you are studying something which got deleted 10 years ago unfortunate yes so association yeah if it exceeds that number and you don't register it as a company 
association becomes illegal if not registered as a company association becomes illegal if not registered as a company my handwriting is worse than a doctor's handwriting doctor's handwriting at least the pharmacist will understand my handwriting i only don't understand forget about pharmacist yes agreement agreement is what partnership originates from an agreement you know carrying on business business includes what trade occupation and profession basically association for charitable religious social purposes are not called partnership just because i am sharing the profit am i a partner for example you are my employee i will say if you bring me 100 students as an example i will give you 20000 rupees or i will give you 10% of my profit if you bring 100 students 10% of the profit is yours tomorrow if anything happens to advait can i sue you can outsider sue you no just because you are sharing profit will you be a partner no let's say there are three partners one partner dies the other two partners have high regard for the partner who died they'll go to the partner's uh, spouse and say because of this partner only we are here what we are today so i promise from today whatever we earn some 10% will give you for the rest of your life don't worry is that widow or is that spouse widower whatever it is is that person a partner no the sharing of profit may be evidence but sharing of profit is not conclusive evidence it's not conclusive evidence i may give a i mean i may take a loan from you you are a bank you will give a loan to me or you are a money lender you will give loan to me i'll invest it in business i'll say sir how much interest you want sir you will say i don't want interest then what you want sir i want share of profit i know you, you will do really well give me 5% 10% the day before yesterday only it happened they came to me and said i will invest 5 crore in advait sorry 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 what i ah, like shark tank okay show shark tank is yes yes correct but there they are asking for equity in the company there they are asking for equity shares in shark tank here i am not talking about that i am talking about partnership firm in pa there it's a company so they say i want 10% equity in your company here it's similar only but i am saying i will give you 5 crore you give me 30% share in the profits 30% share in the profits now what do you think that just because i am sharing my profit will that make me a partner will that other person be a partner no he's just a money lender basically it's like i'm taking a loan instead of paying interest what am i giving profit very simple so all these things also happen one of my clients is uh, this thing they do the electric bikes charger uh, they are doing charger young fellows only you know, in the early 20s they are doing chargers they are manufacturing chargers so he had come to us for getting funding so i was meeting many people for funding not for free obviously i will charge my fee i am just saying so that uh, for the thing is now if i get them funding those people who give funding 10 crore etc will they be partners no what will they be just money lenders will they take interest no they will take share of profits so if it's in a company format it's called venture capitalist investors all those big big terms you lose in partnership firms it's just mere investors so that is what it is so sharing the profit so this also again i told you day before yesterday somebody came and said i want to be a partner I said no way okay i want to invest i said that i may agree if i need no i don't need but the thing is it should only be no partnership but sharing of profit practical example only i'm giving sharing of profit you come you invest we'll do the business and if we get whatever money you take whatever 20 30 percent whatever it is you take close that's it if we don't do well we'll put our effort if we don't do well then for you also tirupati darshan special darshan you can go right so if you see what sharing the profit is it conclusive is, is not conclusive cannot be conclusive proof 
cannot be conclusive proof. It is only an evidence that can be rebutted. Rebutted means challenged. It is only an evidence that can be challenged. That evidence can be challenged. So, yes, then, means what? Challenge in the court of law. The lender can go and say, boss, I am not a partner. I am just sharing the money and profits. So, ultimately, guys, whether a person is a partner or not, you should give regard to what? The real relation. Real relation means what? Mutual agency. Real relation means mutual agency. One for all, all for one. Business is defined in a inclusive way. Means what? Business includes. Whereas act of the firm is defined in an exhaustive way. Or restrictive way. When act uses the word means. No other meaning can be given. When act uses the word means, no other meaning can be given. If I say this batch means the best students, it means only the best other. If I say this batch includes best students, some are good, all are good, some of them are best. This batch includes bad students. Most of them are good, some are bad. So inclusive is you know, can give more meaning to it. But when I use the word means, no other meaning can be given. So, in the definition, when you come to inter, we will learn. In definition clauses, when you use the word means, it is different from when you use the word includes. Right? That's what it is. Now, partners, rights and duties. Types of partnership firms, these are all the various types of partnership firms, particular partnership, sub-partnership, partnership at will, partnership for fixed term. Partnership for fixed term, let's have a partnership for three years, easy. Particular partnership, let's have a partnership to organize this year's New Year's party. Particular reason. This uh, Bangalore Metro Rail Corporation along with uh, BBMP, BDA, all of them have come together partnership to build what? Metro. Once the metro is constructed, what happens to the partnership? They will disintegrate, particular partnership. What is sub-partnership? Sub-partnership is actually not a partnership type, it is partner of a partner. Partner of a partner. So basically, A, B, C are partners. C has one more relationship with Z, sub-partner. So, each of them are getting, or like ABCD, each of them are getting 25%, 25% partnership share. C has one more contract with Z where he has agreed to share 50% of his share. His share is what? 25%. 50% of that, 12 and half, 12 and half. Now tell me, can this fellow come and interfere in the firm? No. Is he a partner of the firm or partner of the partner? Partner of the partner. The only relationship that this firm has with the, part, the outside fellow is that share. Can this fellow come and ask for the share? Only that is a yes. If he can show the agreement, he can ask for 50% of the share, nothing else. So that is called sub-partnership. And partnership at will is what? All my previous partnership was this only. No end to the partnership date. As long as the partners are alive or as long as the partners want to continue, they can continue. So if you see, check it out here. Section numbers and all not needed. Where a person may become, second point, when a person may become a partner, another person in particular, adventure or undertaking. In particular, adventure or undertaking. Adventure means what? Business. Risk. Risk taking venture is called adventure. Every business is an adventure. Without adventure, there will be no returns or undertaking. Then what is it called? The partnership is particular partnership. What is that partnership called? Particular partnership. Partnership is called particular partnership. Sorry, here. Here you see, when no provision is made by the contract between the partners for the duration or for the 
determination determination means termination this is called partnership at will in partnership at will two things will not be there in partnership at will two things will not be there first one duration second one determination means how will it end termination two things will not be there no duration and no termination when i say no termination how to terminate will not be given no duration second one is no termination how to terminate will not be given no duration no termination how to terminate will not be given here you see anil and mukesh agree to do trading of laptops for a period of 3 years partnership will be terminated after 3 years is it partnership at will no because they have given the duration is a partnership of fixed term actually next ram lakshman and bharat agree to carry on business subject to the condition that partnership may be terminated by mutual agreement is this partnership at will no why how to end also they have given how to end they have given so in if you want it to be partnership at will time also should not be fixed how to end it also should not be given which means in the partnership deed you should just write one line this partnership is partnership at will does it mean it cannot be ended no of course you can end it how will you end it how will you end by giving a notice who will give a notice the partner who doesn't want to continue will give a notice so if you see i'll see that i'll link it down here page page 11 in this page 11 here retirement partner may retire with the other partners consent okay in accordance with express agreement okay by giving written notice of his intention to retire in case of partnership at will in a partnership at will i can say i don't want to continue i don't want to continue so how will i retire one is other partners consent second one in accordance with the express agreement third one is what by giving written notice of his intention to retire in case of partnership at will partnership at will coming back sub partner i already discussed kinds of partners sleeping partner or dormant partner means this fellow only invests in the business will he take profit of course will he be liable yes of course he won't be active basically you will not know who is the partner at all there will be somebody else will be the face of the organization you will not even know who has invested in the firm that is called as sleeping or dormant partners they are they'll never be seen as associated with that firm at all nobody will know but somebody would have invested in that firm active or ostensible ostensible means easily seen ostensible means easily seen ostensible jewelry means what you can see that person more than that person you can see the jewelry shining that is called ostensible jewelry so ostensible partner means what you can easily see that person active partner always works in the firm you will know that he is the partner nominal this nominal fellow will only give the name to the firm will only give the name will he get a share of profit depends on the arrangement generally he will get for giving his name will he work in the firm no he just give his name if i say virat kohli ca academy let's assume he is my friend i'll say virat kohli ca academy what do you think so is he will he teach no has he given money no i have just used his name with his permission he is definitely a partner is associated now do you think uh, this sevag international school is there do you think virendra sevag will go and teach no it's owned by him he has he has sevag international school 
and he also has Saiva Cricket Academy. True. So, do you think he will go and teach? No. He has people under him. Once in a way, he may go. Of course, once a year or once in two years, he can, or once in twice a year, he can go and just uh, give some pep talk and all that. That's it. So, it's just the name. So, yeah, nominal. Partner in profits only. Partner in profits only means what? Generally, partner will be a partner in both profits and losses. What is his partner in profits only? He will not share losses? No? Yes. He will not share losses of other people. He will share losses in his area. Let us assume I am only teaching law and tax. I am very happy. Assume I am alone. I am only teaching this solo. Some academy will approach me and say, Sir, we don't have a law faculty, tax faculty. Why don't you join us? In partnership, you join, sir. No problem. We will not give you anything. We'll, you can take any number of students who come. That's yours. And whoever in the academy, whoever comes, you will get a share. I will say, Sir, I am happy with my area, but I don't trust your other faculty and all that. What if it's going to be a loss? So they will say, Okay, Sir, if you have that problem, I will give you an offer. Tell me. You keep your money, don't want. Whatever you are earning is yours. And whatever losses that you incur, it is up to you. Let's say CA firm, CA firm, forget about teaching, CA firm. So in CA firm, that there are, there are, basically guys, you will go to some supermarket where everything is available or you will go to five different shops to bring uh, some 10 items, supermarket. Like that, in real life now, Clients are coming to CA firms which will have everything under one roof. You should have accounts, you should have uh, tax consultancy, you should have you know GST consultancy, then direct tax consultancy, you should have mergers and amalgamation consultancy, you should have IBC, insolvency and bankruptcy court consultancy, RERA consultancy. They are looking for such firms, multidisciplinary. On top of the library, we have such LLP. I am a partner there. So, we have multiple frame, fraud investigation, correct, Thinkfin Solutions LLP is our LLP which is on top of our library which is there. So, yes, that is my office, I never go there, but it's my office, I can go whenever I want, I don't have the time to go there. So, yes, we do, all these things are there. Now, if anybody walks into that office, he will ask what all is there. I actually handle IBC and RERA cases. So, that, that partner sitting will tell all this. Where is that fellow? Sir is not there. He is torturing students. But will he do? Yes, sir. We have all the services in this LLP. Everything is there in this LLP. Fair enough. They will come. Now assume these two things are not there. One fellow comes. Oh, you have all these things. Very good. I want these two also. This, this partner will say, not there, sir. Sorry. They will lose the business. So, instead of that, what they'll come? They'll come to me. Assume, I'll be doing these two businesses separately, alone. I'm very happy being alone. I'm doing this. They'll come to me and say, Sir, why don't you join our firm? Example I'm giving. Why don't you join our firm? Become a partner there. And, uh, you know, you can enjoy. I said, Boss, I don't want to be a partner. I am happy doing my own stuff here. I am happy doing my own stuff. I don't want to come inside and share my profit to you. And I don't want to take your money also. I am happy doing alone. Now, you are a group of 4 or 5 people. You desperately want me to join on board. What will you do? You have to give me some superb deal. What deal you will give? Sir, you do your own, sir. We will not disturb you. Whatever profits you earn, you earn. If losses you make in your own area, it's up to you. No problem. But from our area, whatever profits we earn, 5% extra, you will give it to you. Isn't a win-win situation for me, no? For them also, it's a win. They have to just let go of 5%, but they'll get more business because people want this a lot. For me, whatever I'm earning plus, I will get 5% from their thing also. Good, why will I say no? So, I'll join. Correct? So, that is the meaning of what? Partner in profits only. Does he mean it, it, it doesn't share losses? No, he will share. Which loss? His loss he will share. But others profit he will take. 
that is called partner and profits only it's a very rare but it's there it's there when you want that person to come on board you will give everything to that person that is called partner and profits only partner and profits only partner and profits only means what you will obviously give everything to that person done okay so next sub partner is what partner of partner incoming partner is a person who is coming inside the company firm sorry outgoing partner is a partner who is getting out of the firm these are all normal types nominal name now what is this partner by holding out now actual partner means partner by agreement he has entered into a contract with an agreement or contract partner by holding out is important what is this partner by holding out it is partner by holding out or estoppel maybe i would have had something let me just check yeah see guys vijay mallya i'm not vijay mallya sorry venkatesh mudalyar vm venkatesh mudalyar vm this i had drawn now again i don't want to draw and waste time so whatever is there i'm putting venkatesh mudalyar is what he's a partner vm he is telling i am the partner okay is he the partner no he is telling that i am the partner there are two other people krishnan and ferdinand kf it's not king fisher king uh, krishnan and ferdinand okay they are actually the partners of the firm kf and company venkatesh mudalyar is not the partner at all but he is telling everybody i am the partner he is telling everybody i am the partner that is case number 1 second krishnan and ferdinand themselves are telling vm is the partner two scenarios in first case venkatesh mudalyar vm himself is telling is the partner in second case krishnan and ferdinand they are telling that vm is the partner and vm is silent is not telling anything vm is silent so one case is what vm is telling i am the partner second case uh, krishnan and ferdinand they are telling vm is the partner and vm is silent is vm actually the partner no now for example if i tell sanjana is the partner of advait i'll simply tell now correct r sanjana there is one more sanjana here okay r sanjana here our office sanjana i'll tell she is the partner of advait or sanjana will come and tell i am the partner of advait i don't tell anything tomorrow believing that she is the partner if you give her some money and she runs away correct what do you think she is found in goa spirit spiritual activity correct yes she is found in goa doing spiritual activities enne enne yes so what what do you think then what can you sue the partnership firm yes similarly here also vf vm is telling i am the partner i am silent here kf are telling vm is the partner vm is silent so anybody by words spoken or written or through their conduct the words spoken or written or through conduct words spoken or written we will tell that i am the partner or through conduct they are only coming and telling that they are the i mean through their actions it is coming to know that they are coming to know that they are the partner correct so that what so represents himself as a partner in this case vm is representing himself as a partner or knowingly allows someone else to represent him as a partner vm is allowing krishnan and ferdinand to represent him as a partner now best part is on the faith of such representation to bakra fellows correct on the faith of the representation to bakra fellow bakra fellow 1 bakra fellow 2 correct sadik pasha inzamam sbi and emmanuel david bethlehem in grade dpi these are the two banks which gave vijay mallya money that's why i have written like this that's all right so bakra fellow 1 and bakra fellow 2 what have they done they have given credit to the firm they have given credit to the firm they have given credit to the firm what happens then what happens then and then vijay mallya what 
ఈ శ్రీ శ్రీ రవిశంకర్ పార్ట్ టూ ఆర్ట్ ఆఫ్ లీవింగ్ లెఫ్ట్ ద కంట్రీ నాట్ ఆర్ట్ ఆఫ్ లివింగ్ ఆర్ట్ ఆఫ్ లివింగ్ వాట్ ఈ లెఫ్ట్ ద కంట్రీ వేర్ అండ్ టు యూకే దెన్ వాట్ హ్యాపెన్స్ క్యాన్ విజయ్ మల్యా ఎస్కేప్ పనిష్మెంట్ నో దట్ ఈస్ ద బ్యూటీ ఆఫ్ దిస్ విచ్ వన్ పార్ట్నర్ బై హోల్డింగ్ అవుట్ హోల్డింగ్ అవుట్ మీన్స్ వాట్ యు హ్ రిప్రజెంటెడ్ you are represented will law stop you yes will law stop you yes vijay malya is going abroad no problem but will law say that you are liable yes will law allow you to escape no escape means escape the liability you can escape from the country but you still liable now to vijay malya so will can vm escape punishment no this is called as partner by holding out one more partner by estoppel that's the legal term partner by estoppel partner by holding out or what partner by estoppel that is that thing can we am escape punishment no partner by holding out partner by estoppel got it so in this case can vijay malle escape punishment in both the cases no is he an actual partner no he is a partner by holding out that same thing now rights and duties of the partner rights and duties of the partner general duties gca greatest common advantage these are all the keywords to be just and faithful and to render true accounts and full information greatest common advantage just and faithful true account so this is the foundation of every partnership one is what it should be for the advantage of everybody in that example i was doing ibc and era consultancy they were doing that synergy benefit is there it should never be at expense of one person it should always be mutually beneficial just and faithful the partnership is based on trust correct it should be based on trust if there is no trust then there is no partnership if there is no trust there is no partnership since i do not care much about money one of my partners old and when he started off in 2012 that partner used to cheat me i realized later so i threw him out so it's true from my experience only i am telling so yes then i realized the importance of this just stand faithful so ultimately money is all secondary but cheating is something which is what do you say not tolerated right it should be just and faithful faithful means what of course there should be loyalty the moment there is no loyalty gone and what render true accounts and full information so that fellow was uh, manipulating the accounts and all this those things showing sales less i did not see all that that's why i said i am a fool bakra fellow that bakra is me only in that sbi bakra right so if you see you should not do that render true accounts and full information render true accounts and full information means what that only will happen if these three are the foundation on which the entire partnership rests it should be for the common advantage you should be honest to each other with each other and you should always render true accounts and full information true accounts means what accounting should be proper and all the information must be taken to the you know latest whatever it is to the end you should take it you should carry it true accounts and full information so basically you should have such partners or trustful people actually if you see all the businesses if you see successful businesses are all run by families only right tata's family reliance family correct then you see our entire thing mafat lal's singania birla everything is family rahul gandhi family correct correct i am not call it successful but it's run by family right yes so if you see yes so all businesses are run by families why because there is trust in families so husband wife you know your, you know their brother siblings they only run there also there are fighting ambani happened no fight between brothers only correct so that they split so ultimately now neeta ambani and uh, 
you know mukesh amani are running the show it's always you see i'm not joking the best businesses are run by family concerns family concerns run the best businesses so this also is a learning from partnership act which means you should enter into partnership with what family or anybody who is as close as family so with one girlfriend second girlfriend both all three or no right everybody is family no yes no no it will be dangerous yes so what to render two accounts and full information yes duty to indemnify what for loss caused by fraud of course if there is any fraud etc one partner should sue the other this i did to him that's the beauty how everything i learned practically contract act sale of goods act through my experiences good only so honestly i don't have to prepare for any of these chapters i can talk out of my experience so duty to indemnify for loss caused by fraud if one fellow has committed fraud other fellow has to do what indemnify indemnify means what compensate for loss not to act on any other business not to carry on other business of course can he carry on similar business no but he can carry on if it's allowed in the partnership deed to act diligently all these are normal things guys but can he make personal profits can he make personal profits for example let us say let us say in alpl i am here teaching okay so you the alpl let's say i'm at some random uh, coaching institution and i am a teacher so there's let's say there is some parent teacher meeting that all will never do but assume there is a parent teacher meeting and you will all come and one of the teachers one of the parents say sir i have a college somewhere else there one law faculty is needed why don't you come this is let's say it is it's a partnership firm i am i'm a partner assume i am a partner for the partnership firm people came and one of the parents had a college somewhere and law classes they wanted i went in my personal capacity not only law they wanted i earned 3 lakh rupees from that personal capacity question is should i share it with the firm i got that opportunity only because of the firm no because firm had students one of the students parents came and met me this is also into teaching this is also into teaching competing business and when did i how did i get this business through business connection of the firm point number 1 one more parent told sir do you also do consultancy i'll say yes sir can you do some tax consultancy tax planning for me i said okay he hired me for tax consultancy tax consultant i made 2 lakhs there also basically by using the firm's name or rather the firm's contacts i have made 5 lakhs personal money one is competing business one more is non competing business question is should i pay the firm back should i share what do you think should i share if the partnership deed is silent should i share partnership see the entire partnership act depends on the partnership deed assume the deed is silent then should i share or not gut feeling no correct answer yes simple as he hence proved so if you see here check this personal concept capsule on rights of the partners point number 4 page number 4 sorry these two are taken from the institute material one is competing business one is business connection a and b establish you read this quickly one minute you read read both the examples and tell me the answer
हाँ सर In both the cases, should A pay the share of the profit of the firm? Yes. But guys, in India, do you think we'll pay? No. So that's why the law only knows we'll not pay. So they tell if you don't want to pay, write it in the partnership deed. They say. Fair enough. In the partnership deed, you say I may use the business connection and make some personal money. I will work on that. I will make money. You don't come. It's fair enough. So if you see, yes, subject to. partnership deed in thinkfin solutions that's the arrangement we have you we'll say you bring me business i will do the work you take a small cut remaining is my money it's the deal good no tomorrow you will not say that i got you the deal you didn't give me anything okay take some percentage 10% you take be happy i cannot say i did all the work you are sharing 50% that partnership in that fight will come i did majority of the work you are taking 50% Instead of that, best part, you bringing me business. Thank you for the opportunity. Take ten percent, get out. Now I will work. All work is mine, so that ninety percent should be mine. Don't come and say partnership deed and all that. Not not allowed. Same here. So yes, subject to the partnership deed. You are also yes, subject to partnership deed. Subject to partnership deed. so coming back here what rights of the partner take part in business to be heard and consulted access to books equal share of profits all this is fine now will he get interest on capital will he get interest on capital as far as interest is concerned let's just check quickly one second i may have it may not have it let me see yeah interest Interest on capital, guys, generally is not payable at all. Why will you pay interest on capital? Correct. I have paid money capital so that you can invest in business and get me money. So generally, it is not payable. If payable, it is given in the partnership deed. If payable, it is given in the partnership deed. Correct. One second. if payable given only in the partnership deed and the interest should be paid out of profits only the interest should be paid only out of profits nothing else so interest on capital interest on advances interest on capital generally not payable if payable it should be given in the deed and where it should be out of profits only out of profits only advances on the other hand interest on advances payable interest on advances payable rate of interest follow the partnership deed rate of interest follow the partnership deed if the deed is silent interest rate would be 6% per annum 6% per annum this is the rule for interest other things are all okay guys can go through yeah can i carry on competing business after i get out of the partnership why not of course i can but can i use the old firm name no can i use the what do you say uh can i poach the old clients no not possible can i do all that no so if you see to carry on the competing business after coming out of partnership but he may not do what use the firm name he may not represent himself as carrying on the business of the firm or solicit the custom of persons who are dealing with the firm before he ceases to be a partner he cannot use the old firm name he cannot you know represent himself as ceasing as carrying on the business of the firm third which means what he cannot say that i am carrying on the old business no that is different is different you can say now i have got out of the partnership firm and i am alone and i am doing it on my own that's fair enough 
solicit the custom of persons means what cannot poach the old clients cannot take over the old clients if the clients only want to come yes but you cannot poach the old clients first thing that can happen worst thing that can happen is what after your accounts exam will come out you will sit and compare your answers with your friends yes or no 100 percent hey this question 1 lakh 40 profit you will ask your friend 1 lakh 40 your other friend 1 lakh 40 one more friend will say no no it's 1 lakh 55 thousand pull down heart gone heart attack myocardial infarction heart attack will start cardiovascular disease everything will come you ask why no that 15,000 on adjustment is there no that uh, has to come your other friend will be listening to all these things so from 10,000 some 10 people are getting 1 lakh 40 other 10, 10 people 1 lakh 55,000 for your friend loss of 5 lakh 35 has come correct correct no he'll be sitting and thinking Ayo, should I talk should I not talk for him already art, art is beating correct loss 5 lakh 35,000 but that fellow only will be correct all others will be wrong because he will be thinking the correct way so like that worst thing you can do is discuss the answers after the exam please never do it after the exam if your friend comes and asks your uh, uh, you know all the answers you run away or he is asking hey, what is the answer for this uta yeah. hey what is the answer for the second question what is the uta today masrana chitrana correct then again he is asking what is the answer how is your girlfriend yeah. correct so all that you should never ever what should never ever discuss any answer in the exam because after the exam rather because two wrong answers can never match correct no yes that's you but other person who doesn't discuss his answer only will be right so don't discuss any of those answers you will die so it will create confusion and tension for the next exam and next exam will create confusion for the next exam then eventually six months will go who will get the blame? Advait Learning, Dabba Academy, the teacher, worst fellow, correct? That is what will happen. So, please do not discuss anything. Do not discuss anything. That's the best part. Right of buyer of goodwill. <coughs> right of buyer of goodwill. So, this uh, happened with MTR actually. You know MTR? MTR Foods. MTR Foods, do you know they have already... I mean, you see all this, I'll show you, maybe it's here only, MTR. MTR, if I say MTR foods, uh, Jamun, Kodbale, Chakli, all that will come. So, this foods, you know, this fellow, you see. This fellow looks like Indian or foreigner. Yeah. So, MTR actually is now bought over by a Swedish company. A foreign company owns MTR. Right now, tell me if a foreign company has owned MTR, if he releases John Kodbade, Albert Chakli, correct, will you buy Peter Pickle, correct, you will not, correct, you will not buy Andrew Upham Mix, correct, yes, you will not, obviously, you will not buy, correct, you will not buy at all, correct, Yuri Upitu. Right? You will not buy anything. So, the thing is what? You will not buy. Correct? Catherine Kesriba. Uh, you will not buy at all, guys. Who will buy? So, they, what did they do? They bought the name, brand name. MTR brand name they bought. MTR restaurant is still there. That restaurant is there, no? That hotel near Lalbag. That is still there. That is with the old brothers. MTR brothers. Mahavali Tiffin Room. But this, uh, what do you say? The MTR foods, Jamun mix and all, George Gulab Jamun you cannot release. Correct? So basically that is, you know, given to whom? The Swedish company have retained the name. Now tell me, can the Swedish company tell the MTR brothers, don't start the same business here? Yes, of course. Definitely, why not? I can tell. The seller of goodwill, MTR brothers can enter into a contract with the buyer of goodwill. Not to carry on similar business when within dash reasonable or within rather specified local limits. I'll write down here within specified local limits or specified time. 
they may say i have bought your business for so and so amount so the next 10 years don't start mtr foods again means similar business you cannot start can i start the original mtr again no restaurant business you do restaurant also they have split grandfather and grandchildren grandchildren is like what this hotel if i enter i only don't feel like eating have you seen lalbag mtr hotel old it's like this uh, this ctr old ctr which now at least they have done something here in ctr now old it is so the grandchildren said i want young people to come so he started mtr 1924 you know mtr 1924 that's one more restaurant so that is fully modern they have full ac rooms and all they have nice cutlery everything is nice so that is started by the grandchildren grandfather is like no i should retain the tradition both are right grandfather said i should retain the tradition grandfather said nobody will come grandchildren said nobody will come only our tatas will come let them come there for young young generation they will not enter into this uh, nonsense place that you have flies everywhere mosquitoes everywhere they will not enter so it's okay i don't care i will open one more between that possible but here uh, what do you say you cannot start food division local limits specified local limits specified time as long as here and such agreements do not fall under agreement in restraint of trade and it shall be what valid if restrictions are reasonable you cannot say forever you cannot do and all those things then other things are fine implied authority will come to it. that's the last part then we'll finish off the other areas guys you know implied authority will start tomorrow morning with a fresh mind because it requires your concentration only this implied authority part tomorrow will do tomorrow we'll start off with this then we'll do sale of goods act and on chultu law is there llp waste it is we'll let's on simply there because it's there you know it is there we will do that in that uh, food they'll put one some salt in the for taste no upin kai they'll put llp is like that yes uh, for shastra they'll put that is llp is like that only useless it is contracted is important i'll upload it 10 hours that is like full that, that is not even like a crash course that is like exhaustive revision it is here i am actually doing a crash course but there indian contract because it comes out 25 marks i've done an exhaustive revision so that you please watch that on thursday on my channel all uh, nonsense things will be cut by my student don't worry it will be only classes no masala the chart 19 this tomorrow morning we'll do with a fresh mind others will finish and we'll wind up you know for the day yes failure of i can go on but i'm seeing your faces you are ready to what sleep already yes so let's finish it i can continue i can finish the full thing today only but it's okay we'll do it tomorrow sometimes i fail to understand you are still kids but, but you are not kids because once you clear next year you will be in ca final i'm not joking because if you clear this time when will you write ca inter november 23 and december january results will come so technically in one year you will be ca final students think about it and ca final you have to join article ship you have to earn money so in one year things are going to change drastically you are no longer kids so you should start coming out of that thing that i am kids and all i am a kid and all that and moreover moreover importantly next year no one is going to care about how many hours you sleep nothing it is going to be superb it's going to be morning college maybe or like evening then classes then full day article ship it's going to be awesome you're going to enjoy we have all gone through that so i'm telling so you're going to enjoy it's going to be like 18 19 20 hours outside some 3 4 hours you'll get to sleep ca is not a joke guys dark circles and all will come you have earned it you will earn the dark circles right you will earn everything but ultimately you'll get those two letters before your name correct how many cas are there in india 3 lakh in that 1 lakh already gone they are dead 1 lakh gone so basically just around 2 lakh cas 2 lakh cas out of population 140 crore that 140 crore was some 5 6 year or 10 year ago census now god only knows correct so yes so the thing is in that only 2 lakh living chartered accountants think about it so you will earn the dark circles you will earn the pimples you will earn the what do you say heartburn you will earn the heartache i'm not joking you will earn everything but at the end of the day you know get those two letters before your name ca that's all worth it and at least your parents will tell the entire world that you are a ca 
your parents will not forget about ca you clear your foundation you tell your entire bangalore will know your entire gully will know hey my son is a ca then they'll tell no no it's still doing my daughter is a ca already then two seconds gap then she ah, is doing first level she cleared first attempt she cleared that also full josh till today my dad still tells i cleared in may 2012 last week i went and met my parents some random fellow came to the house i am more of a what do you say introvert i don't mingle so much honestly i am generally like being alone my i just was in the room my father called i like oh man why did he call me because that fellow had come some random fellow i don't even ever seen him in my life he's never seen me in his life my dad you know introduces me this is my son you know he's a chartered accountant full josh you know he cleared his ca in his first attempt why as if he wanted to know and then again is then now he is uh, he is trained over 50000 char- he has produced now he's produced it since huh? yeah he has produced that's what he told i'm not joking he has produced 50000 cs i like uh ah, enough ah, okay sir you know so i am thinking where i have produced yeah i am thinking all those things so that is what he told i'm not joking after he left i said pa just shut your mouth i know you are full excited but control correct why should you tell all that is into teaching is training is produced and all that uh, next tell you produce directed acted also you tell all those things so but you cannot control their happiness this has been 10 years over since i cleared till now it tells i am not joking to so some random fellows i said i was happily in my room i was sitting and watching tv for this you called me to tell that i produced na huh? 50000 cs correct yes so that is what it is anyway come back but then i should understand you cannot control your parents happiness so even after 20 years your father will my parents will still tell that you are a chartered accountant cleared so and so years ago you cannot stop them 10 years ago is old stale news it is 10 years ago i cleared there is nothing to tell now it's become very normal but my dad with that full josh is still tells so then i realize the importance of being a ca you will not realize the importance until others tell you correct like now i am like doing other work so i was just uh, reading the bear act income tax bear act i just thought to myself did i study all this during my exam time actually yes so the thing is then you will realize the importance of ca then my our parents only told that you are like on mad fellow studying so then i realize i go back and you know think about at 18 hours 19 hours no sleep studies you know coffee back to back crazy it is but it's a wonderful journey so you will earn all those things guys and one thing you will earn which you can never get what respect that you will earn the respect when you earn the respect money will flow everything will flow for that you have to work hard it will not come easy can you demand respect or command respect command you cannot demand hey respect me no we should command that respect so whenever i go i mean in that chennai and all no all those people stand up i meet hundred people i said don't stand up respect should be in the heart that is enough no need to stand up and all like this standing up in my personal opinion is demanding respect hey stand up teacher is coming no you should you should respect the person sitting also you can respect no standing is on in the school time you will do all that it's okay now you are already adults in the next 3 years you will become cas nobody will stand but respect should be there within and the other person should command that respect not demand you cannot say respect me no you should command that with your knowledge and with the way you are so please concentrate on those areas guys clearing ca is just like one chiller thing that will happen on the way but the other things are more important ca and all is very easy guys in the sense you should getting that degree is easy but earning the respect slogging it out now that is the real fun part of it degree ca or you will get no problem i am not demeaning it i am saying it's very in difficult to command that respect you will get that respect when you get those two letters before your name and that will be the best thing you can do anything you can start anybody wants to do something else than ca film maker my student i told you is a film maker today he became a ca had a degree now he is making movies two three short movies and all he has done superb it is now he is making a full full length feature movie today also is going to meet rajnikanth and all rajnikanth is coming today
to Vidhan Sada is coming, by the way, to give a posthumous award to, uh, you know, Muneet Rajkumar, right? So, she so has gone to meet. CA is my student only. He was supposed to come today. He said, I'll come tomorrow, sir. I said, okay. So, if you see, yes, that's what. After you become CA, once you get that degree, you can do whatever you want. I wanted to open one milkshake store, chocolate milkshake. I'm not joking. I've added 37 chocolates in that. 37 different, different chocolates I've added. If you eat that, drink that chocolate milkshake, you will not touch chocolate for one month. I can assure you. That, that much chocolate was there. I named it a CA name also. I called it Murder by Amalgamated Chocolate. That was the name of the milkshake. Correct. After I drank, I gave it to my family and all. They said, shut up and sit. If you give this, it was very tasty. It was actually so tasty that they said it's too rich. And people will start hating chocolate. It is too rich. And people will start hating chocolate. I had ordered one, uh, you know, this milkshake machine and all. From Switzerland I had ordered. So, Today, if I feel bored teaching, which I'll never feel till I die, I will teach. But I'm saying, if I feel bored, then I can open milkshake shop. Correct. I'll not name it Advait Milkshake. You know, some nice name I'll give. Yes. So, if you see, yes. One of my other friends owns a ice cream store. There's one more uh, in, I don't know, have you heard, Clean Slate Cafe? Have you heard in Malaysia? Huh? That's owned by my friend who's a CA. Clean Slate Cafe. That's for college college kids, you know, there is this, have you seen, it's a which flow, which, which cross, some, some here only, no, clean slate cafe, so yes, owned by my friend who is a chartered account, she is a rank holder, so after CA, she did 3-4 years, she worked, she got bored, she started clean slate cafe, so, and she is doing pretty well, and she has all board games and all are there in that, college kids will go there, this was one movie, in that first scene was shot there only, forgot the name, yes, so if you see, yes, come back, Two, three things we'll finish the other areas very simple areas then we'll go to the uh, uh, then we'll stop guys enough liabilities of partners until we finish this you're not going home don't see the time time will pass will you pass no ah, that's all if i hit like that that's all over correct see the dialogue should learn from me don't see the time time will definitely pass will you question mark yes come back Till I finish this chapter means except implied authority. For this I need full concentration. This we will do tomorrow morning first thing. Other things are simple. If you want to eat, you can start eating. But no lunch break and no wasting time. I don't want to waste your time. You hardly have any time. I have lots of time. I am already a CA. No tension for me. For you, you cannot waste time. So finish and go. Come back, come back. So here, where were we? Here, here, here. Okay, this is implied authority. All this we'll do tomorrow, guys. Full tomorrow we'll do. No problem. You'll enjoy this really well. Morning we will do. Very important area. Okay, property of the firm. Again, liabilities of the partner contribute to loss equally but subject to deed. Means what? Can the partnership deed have different, different profit sharing ratio, loss sharing ratio? Yes. If partnership deed is silent, what ratio will you follow? Equal. This also we have discussed. You have to surrender personal profits, you surrender competing business profit at 3 lakh, 2 lakh example, but subject to deed. If deed says don't do it, then no need. I am bringing this, what do you say, laptop, which let's say it's a partnership firm. I am, this is my personal laptop. I am using it for business. Is this my property or partnership property? My property, obviously. When will it become partnership property? Don't use the word company. When will it become partnership property? When the partners intend to make it partnership property. When I am actually bringing it into business, I will call it as partnership property. So, if you see, you see here, yeah. It becomes the property of the firm only if the partners show an intention to make it a partnership property. Intention to make it partnership property. Very simple. Minor. Will minor be liable? I mean, is minor, uh, what do you say, partner? No. So, if you see, but minor can do what? Enter into the benefits of partnership. Okay. So, basically, 
general rule here minor is definitely not a partner which means can he participate in the business no can he get a share of profit yes can he access or can he what do you say participate in the day to day operations no can he vote no but can he access the accounts yes he can just say i want to see the accounts because i am admitted to the part benefits can i take what do you say copies of the accounts yes can i sue the firm one condition is there only you said no reverse is the answer always correct yes so can i sue the firm yes in only one case when i am severing the ties from the firm severing the ties means what cutting the relationship breaking the relationship legal relationship i say i no longer want to be in your firm as admitted as benefit you know i am you did not pay me the money that's why i am suing you when they are severing the ties when they are severing the ties of the firm only then you can do so but guys question is once you become a major within 6 months of attaining majority or within 6 months of coming to know that you are admitted to the benefits for example your dad may have admitted you to the benefits at age 12 you have no idea you are 22 now let's say your dad also has passed away you are 22 suddenly somebody calls and says sir this much money you need to get it's there in your account you had no idea you are a partner of this particular firm sir what will you do 6 months you have to either accept or reject the partnership either when you become major 6 months or whenever you come to know whichever is earlier or whichever is later whichever is later why again you what is your answer earlier what is your answer reverse later see i am proving every time it's either earlier or later later why later think about it you are you at age 15 your parents come and tell you are a partner in this firm or admit to the benefits you already know about it the moment you turn 18 within 6 months you accept or reject what if you didn't know only i told you at age 21 you didn't know can the law tell you no no you should have done it when you are age 18 go back now no stupid it is sir at what it is whichever is later logical whichever is later you should do three things what either you should give a public notice you should give a public notice either accepting the partnership or rejecting the partnership or one more you can do what if you don't give any notice what happens so that i will give you three things happens you will give a pn public notice accepting the partnership you will give a pn public notice rejecting the partnership or you are silent silent means no action if you are accepting the partnership okay if you are rejecting the partnership it's very simple guys you are rejecting the partnership no longer associated with the firm obviously the day you rejected the partnership you no longer associated share of profit will end which day date of the public notice share of profit will end date of the public notice liability to the extent of the share calculated on the date of the public notice liability to the extent of the share calculated on the date of the public notice got it i can reject the partnership share of profit will end date of public notice liability to the extent of share calculated on the date of the public notice now this is okay what will happen if you accept from the day you accept what liability will come personal liability till here you are only liable to the share but the moment you say i want to become a partner what liability personal my question to is that liability will come from which day the day i accept or the day i have been getting benefits from that day only the day i accept or day i am getting i am getting benefits from 5 years 
retrospective will it come from five years or the day I, today i am accepting what do you think day i accept that's your answer correct answer reverse from the day you have been see how oh, i am proving you correct so what is the other answer the day you have been accept law is telling when you are making profit from five years ago and today you choose to become a partner matching concept you have made profits from five years ago please pay losses also from five years ago agreement with minor is void ab initio we know what is the exception this one agreement with minor is void ab initio and a minor once he becomes a major cannot ratify the contract you learnt all these things exception is partnership act in partnership act a minor can ratify once he attains majority law is very clear they say boss you've been minting money for 5 years today if you say no then i understand okay from today you are no longer liable fine i did not ask you that time when you uh, admitted to your partnership now you can you, you have the choice now you are choosing to actually accept the partnership how dare you tell from today i'll be liable you will be liable from 5 years you ate properly 5 years from 5 years you ate properly you have so much money in your account now you are not ready to pay no personal liability from which day from the day you have been admitted to the benefits of partners which all very logical guys personally liable what is the spelling of logical wrong logical logical is very logical it it has logical word as law in it correct right? yes none of the things is only mugging up everything has logic personally liable from which day from the date of admission to the benefits of partnership from the date of admission to benefits of partnership i asked you at 12 do you want lunch break full dialogue no now day yeah because i will never give more than two breaks that you didn't know today you know correct right? when i decently offered you should have taken that time it's okay but tomorrow i'm telling you bring something to eat and eat in class if you have some do you have something to eat now i am eating your head that's a different thing i am full you guys so bring something from home in my classes break will be limited and more quality more more speaking rather than break i hate breaks breaks will be only whatever is needed so slowly i am training you next year will be ca final assuming everything goes well as per plan ca final directly so you are you are feeling like your kid suddenly your marriageable age married you are married with kids next year that's how it feels i'm not joking you are you are feeling like kids today tomorrow you will feel like next year you will feel like you have three children already that responsibility will come that maturity you should show i'm not joking so we should switch slowly yeah so we see what personal level from which day date of admission to the benefits of partnership date of admission to benefits of partnership tomorrow bring something to eat don't bring yele open the yele open everything rice sambar correct yes when i say something to eat some snacks is what i meant you eat food you bring in your you know lunch box and you start eating i have really no problem guys as long as you concentrate in class i have no problem only problem arises when you don't concentrate yes start on provisions relating to minor those of you are feeling drained out think of next crash course means if you don't attend this properly next crash course again you have to attend that's why yes so chart on provisions relating to minor over over that's it this is done last part a constitution and dissolution after that one last part is there chuma i will tell last part yes yeah reconstitution of partnership form means what admission retirement expulsion expulsion means what throwing out admission is admitting a partner retirement means partner is going out because he doesn't like to continue expulsion is to throw a partner out insolvency partner becomes chaprasi fellow chapar partner no money liabilities in far in excess of the assets then what death correct death of a partner so he will end his miserable life in this world so death what happens to the others what happened to the part partnership form what will happen all that transfer of interest is uh, like sub partnership 
my share i will transfer to others that is called sub partnership now very simple admission of partner consent of how many partners is required all all the partners is required everybody should agree guys for you to come into the firm new guy right so retirement we have discussed already expulsion partner okay notice has to be given on retirement of partner either by whom either by retiring partner or any partner any partner can give why i told you know one of my partners committed fraud so i went to him and said boss you also know you committed fraud i also i also know that you have committed fraud either i will throw you out or decently you get out if you want to throw out i'll throw you out i have no problem because you have to throw out no you have to give one public notice and all that saying that this fellow is fraud and all that you have to give said your mana maria generally will go either i will do that or you decently get out so he retired and he went now when he is retiring and going will he give public notice why will he give he is happy that he is escaping i should give correct so if you feel that only retiring partner should give no in many cases retirement is like throwing out only rather than humiliating you by throwing you out i am giving you an option resign and go so that is why it should be given by whom the retiring partner or any of the partners of the reconstituted firm throwing out how will you throw out partner will always be expelled by majority rule contract should provide for it guys contract should clearly mention how to throw out and all and it should be in good faith good faith means what genuine reason genuine reason a b are partners a's wife and b's wife are fighting a will come a's wife will come and say if you don't throw out that partner i will divorce you what do you think generally he should say yeah divorce me i am happy only but no he will tell okay no choice i will throw that partner why am i throwing out personal reasons can i throw out for personal reasons no should be in good faith should be in good faith right that is what it is now one second as far as insolvency and death is concerned we'll just discuss one second i have it anyway so let me do some easy things now come back this i'll do don't worry this is very easy guys registration of firm tell me registration of firm is mandatory or not mandatory not mandatory registration will create partnership or will not create partnership uh, will answer will not cannot create partnership see i am proving registration will create or will not will not why what creates partnership agreement registration is not mandatory at all before advait we had samvit academy that samvit academy is unregistered partnership firm no need why do why do you want to register but if you have a ca firm where you will do auditing etc that is that has to be registered because as per ca act it says you have to register a ca firm registration cannot create partnership but it is only the dash it is the evidence of existence of partnership evidence how do you know that the partnership firm exists you should have some document or no? the document is registration certificate but is it mandatory no the person responsible for overseeing the registration of firms is called as the registrar of firms appointment is done by which government state government he maintains what register of firms 
पवर टू मेक रूल लाइज विथ इन द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट यू थॉट सेंट्रल आंसर इज स्टेट यस पवर टू मेक रूल लाइज विथ इन द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट दीज आर ऑल ईजी I will not do this. This also I'll do tomorrow. Don't worry. I'll leave you soon. Yes, registration is effective from which date? The day I send the documents to you, or the day you verify and check everything and enter your enter my name in the register. Obviously, when you check everything and enter the name in the register, registration is effective from the day when the registrar files the statement and enters the name in the register of firms. and not from the date of sending the documents to him that entire statement whatever all the registration statement who all will sign one partner or all partners obviously by all partners what if partners one partner is not available is gone abroad then he can authorize somebody to sign all right on my behalf i'll authorize you to sign so or by any authorized person authorized person any authorized person then see i remember all these things are not done whatever is little tricky i don't want to do it when your mind is already reached the brim next point number 9 you see the register of firms shall be open to inspection by dash by any person or only partner can register uh, verify any person no oh, yes good any person register is a public document i want to see are you really a partnership firm i can go to the registrar any person will it be done for free or money money in india nothing is free golden rule yes except this crash course yes so on payment of such fee as what as may be prescribed next how whenever i am telling public notice public notice for example minor has to give public notice retiring partner should give public notice if you are expelled have to give public notice now the question is how will i give public notice i should give a newspaper advertisement one in english one in vernacular so you have to give a newspaper advertisement for sure and officially it will be written in something called official gazette so it's an official document of the government official gazette there they will write whatever the notice you are giving vernacular means local language now if you have registered the firm can it be used as an evidence in the court of law that the firm is an existence sir see it's registered can i use it in the court of law yes so any statement intimation notice etc will be the fact that conclusive evidence the beauty of registration is what it will give you conclusive evidence that you are actually registered the firm it will give conclusive evidence so other parts we will do tomorrow hold on but let's just check if there's something which is very easy i'll would like to do that yeah this part c3 how will i settle the accounts of the page number 12 how will i settle the accounts at the time of winding up very simple first i will sell the goodwill that depends on whether there's a contract or not selling the goodwill depends on part of the contract like when jk sha sold should i sell the what do you say assets of jk sha or should i sell the goodwill they sold for 400 crores what did they sell assets bench and table they sold no they sold the goodwill so it depends on the contract whether you are selling bench or whether you are selling goodwill so if goodwill is included depending on the agreement it will be included mtr brothers also mtr also they sold not only the name but entire capacity factory everything they sold so there they sold the assets also sold the name also what if the swedish company told i don't want any of your assets i only want your goodwill i have my own factory i will do properly there don't i don't want any of your workers also yes that's possible depends on the deal how will you pay the losses 
how will you pay the losses losses how will you pay first out of whatever is brought forward profit if you have current year loss if there is any brought forward profit you will pay from that if it's not there from your capital you will pay and otherwise nothing will happen means what personal liability profit sharing ratio loss sharing ratio so first i will take the profits that is also not there means capital whatever i pumped in that also is gone means loss sharing ratio whatever ratio i have agreed i have to bring in personal liability correct if i want to sell the in, in insolvency i want to sell the assets of the company once i sell the assets should i pay the partners first or outsiders very easy first outsiders then partners first outsiders then partners if there is a loss due to insolvency there is a loss due to insolvency this is not there in the law this is there in a case law thank you background music yes this is the sign if you don't leave me in 10 minutes i'll throw that dabba yes loss due to in no i have protection here no tension yes so lost tomorrow onwards helmet also i'll bring the loss due to insolvency is what what is this uh, case law name garner versus murray garner versus murray that is the case law garner versus murray is the case law which spoke about what loss due to insolvency of a partner they said <clears throat> It is Murray, not Murray, Nalke, Aide, and all. Don't tell. Yes, correct. Garner versus Murray. So what? Solvent partners to bring in cash in what ratio? Correct. Solvent partners to bring in cash in what ratio? They have to bring in cash in loss sharing ratio. It was a case law, guys. This was the decision. Solvent partners to bring in cash in loss sharing ratio. and total loss final loss solvent part insolvent partner gone solvent partner should bring in loss sharing ratio total loss to be borne in the ratio of last agreed capital ratio last agreed capital ratio so total loss to be borne in the ratio of what last agreed capital ratio last agreed capital ratio solvent partners what ratio loss sharing ratio total loss last agreed capital ratio last agreed capital ratio so there are certain things which we will do tomorrow one one hour yeah one hour should be one hour one and a half hours maximum partnership act sale of goods act around two two and a half hours and that uh, shastra some 15 20 minutes we'll spend and close it same time 7 to same time ish so but please bring tomorrow stuff because breaks and all will be limited bring stuff i hope you are able to understand yes, see you tomorrow guys bye take care yes, enjoy your day whatever is left of it yes tomorrow we'll wind it up in the morning okay guys come on let's begin so yesterday we were discussing so we'll finish off everything today let's start off with uh, an interesting topic because this is a very important topic generally they ask in the exam that is called what uh implied authority page number 5 concept of implied authority very very important generally they keep asking this in the exam even old uh, in the olden days when i say olden days like 4 3 4 years ago when you had this cpt concept not 3 4 years ago i think uh, got scrapped in 2017 yes 5 6 years ago there was this concept called cpt common proficiency test so in that this they were asking this that uh, you know uh, what do you say implied authority in uh, mcqs then when it became ca foundation where you had to write uh, written exam that time also they were asking so it's a very important concept implied authority so authority of a partner what do you mean by authority authority means power correct authority means power so the authority of a partner that is the basically authority means power to bind power to bind 
power to bind whom either power to bind the partners and power to bind the entire firm and other partners everybody that is called power to bind that authority can be two types one is express authority and one more is implied authority express authority implied authority express authority means what where i'll give it you know in uh, anywhere in writing so in in writing means it will be through a partnership deed or it could be implied authority implied authority means obviously which is understood something which is understood so if it is express authority it is conferred on a partner by mutual agreement which means it will be there in the partnership deed and that agreement as we know partnership deed can be oral also or it could be written as well but generally it will be a written agreement oral agreements will be difficult to prove in the court of law so it will be conferred on a partner by mutual agreement agreement may be oral or it can be written it can also be implied as we have seen that you leave so this part you can ignore no problem then here where there is no agreement or when the partnership agreement is silent law only says that this is assumed for you it is called implied authority implied authority will come when there is no agreement or when the partnership deed is there but it is silent the law presumes certain power to be exercised and that power is called as implied authority now can the partner do anything that he wants to for example uh, i let's say we are in a trading firm so do you think that let's say a partnership deed is silent so i am a partner can i buy goods yes can i sell goods yes can i what do you say take the what do you say uh, office on rent yes i can can i not take the office on rent yes whatever it is so can i what do you say uh, sign the check if i want to yes so basically as i am in a trading firm i can do whatever i want but what can i do what can't i do tell me one thing if i am in a trading firm and the partnership deed is silent according to you can i open a bank account in my own name using the partnership name can i do that no so basically you are also feeling that yeah some things can be done something cannot be done just because nothing is written can i do whatever i feel like doing no that is why section 19 gives one lakshman reka saying that boss you can do whatever you want but these are the things that you cannot do right so rather than like can i for example without asking other partners tell me without asking other partners can i sell the asset of the asset of the firm no and can i then tell boss partnership deed was silent so i am assuming i can do whatever i want no so that's why very smartly section 19 of uh, partnership act says there are two authorities one is section 11 section 11 is expressly given partnership deed will given 1 2 3 4 5 powers no problem in that partner a will be active partner partner b will be sleeping partner partner a has uh, can borrow up to 10 lakhs partner b can sell up to 10 lakhs all that is okay but implied authority they'll give a lakshman reka because they'll say under the name of implied you can do whatever you want unfortunately that's why i will stop you from doing it i'll give a lakshman reka beyond this you cannot do so there are certain things which you can do so rather than telling certain things which you can do they'll they'll tell certain things that you cannot do that is called implied authority so if you see uh anyway if you see that act of the partner which is done in the usual way business of the firm carried on by the firm binds the firm this is the dialogue that they give i'll give you examples no problem so what do you mean by act of the firm so act of the firm means what basically for example a partner a is there he will sell goods to an outsider and this is the firm abc he will sell the goods to the outsider right now outsider does not pay can any other partner sue the outsider on behalf of the firm yes or no yes obviously because it's a partnership thing on the other hand an outsider sells the goods to mr a a ideally does not have any authority but outside the i mean obviously he will assume that you are a partner and you they, he also knows that you are a partner see unlike moa and aoa partnership deed is it a public document or confidential confidential you cannot see aoa moa you can check company but in a partnership firm you cannot check the deed so obviously outsider will not know the exact powers of a but outsider will know that a is a
partner for sure. A is definitely a partner, but how much power she has, we don't know. So A has purchased goods worth 10 lakh rupees. And A has not told B and C. A has not told B and C. So A has to repay, I mean obviously the firm has to repay the outsider now. Can the outsider sue the firm or should he sue only A? Obviously, he can sue the firm because one for all, all for one, mutual agency. So, if you see, what do you mean by act of the firm? Act of the firm means any act. In this example, act of selling. Or it can mean any omission. Here, what is the omission? I did not pay. What is the omission? I did not pay. So, act of the firm means what? Either action or omission. By whom? By by actually any partner or by all partners also. One partner also can do or all partners also can do or as we told yesterday, even when you want to sign something, you can either sign on your own or ask your agent to sign. So, similarly here, agent, authorized agent, authorized person, authorized person. Now tell me, if I sell some amount, something to outsider and outsider does not pay, can I, can the firm sue the outsider? Yes, which gives rise to a right. What right? Right to sue. Enforceable means what? Now, who can enforce it? Firm can enforce by the firm or against the firm? By the firm. Firm can enforce it. So, it is by the firm. In this case, yeah, obviously, outsider can sue against the firm. Why? Because of his omission, it gives rise to a right. What is the right? Right to sue. It will, it will be enforceable by whom? By an outsider. Against whom? Against the firm. So, it is by or against the firm. By or against the firm. So, if you see, an act of the firm means any act or omission by any partner by all the partners or by authorized person which gives rise to a right enforceable by the firm or against the firm. This is the meaning of act of the firm. But we still have to understand this dialogue. Act of the partner which is done to carry on in the usual way business of the kind carried on by the firm binds the firm. Basically, if all the three questions we have answered, three questions, what is the first question? It must relate to normal business. Second, it should be done in the usual way of carrying on the firm's business. And third one, it should be done in the name of the firm. If all the three conditions are satisfied, then it will be very much within implied authority. Correct? It will be within the Lakshman Rekha. If one of the things also is a no, then it will be beyond the Lakshman Rekha is the general understanding. First, Act must relate to the normal business. Z, a partner of the firm dealing in ready-made garments, places an order for liquor worth 50,000 in the firm's name. You are doing what? Garment uh, business. Now you are ordering what? N.A. bottle. How much? 50,000. Correct. In the firm's name. Is the firm bound? No. Why? It is not the normal business of the firm. When I say is the firm bound, what I am asking is, like for example, uh, I am. we are into the business of teaching, let's say we order pizza. When you order pizza, can I say, I did not order, uh, other partner should have ordered, I will not pay you. Can you tell the pizza delivery guy that you will not pay? No. When I say firm is not bound, what it means is firm has to pay. But can they recover from the partner? Yes. Outsider, how will he know guys who ordered, or, or that pizza fellow will come and say, sir, pizza has been ordered, you please pay for it. So the firm will pay definitely, but can the firm recover from the partner? Yes. Firm will recover from the partner, boss, who asked you to order? We didn't ask you to order. Similarly here, ready-made garments, somebody placed an order for liquor. Is the firm bound? No. When I say firm not bound, it means what? Firm may pay to the liquor guy, but they will recover from whom? From the partner. Saying that this is not my expense, boss, you should have discussed with us. Whatever you feel like doing, you cannot do, is what they are trying to tell. So here, what is the answer? Firm is not bound not bound. Practically, what did I tell you? The firm will pay and then recover from the partner practically. But general rule, not bound. Three on three questions must be answered. Normal business, then uh, usual way, done in the name of the firm. Normal business, usual way, done in the name of the firm. 
normal business is this only not bond what is usual way so if you see mr a being a partner in a firm of solicitor and attorney means lawyer draws a bill of exchange means draws a check bill of exchange is check bill of exchange both actually three both are different but for the time being let's assume that bill of exchange is a check in negotiable instruments act three there are three different things one is bill of exchange one is check and one is promissory note draws a bill of exchange in the name of the firm without authority are the other persons liable what do you think what do you think guys is it your usual way that a lawyer can write checks and all that no because if you are managing the entire firm there will be one partner called managing partner who will write all the checks can all partners write checks no see if you are in a trading firm buying i mean writing checks is normal but in a law firm your main job is to you know win cases for your clients your job is not to sit and write checks so in this case lawyers uh, what do you say action of drawing a bill of exchange and that to without authority has no authority to do so which means he is not a managing partner is it the usual way of carrying on the firm's business no so is the firm bound no not bound again practically what do you mean by firm not bound firm may pay the outsider but firm can recover from the partner that's what it practically means third one it should be done in the name of the firm a and b are partners in a stationery business pencil uh, you know books and all that a buys pencils on credit from a wholesaler in the firm's name okay so basically whoever was supplying every day he will go and buy from him only then what he'll do gives them to his children is the firm bound 100% yes why is it done in the name of the firm yes is it done in the usual way yes i always order from that guy only third one is it done in the normal business of the firm yes how that fellow used that pencil is none of the is not the concern of the outsider stationer fellow will say sir you are generally ordering from me so you placed an order of this pencil every day i give you and today also i gave you and you took it in the firm name also how you used it what can i do sir i cannot help it so is the firm bound yes firm is bound so but here practically firm will pay the outsider but firm will sue the partner for fraud this is fraud only no misapplication of funds misapplication of assets so here firm is bound when i say firm is bound the stationer can definitely sue the firm 100% but the firm can in turn sue the partner for fraud see in the other two cases fraud is not there it's not there fraud is not there. if you buy liquor in the firm's name fine it's not a fraud i i obviously bought it in my personal capacity i will pay the firm back no problem second case also i drew a bill of exchange for the business of the firm only he did it no problem like it can be pardoned but in this case what did he do he gave them to his children it is fraud that i told you three pillars in that one pillar is broken second pillar is what just stand faithful are you faithful here no you are using firm's money and using it for personal purposes you are not faithful so same thing buy pencils on credit and wholesaler gives them to his children is the firm bound yes firm is bound but they can sue the partner for what fraud so that's about it guys very simple very very simple so all the three questions must be answered in that case firm is bound even if one answer is a no then firm is not bound in the first case it did not relate to normal business so firm is not bound second case it did not relate to the usual way so firm is not bound third case yes it was done in the name of the firm usual way normal business so firm is bound but firm can in turn sue the partner for fraud misappropriation of assets so as i told you with this basics what lakshman reka they draw is this one right hand column this is a lakshman reka they say just because the partnership deed is silent you cannot do whatever you feel like doing these things you cannot do is what the act only says which means left left hand items these are the things that you can be done this is especially in a trading firm this is not given in the act these are my examples left hand column are my examples right hand column is given in the act right hand column they have given what cannot be done which means i have made examples what can be done 
so left hand column this you can do and mind you guys left hand column this is only in a trading form normal trading form buying and selling goods so tell me in a normal trading firm if the partnership deed is silent can the partners purchase goods yes can they sell goods yes can they receive the payments of debts that like somebody would have uh, owed the uh, firm something can they receive the money yes let's say if advait is a partnership firm and one of you has not paid the fees and can you give it to any one partner if you want to yes if the other partners don't know about it that's not your problem it is my duty to tell the other partners correct yes can you settle the accounts with third parties also yes can you appoint employees yes can you borrow money yes can you pledge as security means uh, you want some loan for the firm so can you pledge your goods can you pledge the asset of the firm if you want to yes it is understood that you would have already uh, sought the permission of the other partners can you endorse negotiable instruments yes see guys point number h for a trading firm it is allowed but for a you know lawyer firm that we saw here already for a law firm for solicitors and attorneys can you draw bill of exchange whenever you want no so that's why for a trading firm all these things are possible can i hire a lawyer if i want to yes same a b c d e f g h i points for some other firm it will be a no for example drawing and accepting and endorsing negotiable instruments for a trading firm allowed what about for a banking firm allowed but for a law firm not allowed so same thing but right hand column right hand column these are the things as per law which cannot be done assuming whatever you want you cannot assume these things assumption cannot be made is what the law says what first one submit to arbitration a dispute relating to the business of the firm what is arbitration guys all kannada movies malayalam movies telugu movies you will watch no that generally their first scene in the village one banyan tree will be there under that all the entire panchayat will be sitting hero will come now in lungi correct when he will come in bike or on a buffalo or whatever it is then he will put his you know the moment his feet touches the soil wind everywhere from here two lions will come you would have seen in south indian movies all that will come right that then he will say no this is right this is wrong you did wrong close that is called arbitration arbitration one of the examples is panchayat there are many other example arbitration means what instead of going to the court can i settle the dispute out of court yes that is called arbitration panchayat is the best example for arbitration in your school time and all you if you are fighting your uh, teacher will come and what will do why, why are you fighting first they should slap both of you that's called arbitration and say stop your you know fight immediately that slap is called arbitration alternate dispute resolution mechanism correct so arbitration is a very very famous thing in india now because people do not want to go to court why time waste of time today they will ask one next hearing will be next month next hearing will be next month like that 10 15 years it will drag but arbitration beauty is in arbitration you can settle the dispute within 12 months there are arbitrators across if for example if you and i are fighting now we can go to an arbitrator instead of court who is an arbitrator retired high court judge retired supreme court judge there are a panel of arbitrators there are services arbitration services you and i can choose one arbitrator together saying that okay our dispute this fellow will settle let's go to that person why people don't go for arbitration then 12 months at everything will be set is there any court hearing no it will be in a closed room they'll call you here only come let's discuss you tell your problem you tell your problem then let's try to settle the differences that's called arbitration so arbitration clause must be there where in the contract itself in the contract only arbitration clause must be there otherwise it will not be valid so arbitration clause must be there in the contract now tell me guys why people don't go for arbitration then because it is costly you have to pay almost 2 3 lakhs per hearing to the arbitrator if the money involved only some 1 lakh rupees why the hell will you go for arbitration arbitration you will go when the money involved is crores right so big big people can afford arbitration it's costly every hearing some 2 3 lakhs means at least there will be some 10 12 hearings so 30 40 lakhs but your court case will not take so much 
court case every time you file it will be some 3 to 1000 3000 4000 rupees that's it but the problem is it will go for 20 years but arbitration will cost you 30 40 lakh rupees but within 12 months it will be settled so if you running into crores and both of you agree to go into arbitration now tell me guys partnership firm a partner without asking other partners rather than a civil case can he put that case to arbitration no obviously no can he say implied authority i can do whatever i want no so that is the thing second can he open a bank account on behalf of the firm in his own name no can he compromise any claim means what somebody has to pay the firm somebody has to pay the firm so that somebody will come and beg one partner and this partner without asking other partners can he say it's okay no no need to pay no problem no so compromise that's called as a compromise compromise any claim or relinquish relinquish is worse relinquish means what fully give up no problem you don't pay me 1 rupee also leave it i'll sign and give on behalf of the firm and i'll go and ask the other partners other partners will say who the hell asked you to do it at least you should have asked me so you cannot do that similarly you cannot withdraw any suit also if you have put a case against somebody you cannot withdraw that case without asking others similarly if anybody puts a case against you your firm without asking other partners you cannot admit that liability saying that yes correct i have to pay no all this not allowed can i acquire immovable property on behalf of the firm no can i buy immovable property not allowed can i transfer immovable property no when i say not allowed i meant without asking other partners not allowed you ask other partners take a decision uh, pass a resolution then you go ahead this this is if the agreement is silent if the agreement is silent you cannot do these things and these are either even if agreement is silent you can do these things assuming it is a trading firm assuming it is a trading firm my question now is the left hand column in the partnership deed left hand column can it be restricted means what can i say partner a can purchase only up to 10 lakh partner b can sell only up to 15 lakh can i restrict the left hand column yes in partnership deed you can write whatever you want right hand column is not allowed can i allow it by mentioning it in the partnership deed yes partner a can submit to arbitration without asking anybody else yes partner b can withdraw any suit if he wants to yes that's why partnership deed will override the act itself in partnership law they have given super powers to whom partnership deed partner it's your wish guys up to you you decide who am i to tell if the agreement is silent then don't do these things don't do the right hand column but if you only agree three partners are there one two other partners have just pumped in money they'll tell boss i do not care how you run the business all these right hand column powers are yours take it and all of us have agreed in the partnership deed only so who are who is the act to tell that you can't do if the agreement is silent right hand column cannot be done but can the right hand column be inserted in the deed itself yes so can the right hand column be extended yes in the sense extended means can i extend it into the partnership deed itself yes left hand column can it be restricted yes so if you see the partners in the firm may by a contract between the partners dash or dash means what restrict or extend the authority restrict means what left hand column i can give restrictions in the left hand column extend means what right hand column in the right hand column i can give more and more restrictions i can give more and more restrictions left hand column can be restricted right hand column can be extended very simple since it's a little tricky i didn't know didn't want to do it to yesterday today i'll finish it off all this in the morning in a little bit fresh we can finish it so yes that is what it is left and right column so binding effect binding effect binding effect is what basically guys if 
so for example let's say trading firm a uh, trading firm a b c are partners left hand column is restricted let's say a can purchase goods only up to 10 lakh it is written in the partnership deed as i told you partnership deed is it a public document no a will go and purchase from an outsider he will purchase goods worth 12 lakh outsider will come for payment now i should check whether it is within implied authority or beyond implied authority first one is it the normal business of the firm to buy yes is it the usual way yes anybody can buy is it done in the name of the firm yes all three conditions are yes is the firm bound or not bound 100% firm is bound 100% firm is bound firm cannot say sir you should have read my partnership deed constructive notice no partnership deed is not public document you cannot use doctrine of constructive notice here which you saw in companies act unlike companies act partnership deed will never be revealed i will not know what is the content of the partnership deed so even though there is a restriction if all the three questions are answered as yes what are the three questions is it done in the name of the firm usual way normal business then it will 100% bind the firm how the firm recovers the extra 2 lakhs from the partner it's their problem but the outsider definitely they will pay full 12 lakhs is the firm bound 100% yes firm is bound so that is what this section says here irrespective of the restriction any act done by a partner on behalf of the firm which falls within the implied authority means what the three questions must be answered yes then it will bind the firm or not bind the firm binds the firm but tell me one thing what if the outsider knew about this outsider was a's friend only outsider was a's friend a is telling macha i can only purchase up to 10 lakhs but it's okay let's purchase you sell me goods for 12 lakhs a knew about it and the other partners can prove that a knew about i mean the outsider knew about it then a and outsider both knew about it and other partners have proof now then only up to 10 lakh simple they'll say boss you knew about it i will the law protects innocent outsiders you knew about it so only 10 lakhs 2 lakhs you ask from your friend only i will pay 10 lakhs so if you see that is one exception given here if the third person with whom a partner is dealing with knows of the restriction then it will bind will not bind does not bind the firm does not bind the firm same question concept capsule a a partner borrows b from b 1000 in the name of the firm but in excess of his authority same question here the fact that firm has contracted debt suggests that it's a trading firm as such it is within the implied authority to borrow money Now, if B, the lender, is unaware of the restriction imposed on A, who will be liable? Firm. Suppose B was aware of the restriction, who will be liable? Partner A, that A fellow. B, B is the outsider. So, is he aware of the restriction? Yes. Who is liable? For the partner. They will say, "Boss, you please go to the part. I will pay up to that limit. Beyond the limit, go ask the partner." Very, very simple. But ignore about all these things what if it's an emergency scenario for example we are in tomato business correct tomato tomato anything you can say tomato business we are in uh, tomato business we are doing and uh, what happens you three or four partners are there three partners have gone to kedarnath trip they have gone to kedarnath or rather amarnath yatra yath you have gone every year you have seen amarnath yatra there will be what landslide there will be everything so now you are stuck there and there will be no connectivity etc tomato and i can only sell tomatoes worth 1 lakh if i want to sell beyond 1 lakh then i have to ask your permission we should have a meeting in an emergency situ situation the tomato prices are falling steeply i have tomatoes worth 5 lakh in my go down which i have to sell immediately but i am unable to contact you you are stuck in amarnath yatra there is zero uh, crazy landslide and i am unable to contact you at all rescue operations are on
but I know that you are safe because you know confirmation I got that you are safe. But the thing is, I am unable to contact you. And if I wait for you, this tomato, I will have to throw it on the road. You would have seen no farmers throwing tomatoes on the road, poor guys, because they will not get their money. So now, what do I do? Can I go beyond my authority and sell it? Yes. Will it bind the firm tomorrow? Yes, because it is an emergency only. So, emergency section 21 overrides all other sections. Section 21 says, if would you have done it if it was your own uh, personal business and not a partnership firm? Yes. To protect yourself, would you have done it? Yes. So, here it says, keywords are what? Ordinary prudence. Ordinary means, prudence means common sense, normal common sense. If you use normal common sense, would you have, if you had used normal common sense, would you have what, uh, what do you say, continued and sold? Yes, you would have sold immediately. The keywords are what, ordinary prudence. You are using your normal common sense, you would have done the same. So, same example is there. Possible. So, in an emergency, you can do anything. So, notice to an acting partner means notice to the firm, which means if you go and inform one partner, it means you have informed everybody else. That is the normal point. So, to combine all these things, we will make, I mean, I will just show you one thing, to com combining all the points that we have seen now. And it is like a revision, quick revision. Quick revision. So, let us assume A, B, C, D are partners. He is the third party. Mr. A is a partner. What will be his authority, guys? Either express authority or implied authority. Express authority is given in section 11. Implied authority is given in section 19. Express authority can be oral or written. I am just revising it. Oral or written. Implied authority, I told you three questions have to be answered. Is it the normal business, usual way, name of the firm, all the three questions. Even if one condition is not satisfied, then only A will be liable. Because I am talking about the partner A now. Only A is liable. Even if one condition is not satisfied, A is liable. For the firm to be liable, what should happen? All the conditions must be satisfied. Even if one condition is not satisfied, who is liable? Only A. Now, if all the three conditions are satisfied, then if the rest, uh, firm will be level, correct. But one more additional question I will add. Was any restriction imposed? For example, could partner A only would have, could he have borrowed only 10, 10 lakh rupees? So, let us assume that is also not there, which means restrictions is also not imposed and all the three questions are answered as yes. Then as you rightly said, who is liable? Firm is liable. Firm is liable. Now let us assume this is a trading firm. I want to buy. Buy goods. Can anybody buy goods? Yes. Can any partner buy goods? Yes. Was restriction imposed? No. Now let us assume restriction was imposed. Partner A could have bought only 10 lakh rupees worth of goods. Was the restriction imposed? Yes. Partner A could have bought only 10 lakh rupees worth of goods. Next question. Did the third party know about the restriction? I am talking about innocent third party. Innocent third party has sold goods worth 12 lakhs. Did he know that partner A could only borrow, uh, purchase 10 lakh? No, he did not know. So, did he know about the restriction? No. So, can he claim full 10 lakhs uh, or 12 lakhs or 10 lakhs? 12 lakhs. Firm is liable. That's all. What if the third party knew about the restriction? I told you, know, that friend, that friend. Then one more question. Was it a fraud committed where both of them combined together to commit some fraud? This has happened in many cases where in a, some used car showroom partnership firm was there where one partner tied up with an outsider and sold to the firm only some car which was com completely, what do you say, not working properly. So, since the partner only purchased it, other partners thought, oh, it's fine. But actually, it was not, it was actually a, you know, default, a default piece. It was not working properly, that car. So, a car which was worth 10 lakhs was sold to the firm at 40 lakhs, some luxury car. So, tell me, other partners believed this guy. My partner only is buying, means should have checked everything, no. So, 30 lakhs, they did a scam. 
and that 30 lakhs who shared outsider and partner. So, all these things if you do, was it a fraud or not? If it is not a fraud, then only A is liable. But if it's a fraud, then of course both liable. Both means what? Outsider and the partner. Outsider and the partner are liable. Firm is indemnified. Indemnified means compensated. Firm will be compensated. Ultimately, what happens guys in all the three cases, if it is an emergency scenario, in all the three cases, if it is an emergency scenario, if you have used what? Ordinary prudence. And if it is just done in the best interest of the firm, even if you have gone beyond the authority, I don't care. Did, did you do it in the best interest of the firm? Yes. Was it ordinary prudence? Yes. Would you have done it if it was your own goods? Yes. Then who is liable? Firm is liable. Firm is liable. This is the entire summary of the that this chart here is given now here. That is that chart only. Entire summary. So I will just put it up again. You can just take a picture when you see the what do you say? Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, when you see the YouTube video, that time you can take a picture quickly. One second. Yeah, this is the chart. You can come and take your own. You can you have if you have a group, you can post it, guys. If you have a group. I don't know in which group I am in, God only knows. If you have a group, kindly add to that group. Yes. So, Neil Ma'am's class and Chinmaya sir's class, Shashi sir's class, all that will be uploaded, guys, on the foundation channel. I don't know if it's already uploaded. Just find out from the office. So, please revise from that. So, Chinmaya sir also agreed for this crash course. He is also extremely busy with final. Chinmaya sir is on mental fellow. He is my friend, so I can tell it, no problem. So, I can record it also, no problem. He, that guy, is what? When he was, he was my college mate, both of us same college. I was in the rowdy section, he was in the decent section, that's the difference. I was in C section last bench, he was A section first bench. Right? Yes. So, that fellow was what? Uh, he was from Kannada medium, by the way. I am just telling to motivate you. True story. Chinmaya sir, he was from Kannada medium. So, till 10th uh, standard, Kannada medium he studied. From Sirsi, you know Sirsi? From Sirsi. So, he did not know how to speak English also, little bit also, actually did not know. Then what he did, using the Kannada English dictionary, started writing down all the words in English and started learning. In first PUC, he came to English medium. In Bangalore, he came. Then what happened there? The what do you say? It was difficult for him to manage. Obviously, guys. So he sco didn't score so so well in first PUC. Some sixty percent he scored. Everybody started mocking him, teasing him, saying that this fellow doesn't know English also. Chinmaya sir, if you have observed, he doesn't talk much. When during class he'll speak, then he'll just go. He's always very silent. So, but he his. Uh, Tagline also in his email is action speak louder than words. Action speak louder than words. Actually, that's his tagline. So, he actually lives by it also. So, what that happened there is, uh, second PUC, he, 12th standard, he ensured that he was, he did study it properly, properly he studied and everyone who teased him shut their mouth in second PUC because he got state rank 8th, correct? So, he just shut everybody's mouth through his actions. Then, he took up CA. In CA, there are three levels, no? CA, I mean, foundation, inter and final. In foundation, All India ranked 13, 1-3. In English medium, All India ranked 13, 
I don't think so. He'll ever tell you also if he's a rank holder. He would have told now. Maybe he would have just told that I'm a rank holder, but the story he will not tell. I know the story because I was with him only. So then in uh, CA Inter, five days this year, I'm sure he wouldn't have told. Five days before the exam, he fell sick. He was hospitalized. Some he went and he ate something outside. Something happened, or maybe had typhoid. I don't know what happened, but he was hospitalized for four days. So on the day of the exam, he's in the hospital. So his friend went and uh, one friend was there. He's in uh, Dubai now. He used to call them Laurel and Hardy because this fellow was uh, a short fellow. That fellow is some six five and some one fifty kgs. Both are best friends. So it's a superb combination, correct? So that guy came to him and said, "You are writing the exam. That's all. I don't know. You take the exam board. You take this uh, hall ticket. Go write." This fellow went and wrote all India third rank. Right, I'm just saying. And that's why I said mental fellow, right? And then afterwards, obviously we had our article ship and all that. So I used to call him one day before the BCom exam. Acha, what are the important things? Can you please tell me? I'm not joking. So I never used to study, guys. You know, in BCom there's one uh, this thing used to come, Neeraj scanner. Is, is it still there? Ah, uh, it's there. Ah, uh, Neeraj scanner. That is my savior, Neeraj scanner. So I used to take the Xerox copy of Neeraj scanner one day before the exam. So my, I mean, my dad used to ask me, "Hey, what are you taking? Uh, extra books and all you are taking?" Yes, pa, I am taking this Xerox copy of this important questions. When is the exam? Today, <laughs> huh? Morning, I used to take the Xerox copy and study. I remember. So I used to call Chinmaya one day before and said, "Maga, tell me the important questions. What, what may come according to you?" That fellow used to know which questions will come also. That's the best part. His analysis are is amazing. So even now in CA final, whatever questions he'll tell will come. That only will come. I'm not joking. Brilliant he is. So even that's why people watch that his video of the guess questions very very intently. Seventy percent of that will come in the exam. So that that is why he's called mental fellow, right? So the thing is, yes. So then he called. I mean, he obviously used to carry one huge bag, which is like same size of his. Same size only. Then he used to stand in the what do you say uh, bus. He used to have one pocket book, all the important formula. You know, he used to have. I still remember that pocket book he had. He used to you know go through the pocket book. Then morning. Then obviously felt sick. And then after that he still continued. And CA final, All India, 39th rank. It is very rare, extremely rare, to find people who get rank in all three levels. You will get rank in one level. I agree. All three levels. In my opinion, there are less than maybe out of two lakh chartered accountants, maybe just around two hundred, three hundred. That's all. Who can get a rank in all three levels of CA? It's not a joke. So that is what it is. So he also was having a high-paying job, but then his this thing was what teaching, and of course he uh, also for large companies he does the portfolio management. Means what? He will tell for high net worth individual. You have hundred crores in your bank account. You don't know what to do. So Jin Mai Sir will help you in investing. Correct in investment. Even if you have thousand rupees in your bank account, he will help you in investing because you can't keep your money in your bank account. You have to keep investing. So that's what he creates portfolio. Like this ten percent you invest here, fifteen percent you invest here. That is what he does. He does it for two good, good, very big companies which were started by IIT people. So yes, but still, I mean, I just requested him this time to take. He will not come for foundation crash course and all, guys. Honestly speaking, he will not come. But I just requested him just take this one, and uh, he took it. And he would have given you some calculated tricks and all, right? Uh, all that he would have taught you. So that video would have been uploaded. So kindly watch it if you have any doubts and make use of the same. So. Since we are final faculty, we are not involved in foundation as such. But nevertheless, this crash course and all will help definitely. So good that you are attending face to face. Video you can watch, no doubt. But face to face is face to face, undoubtedly. But uh, in inter and all, when you come, it will all be video classes only. I mean, though for you guys it will be face to face. What I am trying to tell is now slowly people are shifting towards video classes. Because in Bangalore nobody has the time to attend because of traffic. Now in morning it's okay, but evening again if I have class, I don't know who will come. So slowly people are turning towards video, but 
Inter also to large extent face to face only. Final is 100% video. Nobody will come for face to face classes. It's gone because now it's very easy. In final, you will not have the time to even attend any class. You will have work, etc. So you can watch during your leisure. That's how it works. Anyway, so this is the what uh, implied authority chart. Implied authority chart summary of the entire thing. Moving on. So that these are the three things, guys. Very simple. Done. Implied authority. Other things we'll finish off now. Property we did. Minor we did. Minor chart also we did. Admission, retirement, all that we did. Now here. Point number four. We were checking out page number eleven. Point number three and four. What is the consent you need for admission of partner? You need the consent of all partners. For retirement also, you will need the consent of what? All partners and of course, if you are right doing a partnership at will, you need to give a written notice. You need to give a written notice. Public notice has to be given on retirement either by retiring partner or any of the partners of the reconstituted firm. Any of the partners of the reconstituted firm. This is what retirement case. Expulsion. Expulsion. So partner may be expelled by what? Partner may be expelled by majority. So here three things will come in expulsion. Majority, it should be in good faith. And third one is what? You should obviously mention contract. The partnership deed should have how the person can be thrown out. Full procedure should be given. Partner expelled otherwise than in good faith means what? Other than good faith means for personal reasons. I told you two, the wives of the partners were fighting personal reasons, then is it legal or illegal? Illegal. So, you can say null and void. Null and void. It is illegal. Null. Null means zero. Void of, of course is basically, you know, void, voidable and all those things. Now, tomorrow, I mean that uh, 10 a.m. it starts, I mean it's already uploaded, it will be uploaded. So, you can check it out. 9, 10 hours it is. I have done it exhaustively. Indian Contract Act, you just stick to it, you will pass 100%. So, insolvency. Insolvency is what? The partner ceases to be a partner when? If the partner is insolvent, when will the partnership, when the part, when will the partner get out of the firm? From which day? When you are insolvent, basically means you are one chaprasi fellow, no money. If you open your wallet and show, that is the day you are, uh, you are saying insolvent or court should tell. Court. You and I cannot tell, court should tell. So, court will tell, yes, from today you are called official chopper. Take it. That court, whatever, then they give a certificate. That is called as what? Insolvency certificate. So, the partner ceases to be a partner from which day? Simple words from the court or from the date of court order. From the date of order of the court, from the date of adjudication, adjudication means judgment, irrespective of whether the firm is dissolved or not, we will come to that. Public notice, do you need to give public notice? No, that order of the court itself is public notice. Can you access all orders of the court? Yes. So, order of the court, when the court passes an order, that itself is a public notice. So, public notice is required, not required? Not required. Admission, you need public notice. Retirement, you need. Expulsion, you will need. But insolvency, not needed. Death. If one partner dies, will the firm be dissolved? What do you think? And answer is yes. As I told you, reverse. If one partner dies, will the firm be dissolved? 100% yes. But if I don't want the firm to be dissolved, what should I do? Mention it in the partnership deed. Mention it in the partnership deed. Death of a partner will automatically result in dissolution of the firm. Because that, uh, you know, the entire bond between all the partners will break. That's why one partner's death will automatically dissolve the firm. But it is very impractical, no? Death can happen anytime. 
that's why all partnership deeds will have one dialogue in the event of death of the partner other partners will continue that line has to be written if it is not written gone will result in the dissolution of the firm partnership firm imprisonment ha ah, that depends on the partnership deed otherwise it will not happen insanity of a person or incompetence of the person that the partnership will continue only in death so whatever you are asking is given here in dissolution here these things if these 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 then it is automatic dissolution if anything other than 1 2 3 4 happens it is not automatic dissolution we'll come to that death transfer is nothing but sub partnership we have already done this can the sub partner receive the share of profit yes is he bound to accept the account of profit yes but can the sub partner sue the other partners sub partner is he a partner to the firm no is a partner of a partner but can he sue the firm yes only in one case when the other partner is getting out of the firm i told you abc or abcd are partner c has one more partner why partner of a partner can y interfere in the business and all that no but when can y sue only when c is exiting the firm then y can sue the firm for the accounts and the actual final settlement of share so to receive the assets of the firm to which the transferring partner is entitled and for the purpose of ascertaining the share i can ask for the accounts dissolution if all the partners are the relationship of all the partners is coming to an end and what happens if there is change in the relation of partners which means there are four partners one partner is leaving is it dissolution of the firm or dissolution of partnership like he told one fellow became insane is it dissolution of the firm or dissolution of the partnership only dissolution of the partnership that bond is breaking between one partner that's all correct one partner called venkat was there he became ucha venkat correct then what happens he is exiting the firm now so what will happen the all the three people will they will it end the partnership firm also no it is just dissolution of the partnership dissolution of partnership of all the partners everybody is exiting assume or everything is changing between all the four partners then it is called dissolution of firm it is actually dissolution of partnership as well as the firm so here it is dissolution of the firm various things one is mutual agreement it is one is without the order of the court one more is with the order of the court in without the order of the court one is mutual agreement compulsory dissolution happening of contingencies by notice if you this contingencies happen generally dissolved so i've written it here automatic dissolution but subject to contract we will see but if these two happens automatic dissolution mutual agreement is the best way notice when will i give a notice guys of dissolution only in partnership at will in a partnership at will we are obviously trying to continue forever but can i still end the firm yes by giving a notice mutual agreement means what yes i will come to you and say boss things are not working out time to end the partnership firm that is called mutual agreement when we will see order of the court insanity one partner becomes insane is unable to enter into a rational decision even ending the partnership firm is a rational decision what do i do i will go to the court other partner will go to the court saying that sir this fellow has become mental fellow i cannot i mean please grant a certificate saying that he is insane after which the firm only i mean the court only will end the partnership deed they will cut the ties permanent incapacity one fellow becomes what a, in an accident he loses both his arms and legs permanent nothing can be done misconduct there is a fraud or he misbehaves with somebody or there is a uh, gross misconduct 
persistent breach of agreement one partner consistently continuously breaks the partnership deed when there is a restriction he keeps on breaking that restriction of purchase and sale so the other partner when he tries to talk to him and mutually agree there is a fight how to resolve the fight court like that perpetual loss any other just and equitable ground that you leave now coming back to this guys mutual agreement is the easiest way things are not working out go to the other person and talk and close it or i mean then they'll tell the other person to obviously do what to the my first partnership mutual agreement we basically i had to throw him out instead of that i told please retire and go mutual agreement second one partnership was where i threw that fellow out that was by notice i said i will expel you because of all these things so i literally threw that fellow out so that is that thing notice then compulsory dissolution and what happening of certain contingencies compulsory dissolution means what guys very simple if these things happen no 100% the firm will be dissolved we'll come to this one second this one business of the firm becoming unlawful i am in the business of export of beef i am in the business of export of meat including beef today government bans beef trade what happens to my business gone unlawful so obviously automatic dissolution automatic dissolution but if i am in the export of different kinds of meat correct goat then fish chicken that is poultry then of course uh, mutton that is already told goat then of course we have beef also then banning of one business will it ban the entire business no so business of the firm becoming unlawful assuming that is the only business i have what if i have multiple businesses then only the business which has been banned will be exited other things will continue firm will not come to an end so main assumption of this is what business of the firm becoming unlawful assuming that is the only business that i am having this i will link it with this insolvency of all or all but one see here happening of certain contingency section 42 expiry of fixed term where the firm is constituted for a fixed term our firm was for 4 years 4 years are over what happens to the firm comes to an end but can we mutually agree to extend it yes second completion of one or more adventures or undertaking our firm was to uh, you know how do you say uh, organize a concert concert is over and we had fun organizing it can we say let us now start this event management uh, firm where we'll start organizing concerts like that yes why not we'll start off with one if it works we'll continue so in this case what happens completion of one or more adventures or undertaking when the firm is constituted for such adventures or undertakings third one death of a partner as i told you if one partner dies entire firm will be dissolved but can i mention in the deed saying that it will not be dissolved yes adjudication of a partner as insolvent adjudication of a partner as insolvent this is section 40 41 42 43 insolvency is here also insolvency is here also i'll connect it and tell you don't worry so basically assume in an insolvency case there are five partners what if one out of five becomes insolvent two out of five becomes insolvent three out of five become insolvent four out of five becomes insolvent five out of five becomes insolvent anything can happen if 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5 become insolvent this will come under section 41 compulsory dissolution that is what it clearly says if you see insolvency of all 5 out of 5 or all but one 4 out of 5 section 41 compulsory dissolution 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5 
here 1 out of 5 2 out of 5 3 out of 5 if they become insolvent will the firm continue if you see section 42 will come firm is dissolved firm is dissolved but can i not make the firm dissolved yes how by mentioning it in the partnership deed but partnership deed can say firm will continue here if partnership deed tells anything partnership deed is invalid this is compulsory dissolution partnership deed has no right in section 41 partnership deed has no no role to play at all compulsory it is but in section 42 partnership deed can do so it is given in the act itself the the section starts off with the line subject to the contract means what subject to the partnership deed whereas subject to the contract is not there here so if you see one second just for your knowledge and show you all old stuff but anyway i can just see, show you the partnership act if you see the law i'm just showing you just to make you understand why i'm telling that partnership deed can enter can answer this 41 42 you see in compulsory dissolution there is no dialogue anywhere subject to the contract is not is that only says the firm is dissolved 100 percent dissolution but you see in section 42 what does it say subject to the contract between the partners means what partnership deed can tell something else which means if the partnership deed is silent then these things will come but if the partnership deed can tell something else most of the partnership deed uh, partnership law always starts with this dialogue subject to the contract subject to the contract subject to the contract which means what they are giving more power to the deed more power to the deed always in the middle they would have inserted anywhere see subject to the contract subject to the contract subject to the provisions of other law most of it is like that only in between it is given anyway let's not read all this now so yes so if you see yeah so coming back to this yes section 42 firm will be dissolved but partnership deed can say that the firm will continue no problem but in uh, other cases, 4 out of 5, 5 out of 5, compulsory dissolution, 100% dissolution. Partnership deed, does it have a right or no right? Absolutely no right. Partnership deed has no right in uh, insolvency case of 4 out of 5 and 5 out of 5. Other things are fine. Registration of firms we are doing yesterday. All this done. Uh, coming to this. Mode of giving public notice also we did. Uh, one part of the story is 7 and 8. 6, 7 and 8. If I am an unregistered firm, what is the problem? Point number 6, page number 12. If I am an unregistered firm, what is the problem guys? If I am an unregistered firm, I cannot sue the firm. Or I cannot sue any other partner. I cannot file a suit against the third party also. If I am an unregistered firm, if I am an unregistered firm, what cannot be done? I cannot sue the firm. I cannot sue any other partner. I cannot file a suit against any third party also. So that's the beauty. If I am not registered, I cannot sue another partner. I cannot sue my own firm. Or I cannot sue, firm cannot sue a third party. And I cannot claim a set off. If I am an unregistered firm, I owe an outsider 
टेन लैक्स आउटसाइडर ओज मी ट्वेल्व लैक्स कैन आई सेट ऑफ दीज टू एंड टेल द आउटसाइडर यू पे मी ओनली टू लैक्स नो कैन द आउटसाइडर सू मी एंड टेल यू फर्स्ट पे मी टेन लैक्स यस अनरजिस्टर्ड फॉर्म यू कैनॉट सू बट कैन द आउटसाइडर सू यस Disability of unregistered firm is what? Firm cannot sue the outsider, but can the outsider sue you? One hundred percent, yes. So basically, it's always better to get yourself registered. I told you my old firm, Samvit Academy, was unregistered. Why did I not register? Because if I if I could not register, means I could not sue. But if I ever wanted to sue, what could I have done? I could have registered. Registration is just a one week procedure. That's why most of the firms don't register only. Why? Because anyway, I can register whenever I want. So there's no need for me to register now. That's the deal. So a suit to institute a right arising from the contract. If you want to sue somebody, two things must be there. First, firm must be registered, and persons who are suing should have been shown in the register of firms as partners. both conditions must be satisfied two examples i'll give you firm should be registered for sure second persons who are suing should be shown in the register of firms as the partners check this example here down a and company is registered as a partnership firm in 1970 With A, B, and C as partners in 1971, A dies. In 1972, B and C had taken a new partner, D, and they filed a suit against X on behalf of A and company without fresh registration. A, B, C are partners. A dies. I will bring D into the picture. When the new firm D B C, I mean, it's the same firm only, but new partner is there. They will lodge the suit. Against X, suit is maintainable, not maintainable, not maintainable. Why? Two conditions must be satisfied. One, firm should be registered. Is the firm registered? Yes. Second, the partners who are suing, their name should be entered in the register. B's name is there, C's name is there, D's name is not there. Do you need fresh registration? No. Registration you cannot keep on getting again and again. Once registration is enough, what should you do? You should intimate the name of the update the name of the new partner. That has not been done. So what do you think? It will. It is not maintainable. Next one. A and B dis purchased a taxi to ply in partnership. Not fly. Ply. Ply means you know taxi service. Taxi service. You know bringing people, bringing goods, whatever it is. They plied the taxi for a year when A, without consent of B, disposed of the taxi. It brought an end to the partnership. A and B partners. Taxi was their taxi service. The taxi only A disposed of without asking B. B wanted to sue A. It's an unregistered firm. Possible or not? No. Correct answer. Yes. Yes. Why? Because no, you cannot sue the other partner also. No. Here you see. Cannot sue the firm. Cannot sue any other partner also. You see, there is an exception here. Point number eight. Non-registration of firm does not affect. First one, of course, right of third parties to sue the firm that you know. Outsiders can sue you, no problem. See this. Point number B is the answer. Right of the partners to sue for dissolution. Whether you are registered or not registered, I don't care. I can sue you for what dissolution. Some with Academy, my uh, old firm was an unregistered partnership firm. Why is some with not there? Because I didn't want it to continue. I dissolved it. So, can I sue the other partner for dissolution? Yes. Should I have registered it? No. Practical example only. so i can sue the other partner for what dissolution bringing an end to the entire partnership firm i can do that so if you see yes because it's there your right of the partners to sue for dissolution so in this particular case 
B can definitely sue A because he is not suing for some recovery of money, suing for what? Resolution. See, which brought an end to the partnership means resolution only, you know. So when it's bringing an end to the partnership, that subject matter taxi only is not there. Partnership is over. So I am suing you for dissolution and recovery of money. So whether it's registered, unregistered really does not matter if you are suing for dissolution. So be careful in these areas. If you are unregistered firm, you cannot sue for, I mean you cannot do set off. But can you do set off of 90 rupees, 70 rupees? Yes. Set off amount of 100 rupees you can claim. See this law is old law guys. What is 100 rupees today? Not exceeding 100, which means if it is less than 100, you can set off. 100 rupees, 1930s it is law, old law. 100 rupees was very much that time. So it was probably worth around 1 lakh rupees in current terms of money that time or maybe more. Now what is 1 lakh 100 rupees? We should actually change the law. But anyway, it's still there. Leave it. That's about it guys. All things are covered. Now quick revision. Come here. Page number 14. If I want to change in the ordinary matters of business, what consent is needed? Full, everyone should agree or majority? Ordinary matters of business. Yes, simple ordinary matters always majority. Like for example, should we have, you know, classes, should we, like if this was a partnership firm, should I print more books, should there be classes, should I bring more stationery, always in India it is simple majority, even our elections are what, simple majority, so here it is always majority. Advait learning, I want to shift it to Advait bar and restaurant. Spirit, spirits, Enne. what do you think? All, everyone should agree, obviously. What is the other word of all? Unanimous. BCR crash course, please go through my, met, my video. Everything I have covered in that, it will be a thorough revision. Two videos are there. One is some 9 hours, one is some 3 hours. So, go through. Full in-depth it is. Already uploaded. Correct? So, change in the ordinary matters of business. It's in my channel, Punarva Jai Kumar classes. Don't go to Foundation Advai channel and find it's not there. It's in my channel. So, go there, subscribe and uh, there's a timestamp also for you for easy navigation. Timestamp is there. So, you can go to that timestamp and click on that particular thing. Second. Let me show you. I was. I'll see. I'll tell you how to use the timestamp. That's why. Here. So if you see, sorry. So here, if you go. And this timestamp is there, see. So this is, uh, what do you say? All this introduction, this you leave. Then is vocabulary, synonym, antonym, idiom, phrasal verbs. This weightage is around uh, 8 marks in the exam. 4-5 hours you have discussed. Very, very in-depth, that's what I am saying. Circular and momo, not momo, memo. Right? This is weightage, what? 2 to 3 marks, that's all. But nevertheless, I have covered in like 40, 30, 40 minutes. Then if you just click on this, automatically it will go to that particular thing. And this is your report writing. It's around 4 marks weightage. And from 8 and a half hours, sentences. Sentence also very, very important. Active voice, passive voice. Uh, that is 6 marks. Then the second part of the video, you can go to the second part also. And there, again, if you see, Timestamp I have added for that also. First uh, half an hour is direct speech and direct speech. 4 marks is the weightage. Then reading comprehension. 100% 5 marks. Reading comprehension 5 marks. Then reading comprehension part 2 is 5 marks. 
actually the video is little jumbled so please follow this first you follow 55 minutes onwards to 121 then you come to 0 to 26 it's little jumbled so while mixing it is you know made a mistake it's fine then one that's why you follow this structure it's there in the pinned comment it is there in the description also then formal male then formal female and all don't write yes formal males is what what is the weightage 2 to 4 marks then 138 to 151 is resume writing again 4 marks weightage then note making and summary that is again 5 marks guarantee question and last but not the least pressy writing guarantee 5 marks question so in the next one month use all these things to study and it will help you similarly uh, it is there for this thing also I have to add the timestamps I will add it that is for contract act contract act I will add the chapter wise timestamps becomes easy for you plus this also whatever we are doing now that also will be uploaded with timestamps you can go through yes change in ordinary matters of business majority now this class no need to go through you are already attending don't waste time but in case you want some revision of some concepts you can go to that timestamp and immediately watch it change in ordinary matters majority change in the nature of business all admission of partner obviously all should agree Retirement, yeah, you should give a notice and you know, you should take the approval of everybody. Uh, expulsion, expulsion will be majority and it should be mentioned in the contract and what should be BF means what bona fide, not boyfriend, bona fide means what GF also will write girlfriend no good faith see bona fide means good faith we are ca students only gf i know is good faith yes or gratuity fund we don't know what is girlfriend and all yes correct bona fide good faith it should be done in good faith personal thing if you do null and void Null and void. Admitting a minor to benefits of partnership. Obviously, all. Everyone should agree, guys. Uh, statement for registration. That uh, registration of the firm, who all should agree? All partners or authorized agent. Now, if I want to make alterations in the firm name, you see, show you the bare act, alterations in the firm name, you see, this is the thing all partners or agent this is for that this one application for registration which we have written down already alterations in firm name it will be done by same manner as per section 58 within a period of 90 days 90 days from the making the alteration, same. Means what, guys? Same this only. All partners or agent. Within how many days? 90 days. Within 90 days. If I am opening a branch, closing a branch, that is ordinary business majority. But after opening or closing a branch, I have to intimate to whom? Registrar. I have to intimate to the registrar saying that, sir, we had four branches. In your books also four branches are there, but we have deleted one branch. So please, you also delete from there. Who should tell this? Any partner or all partners? What do you think? Common sense. 
So see, noting of closing and opening. Noting of any partner or agent within 90 days. Obviously, no need for everybody to sign. Any partner can sign. Any partner or agent within 90 days. Any, not all, any. Intimation of changes in the names and addresses of the partner. What do you think? Intimation of changes in names and addresses. Like one fellow just uh, changed the name. He would have gone for numerology and all that. Rahul. Rahul he would have written. Anyway, he is not playing well, no? That's why. He has changed the name, numerology. What do you think? And he is obviously changing the name and address. What do you think, guys? Only that fellow can tell. Now, why should others tell? So, any partner or agent within 90 days. Reconstitution of the firm. Obviously, all. Dissolution of the firm, all. Variation of terms of partnership deed. Whose permission should I take? Terms and conditions if I am changing, all. Transfer of share, all. Now, what about this? Rectification of mistakes in the application form. Rectification of mistake, it comes here. Now, this is the reorganization of states. One second. Yeah, 64. Tell me. An application made by all the parties who have signed document relating to the firm, which means which one? That's section 58 only. So it will be whom? Sorry. It will be all or agent. Now oh, this chart is also important. Anything they can ask in the exam. Correct? So anything they can ask in the exam, important chart. Right, so with this we are done with what guys, Chiller Law, Partnership Act, Indian Partner, very easy. So Indian Partnership Act done, so fully we have revised, we have revised fully, very easy it is. Now, Sale of Goods Act, one second. See, Partnership Act we have done and this thing we have done, what? Uh, Companies Act, Karabat, Kesribat, both done. Now we have to do Chau Chau Bath. What is Chau Chau Bath? LLP. Correct. Now LLP is what? Chau Chau Bath only. Companies Act and Companies Act and Partnership Act, Chau Chau Bath is LLP. It has the features of both. So we can actually finish it off quickly. We will quickly finish it in 10-15 minutes and then take a break. After the break, sale of goods act. That's all. Hold on one second and let me just download. I don't even have the material. One second. Limited Liability Partnership Act. Very easy, guys, it is. Ten minutes will finish it. Nothing is there in that. One plate chow chow bath will take ten minutes. This also will take ten minutes to consume. Sir, why you told chow chow bath? So now I feel like eating. I will name this chapter also Chau Chau Bath. Chau Chau Bath.
All right. Come on, guys. We'll finish it off. Nothing is there in this. So if it comes, how many marks will it come for? I'm four five. That's all. Easy it is. So LLP has the features of both Companies Act and Partnership Act. Now that we have done Companies Act and Partnership Act, LLP is very very easy. So quickly, all these useless things I'm not gonna do. Basically, the idea was uh, they wanted something which had the features of company. but also they wanted limited liability because though they wanted like a partnership they wanted limited liability that's why llp came into being in 2008 this was one of the uh, laws you know which they passed they took how long to pass this any idea llp act came for discussion this was passed in just 16 seconds not joking So those in favour say, "Ah, everyone said in 16 seconds the law was passed. No discussion, nothing. Horrible. So because in India laws are passed like crazy, you know. I hope you know that. You know the way they pass the law. I think I have this document here. See, this is 10 minutes per bill, 22 pass. That's it. This is the usual, you know, thing. Insolvency and bankruptcy court. Such an important law. 22 minute discussion. It was passed. All other things you see." general insurance bill passed in 8 minutes essential defense services bill 12 minutes reforms bill 9 minutes coconut development board by the time you have co coconut water and come 5 minutes over passed in 5 minutes deadly in india politicians you know swiftly they will dispose because they will not understand anything there so they'll pass it yes so it's an alternative corporate business vehicle that not only gives the benefits of this but also that so basically uh, the features new form of legal business liability will be limited though alternative corporate business vehicle all these dialogues should write in the exam llp itself will be liable for the full extent of its assets and allows the partners the flexibility of organizing their internal structure how it is not a company also not a partnership firm also it is something in between and it's nice because it has different features so it makes sense because you can do your own work you're not responsible uh, for others work you're responsible for your work i told you know think in which i am a partner it's like that i do my work i get money if i don't do my work i'll not get money this you will not get in company though in company you will only be a shareholder in partnership form also this will not come because other partners will tell you are not even coming into this partnership form and you want 50% why so a lot of fights used to happen best is llp llp is the best okay all of us have share in this no problem that share also we can define and in that partnership in the llp who will be the designated partner who will sign that also you can define i can tell sir i will be part of this llp sir i want 25% share no problem sir but i am only going to contribute to the common expenses rent i will pay electricity i will pay if i bring in my business i will work i will take money 1 rupee also i'll not give you but if i am bringing business to you you please give me some 10% share everything you keep i am not going to interfere in you that's the beauty of what llp amazing it is very good concept so first of all there is has to be what is a body corporate definition you know it means a company as defined in section 3 and includes all these things llp registered under this act incorporated outside india company incorporated outside india but it does not include what corporation sole corporation sole is generally office of the president you would have heard no office of the president pmo prime minister's office all these are examples of corporation sole so basically that is also called as a corporation guys uh, you know but it is sole only one person office of the prime minister is called corporation sole is it a body corporate no and corporate society business designated designated partner is a partner who will sign on all the documents is called a designated partner financial year generally is always first day of april to 31st day of march but if it is incorporated after 30th day of september let's say on 2nd november 2022 llp have incorporated what is the financial year is it 31st march 23 or 31st march 24 it is 31st march 24 because it is ends on the 31st day 
of the year next following that year. If I am incorporating on let us say 10th August 2022, what will be the financial year 31st March 2023? If I am incorporating it on 2nd November 2022, it will be 31st March 2024, that is what it says. Foreign LP, all this is fine. Partner, again, partner. Who should be a partner? An individual only will have these features. But definitely, a body corporate also can be a partner in LLP. So, can one company, can two companies join hands and start a LLP? Yes. An individual or body corporate may be a partner in a <coughs> LLP. However, an individual shall not be capable of being a partner first if he has been of unsound mind. You cannot tell, men, uh, you know, company is a mental fellow. No, it should only be an individual. Unsoundness of mind, you and I will you decide, hey, that fellow is very short-tempered, ucha, uchnan maga. Will you tell? No. Who will tell? Court. So, you should write all these things. Unsound mind, adjudicated by whom? Court. Is an undischarged insolvent means what? Court has given an order of insolvency on him. And the court has told for the next three years he will be called as an insolvent. Next three years, whatever you do, you will be an insolvent. That is called undischarged insolvent. Third, he has only told the court, I am uh, I want to be as an insolvent, I don't have any money. Has the court taken up the application still? No, application is pending. So, if I apply on 2nd November 2022 saying that I want to be added an insolvent and they will take it up only on 1st January 23 and from 1st January 23 to 1st January 27 they will call me as an insolvent. This will come under point number B and this part where I have applied to the court application is pending this will come under point number C. Correct? He is applied to be adjudicated as an insolvent and application is pending. When is the application accepted? 1st January 23 in my example. And for how many years does the court make me an insolvent? 4 years from 23 to 27. Done. Next. LLP shall have at least two partners, minimum two. You cannot have your own one, one person LLP. Anytime the number of LLP is reduced below the two and LLP carries on business for more than six months and the number is so reduced, the person who is only partner of the LLP carries on business after those six months and has knowledge of the fact that it is carrying on business shall be personally liable. I am going to lift the corporate veil. Because you are alone and you are doing this business without having one more partner. Personal liability will come after 6 months. 6 months time is given for you to appoint one more partner. Every LLP shall have at least 2 designated partners or individuals and at least one of them shall be a resident in India. These are all you know small small points. 2 partners also must be there. In that 2 partners, those 2 only should be designated partners. If there are 5 partners, 2 must be designated partners and at least one of them shall be resident in India. So, you basically can a non-resident also start an LLP? Yes. All partners are bodies corporate in which one or more partners are individuals and bodies corporate. At least 2 individuals who are partners or nominees shall act as designated partners. So, if there are some 5 companies which have started the LLP, I have to, in those 5 companies, each of them should appoint a nominee. They should put a nominee name saying that see body corporate cannot become right. So, they should appoint an individual. So, representative so to speak. So, from each of those company one one representative should come and how many designated partners must be there? Minimum two nominees. Can three LLPs come together and start one more LLP? Yes. In that case, who will be designated partner? The partners of those LLPs. Correct? 
three LLPs, can I start one more LLP? Yes. Who will be the partners of the main, this LLP, combined LLP? LLP only is the partner. LLP cannot become the partner. No, so who should I? The partners of those LLPs. Those should become the partners of the main LLP, merged LLP is what I am saying. These are the characteristic features, guys. Body corporate, it's a mixture. Chau chau baat this is. Body corporate, companies act. Perpetual succession, companies act. Separate legal entity, companies act. Mutual agency, partnership act. LLP agreement, partnership deed, that is partnership act. Artificial legal person, companies act. Common shield for this also, it's not there. Limited liability, companies act. Management of business, again, this and business for profit only. Foreign LLP, all this is partnership act. Minimum and maximum number of members depends again like Companies Act. It is investigation can be done against it just like Companies Act. You can go into a compromise or arrangement, Companies Act. You can convert that LLP into partnership firm into LLP you can convert. Again provisions are there. And e-filing, e-filing again Companies Act will come. So features they have asked you many times, 4-5 marks. What are the features of the LLP? Easy, same thing, same dialogue side, no change, no change at all. It shall have at least two partners and shall have at least two individual designated partners, one of whom will be resident. Is there any maximum limit of partners just like we have in Partnership Act? Partnership Act maximum numbers, maximum partners are 50. In LLP, nothing. Unlimited. That's why all the firms are converting to what? LLP. All the CA firms are converting to LLP. Why? One fellow commits fraud, others are at least protected. In a partnership firm, one fellow commits fraud, everyone will have to bear the, uh, you know, torture. Because that's what? Now trust and all is gone, guys. It is only you work, you go. That's it. So, it's very simple. If you work, you'll get money. That's the best concept ever in my opinion. If I am not working in my LLP, I have no right to ask for share of profit. What share of profit? I didn't work only, no. Partnership, that was the problem. Always that was the problem. One fellow always worked more, one fellow always worked less. The person who always wo worked more, deep down inside, he thought, if at all this fellow was not there, I would have taken that full money for my efforts. Other fellow is like, I hope this fellow never leaves me. Free money I am getting. That was always the problem. It never used to work. Even today, I am seeing so many partnership firms failing. That's why LLP is a very good concept. Mix. It should be for profit only, no charitable organization, as we have discussed. Advantages and all, they last. They are so easy. It's organized, provides flexibility, easy to form. All partners, most important is this only, limited liability. Flexible capital structure. If you want money, you pump in. If you don't want money, you leave it. Easy to dissolve also. Very easy to dissolve compared to company. Partnership firm, there is nothing much. Company is difficult to dissolve. This is easier to dissolve. Incorporation, this is same. Similar to what, guys? Companies Act. Same. That declaration has to be given. See? Declaration. Advocate should sign, subscribe, you should subscribe to the name in the incorporation document. You should state the name, state the business, state the address, state the name and address. If you make anything, if you make a false statement, then this one thing, imprisonment of two years will be there. This is not as per Companies Act, this is different. Imprisonment of two years, fine, 10,000 to 5 lakhs. If you can remember, you remember, otherwise you leave it, imprisonment provision. Then you will register the document and you will give one certificate of registration. All these are fine. And of course, the moment you register, just like Companies Act, you will have a separate legal entity. You can sue and be sued. You will have a common seal. You can acquire, hold, develop or dispose of any property in your own name. Movable, immovable, all these things. And name. Every LLP shall have a name acronym called LLP. You should basically for private company you will have private limited or private limited. For public company you will have limited. For LLP you should have limited. LLP. LLP you should have. For partnership firm there is no acronym as such. Generally they will say associates and company like that. So that is for partnership firm. 
No LLP shall be registered by your name in the opinion of central government is undesirable or it is nearly resembling one more thing similar to Companies Act. So can I start Infosys LLP? No. Can I start Vipro LLP? No. Not possible. Correct? Can I? I cannot do all those things. Can I start IBM? LLP, IBM, no, cannot have anything which is similar sounding, not possible, Virat Kohli LLP, no, that is called undesirable, you cannot use Narendra Modi LLP, no, Swami Nityananda LLP, you cannot do all those things which are already there, P public personas, I cannot use that, of course, her name will be reserved. They can ask you how long the name will be reserved. Once you choose the name, no, it will be reserved for three months. Within that three months, you have to register your LLP. I want to change my name, the LLP name. Can you change? Yes. But the change of name, can it be? What do you see? What do you say? It can can it be uh, forced also? Yes. If somebody lodges a complaint saying that it is identical or resembles the name of any other LLP or even body corporate. Body corporate means company. Company's name you cannot put here. Sir, that is Infosys Limited. When is Infosys LLP? Not allowed. So they will check the database of LLP also, company also, and then decide. Then fine. Steps to incorporate, same thing guys. You can go through this. First step is reservation of name. E form 1 you should file. After reserving the name, you should fall E form 2. E form 2 will have all the details. Then an LLP agreement just like a partnership deed as per section 23 you should do. Finally, it will give you a certificate. The relationship of partners, all these things will be same as Partnership Act. It shall be governed by LLP agreement, mutual rights and duties as per partnership deed only. You should file it with the ROC, registrar here, sorry, registrar of companies basically. This is registrar of firms, no, registrar of companies, ROC. ROC only will have LLP also. You can impose obligation. Mutual rights and duties, how will you decide basically? Uh, all partners. Similarly here, all partners. Cessation, can you exit also? Yes. How will you exit? By giving a notice in writing, saying that I want to exit. A person shall cease to be a partner of LLP when on his death or dissolution of the LLP or if he is declared unsound mind or if he is judged as an insolvent, same thing. Same like partnership act. When I am exiting, should I give a notice? Yes. This is the same guys, you can go through this, there is no point doing it actually, same. Extent of liability, or the only extent of liability is point number 4. Of course, the extent of liability is what? That is, with, that is the, that is limited. Of course, that is limited. An LLP is not bound by anything done by a partner when the partner has no authority. The person that he has no authority does not believe him to be a partner. So, basically here, implied authority concept here if you do not have authority is the firm bound no is the firm bound 10 minutes i'll give break is the firm bound no firm is not bound bound five minutes the llp is liable if a partner is liable to any person as a result of wrongful act or omission same we saw there also implied authority within the authority if you do but still if you omit something if the outsider is innocent firm will be bound here also llp is liable Partner is not personally liable just because he is a partner of the LLP. That's the beauty of liability here. He is not personally liable. He is only liable to the extent of that whatever they would have discussed in the partnership deed. Partner by holding out is the same as holding out. No change. That's the beauty. Since you have done both of those things in depth, this will become very easy. In case of fraud, on the other hand, unlimited liability. In case of fraud carried out by LLP or any of its partners with an intention to defraud, 
liability of the llp and the partner so acted with the intent to defraud this means mens rea if they had a criminal intention they will be unlimited what about the innocent partners no unlimited liability that's the beauty of llp act only partners who acted with the intent to defraud they will have a problem others no problem and if you committed fraud apart from without prejudice means apart from apart from criminal proceedings under llp act you should pay compensation to any person who suffered the loss first you should refund that amount second if he has suffered any loss compensation third criminal proceedings will come crpc criminal procedure code under ipc indian penal code will get attracted whistle blowing what is this five partners are there one partner knows that other partners are indulging in fraud but the other partners are controlling this partner is unable to lodge a complaint but can he go to the court or the tribunal and blow the whistle yes can you tell what is happening in the company in the firm in the llp yes that is one part second part what if you are only guilty and you will go to the court or tribunal and tell the full story who all are involved what is the extent of llp etc now will you get a slighter reduced sentence slightly reduced sent sentence yes the court or tribunal may reduce or waive any penalty or even an employee of the llp if he goes and tells the story if such partner has provided useful information during investigation or when any information given by any partner or employee has resulted in what conviction conviction means proven guilty see just to escape you can't go and give fake information court will say if you have given information if it has resulted in that fellow getting ma making him guilty then i will reduce your sentence for sure good that's called whistle blowing then financial disclosure you should give proper books of accounts that will be what cash basis or accrual basis see in companies act it is always accrual in llp act it is cash or accrual in companies act it is double entry this also double entry always in companies act also you should maintain in the registered office here also you should maintain the books at the registered office every year you should prepare a statement of account and solvency within 6 months from the end of each year saying that i am a solvent llp i definitely will continue in the long run will audit be required just for like companies act here also you need audit chartered accountant will audit the llp then annual return within 60 days of closure of financial year annual return will be given in companies act just to compare in companies act annual return is needed within 60 days of something called as annual general meeting every year shareholders will meet no that's called annual general meeting within 60 days of the meeting you should file an annual return but in uh, llp what is it within how many days 60 days is it 60 days of agm no there is no agm here what is it 60 days from the closure of financial year means 60 days from which date 31st march what will be 60 days april and may april how many days 30 may 31 but here i should take 30 so before may 30th you should file the annual return see that's what the llp is different here this part is different why is there any annual return in partnership act no annual return in companies act 30 days from agm agm generally happens on 30th september so what is 60 days from agm sorry october and november so there it is 30th 29th november because october has 31 days november has 30 days but you have to take 29 because it's 60 days right 31 plus 29 60 days 
so for companies act it is different for llp it will be different can i convert into other things yes firm to llp i can do private company into llp i can do unlisted company to llp i can do and all these things so basically when i change all these things of course a new certificate of registration will be provided to me foreign llp is it allowed yes foreign llp also is possible where llp is incorporated outside india and finally they they can give you this also for four marks what are the circumstances under which the tribunal can end the llp first one if llp decides that llp will be wound up by the tribunal all the partners will say we are not we are only fighting mutual agreement is not happening let's go to court that is one part second one if the number of persons partners is reduced below 2 as we told you below 2 and 6 months are over then i can rip the corporate veil make you personally liable and also wind up the llp if llp is unable to pay its debts insolvency insolvency this is called insolvency and bankruptcy code it is if it has acted against the interest of the sovereignty and integrity of the country means what you are an llp which is there Uh, funding terrorist activities many llps were found like that recently funding terrorism yes i will wind up and if you have not made what annual return or statement of solvency both you have not filed for how many years 5 years either this or that not both one even one if you have not filed for how many years five continuous years though then winding up this can be a good four mark question other things are fine guys then you can ask you this also filing when will you do the filing and all those things that's it this you please read and go important they can ask you four five marks difference between llp and partnership firm llp and company that's about it these two can be asked easy it is whatever i discussed only it's there easy can be asked four to five marks similarly in partnership firm and uh, company partnership firm and uh, what do you say hf it is there in the institute material you can go through these differences you read and go they may ask that in the exam that's about it so 10 15 how many minutes 10 15 we'll finish off sale of goods act some 2 hours that's it you can go home early today yes sale of goods act also very important how many marks 20 no 20 will not come 10 to 25 percentage. So yes, uh, around 12 to 15 marks guarantee will come. Around 12 to 15 guarantee will come from sale of very important law case study they are asking sale of goods. Very easy law it is. Finish it off. 10 15 will meet. Our advice last person is close the door. Let's begin and finish off this sale of goods act. 12 to 15 marks in the exam. Easy law, but uh, important of course. sale of goods act so as the name suggests this talks about what is it is except the state of jammu and kashmir please remove sorry after the abrogation of 370 this is no longer there this act will apply to everything that is you know all the whole of india and as i told you earlier it was always in the indian contract act so it came into force on 1st july anyway date is not important as such and it is act number it is act number you know 3 of 19 in the sense in 1930 this was the third law to be passed all that is not relevant for the exam leave it so the act talks about what the sale of goods so we should obviously understand what do you mean by a sale and we should understand what are goods if i give you this uh, mouse and in exchange i'll take your pen is it sale what do you think i'll just give this mouse and that this mouse is some 100 rupees and you have some parker pen 100 rupees you'll give me is it sale no barter okay then what about i'll give this projector to a company and buy a new projector and i'll pay 1000 extra yeah. oh that is not barter huh? money is involved okay money is involved fine 
fair enough so just little bit i'm just asking you so one is we are talking about what sale so if i replace my old phone with a new phone by paying the differential would it be a sale where all these exchange offers that you have or if i just exchange my uh, mouse with your you know parker pen or whatever it is 100 200 rupees would that be a sale is the question and uh, if i purchase a land worth 1 crore is that sale of goods act no why it's asset goods are not assets Yeah, if I'm into business, goods are not assets. So, yeah. Why? Most important, goods means what? Movable. Should be movable. And land is immovable. Is land a service or good? Or nothing? It's an immovable property. Is it a, a service or is it a immovable property? As per GST, shockingly, land is a service. Uh, how, how can land be service? Because their definition is whatever is not goods is service. Is land goods? No. So which means land is a service. So this GST payable on sale of land. Yes. Shocking. Yes. You have to pay 18% GST. Not 18%. That's 5% it is. They have reduced the rate. But should you pay on sale of land? Yes. Because land is a service. How can land be a service? Which law? Which is the which logical law will actually tell you it is, but yeah, GST says anything that is not goods is service. So forget about service now. Service generally is covered under contract act, but here we are talking about sale of goods. Sale obviously means, okay, if I give you the, what do you say? Uh, if I rent out this entire system, entire setup for you, you want to record classes, I'll say I'll give you this entire setup for you for three months is it sale it's rent so is it sale no it is not though there are goods involved here would it be a sale no if i use higher purchase mechanism where i will sell or for example there is this company called furlenko have you heard furlenko furlenko is a company where you can rent out furniture let's say i'm not liking this furniture today i want to change it generally we'll buy but in furlenko you can rent the furniture so you can go for monthly on month they'll give you that furniture again next month you'll change it so the, is that for link or what do you think is it sale of goods or service service but is it sale no it is not even a service you can also buy goods in uh, for uh, after a period of like three four months you can purchase the good as well so what is that for called goods or service it is it may be goods also but is it sale of goods no so basically sale means what is most important thing in sale there should be transfer of ownership so if for example i need a gold loan i will go to manapuram gold loan company i will give my whatever jewels i have as a pledge and the gold loan company will give me loan is that sale of goods no why no transfer of ownership it is just transfer of possession so ultimately what I am trying to tell is there has to be transfer of ownership if it has to be a sale. When I give the Manapuram gold, if I give the gold to you, it is still a transfer of goods, but it is not ownership, it is only possession. So basically what I am trying to tell is sale of goods act, there has to be a sale. Sale means what? Transfer of ownership. And there has to be goods. What do you mean by goods? We will see. Take it out. So there are certain definitions here. Buyer, a person who buys or agrees to buy. This person will be individual or anybody. If a company buys the goods, will it be covered in a sale of goods? Person general meaning is individual. But why not other people also? Yes. Here the person, you have to go to which definition? You have to go to income tax act definition. I mean if income tax also is not there, you have to go to one law called general clauses act. For example, in many of the laws, if they use the word he is disqualified, he is of unsound mind. You saw in LLP also. LLP, a partner, if he is unsound mind, he is undischarged insolvent, he is this, he is that. Does he include she? Who, who says that? General Clauses Act. General Clauses Act is a general law. Whenever I use the word year in any law, is it 1st April to 31st March or January to December? 
first april to 31st march or january to december now if i just use the word year in the law if it says year if they use the word financial year then you should see the definition even in llp act i showed you financial year what was that 31st march uh, 1st april to 31st march but if they simply use the word year and the word year is not defined again i have to go to gca general clauses act and a general clauses act year is defined as calendar year means what january to december which calendar british calendar january to december so there he includes she and what about this i mean general i'm just saying a uh, holding company can have one subsidiary or if i say holding company and subsidiary does it include second subsidiary also does it include third subsidiary also i'm just asking if i simply say a holding company can have one or one person who is a managing director of the holding company can be the managing director of its subsidiary if they say like that does it include just one subsidiary or includes multiple subsidiaries also again general clauses act says masculine includes feminine means he includes she then singular includes plural when I, and vice versa whenever i say subsidiary it means subsidiaries whenever i tell subsidiaries it will also mean single subsidiary all this you will learn in ca inter don't worry but i just did the basics here for this only when i use the word person person is not defined in sale of goods act where will i go general clause act what is the definition of general clause act person anybody that is aop boi company firm huf trust anything so sale of goods act who all are covered everybody who buys goods are covered when i say buy buy means what transfer of ownership transfer of ownership or agrees to buy the goods agrees to buy means what agrees to buy means what if at knife point i threaten you and i say today evening if you don't come and buy this i will i mean i have kidnapped your son already that's it dead body will come i'm just saying i'm just asking is it agreed to buy no agree means what contract act there should be voluntary agreement not forced correct obviously it should not be coercion it should be pre consent pre consent agrees to buy the goods agree to buy so if you have uh, want to buy some enfield bike and you have given the down payment have you agreed to buy yes when will the ownership be transferred to you only at the payment of the last installment or payment when the bike is ready for delivery only then when you pay the amount you are the owner are the owner at the uh, time of giving the booking amount no isn't booking amount a refundable deposit yes booking amount of any car you will book some of my mental friends are there if any new car comes five different different cars are announced no five places also they'll go and give the booking amount booking amount will be some 10000 20000 they'll book all five places and then they will choose which car they want then they'll choose that and then remaining they will ask them to return so they are there For car you know fanatics they really like those cars two of my friends are there like that whenever any new car comes they'll they'll just keep their car for one or two one year maximum they'll keep selling because they want new cars so in that case what happens yes have you agreed to buy yes then you are a buyer seller is the same person who sells or agrees to sell now the most important definition obviously first is sale which you have just seen transfer of ownership what do you mean by goods goods means every kind of movable property anything that movable property is called goods which means land is not goods obviously so sale of goods act doesn't cover land sale of goods act doesn't cover land what do you think then excludes dash actionable claim and money actionable claim means what any claim on which an action can be brought about action means a suit any claim which means your debtor's balance in your balance sheet 
on the asset side you have debtors receivable how much 1 crore this will be paid to you in in payable to you in 3 months now i have a doubt whether they'll pay or not and i want money immediately what can i do there is something called as bills discounting in your accounts correct bills is for bill of exchange so basically the debtor would have told i promise to pay within 3 months 1 crore rupees like that he would have given me a bill for me it is bills receivable i want immediate money can i go to a bank and deposit that bills receivable yes that is called bill discounting bank will give me how much 80 lakh rupees assume 20 lakh is their fees Three months later, you will go to the debtor, or bank will go to the debtor. That concept in normal bill discounting is called. I mean, the normal using the check etc. is called bill discount. Sorry, my negotiable instrument is called bill discounting. But instead of a bank, can you sell it to other financial institutions also? Yes, that concept is called factoring, which you will learn in CA Inter. Factoring is what transferring your receivables. now tell me guys when i transfer my receivable is this good i'm selling the debtors is it good i am selling the debtor for 80 lakh rupees is it good what do you think i am transferring i don't i don't want the collection that entire debtors i'm transferring to you is it sale of goods confusion that's why this section says excluding actionable claim what is actionable claim debtors balance actionable claim means what debtors balance so the sale of goods act involve bill discounting no the sale of goods act involve factoring no actionable claim means what any claim on which claim means what receivable on which an action can be brought about what is an action suit and money is money good movable no. when i am giving you the money for a cup of coffee am i selling the good think about it they are selling the good okay am i also selling the good no money can never be goods money is not goods in the money if you see they have written no i promise to pay the bearer the sum of so and so rupees rbi governor would have signed so he is trying to tell that whoever if you touch that rupee and if it says 100 i'll pay you 100 rbi is telling the value of this money is 100 rupees 400 rupee note obviously so when i say money it is not good you can buy goods with money but money itself is not goods correct so november 8 2016 what happened november 8 2016 demonetization you should never forget the date correct demonetization so that time you have old 500 rupee note with you or old 1000 rupee note you have you will keep it let's say you will keep it till 2040 in 2040 somebody will con uh, put on instagram if instagram is there at that time they will put saying that uh, we need I want to buy the old thousand rupee note. I am ready to pay ten thousand rupees. That time you will show this is the number. I mean, this is the thousand rupee note I have, authentic one. If you want, you can buy. It is already how many? It is you know almost a thirty-five year old note. People would want to buy old note. Now today also we buy. Nine, we will see nineteen sixty, nineteen seventies coins and all. We will see. like that in 2040 50 that 1000 rupees will be valued at 10000 rupees that time you will give that 1000 rupee note and get 10000 rupees that 1000 rupee money that you have is that good what do you think is that a good what do you think 100% yes because is that money actually money it is no longer legal tender it is no longer legal tender right yes that is why goods will exclude what actionable claim and money but not what do you mean by but not but does not exclude which means it includes see goods excludes actionable claim and money but does not exclude 
exclusion of exclusion is what inclusion which means whatever i am going to write now all those are goods whatever i am going to write now all those are goods what are those goods old coins jubilee coins antique coins not antique coins antique coins commemorative coins what is commemorative coins nityananda's birthday so in nityananda's birthday in on his on his uh, you know embossing one his photo the government of india will release one coin i'm just saying and vijay malya in honor of vijay malya for the art of living so what one coin in his honor we will release it's called commemorative coin can it be sold yes but actually government releases commemorative coins for whom for gandhi ji for subhash chandra bose gandhi ji anyway is there everywhere no tension subhash chandra bose is you know anniversary like that they will release special commemorative coins those coins can be sold those coins are not legal tender you cannot use that coin to buy something so old coins jubilee coins antique coins commemorative coins then what anything for what is the art of collecting notes and coins called politics no what is the art of collecting notes and coins what is the hobby stamp collect stamp not stamp is different i'm talking about notes and coins old coins old notes it's called numismatics so any coin or note of numismatic value any coin or note of numismatic value means what it is not legal tender anymore you are just collecting it so can you do that yes so old coins jubilee coins antique coins commemorative coins numismatics all these are examples of goods they are very much goods what about goodwill mtr goodwill so no is that a good trademark copyright jk rowling sold her harry potter book to you know the makers of harry potter movie she sold her book to a uk theater also which will harry potter and the cursed child so where that, that it's a play it is a musical which is happening in uk and she gets royalty for that is it goods 100% yes so copyright goodwill trademark any intellectual property right all these are examples of goods only legal tender is not good the money that you have you and i now current legal tender those are not goods everything else will be goods correct excludes what actionable claim and money but does not exclude what all these things it also includes what stock and shares stock is a collection of shares and also a share share is also a good so if i sell uh, a share to you it will become goods growing crops grass and things growing crops grass and things attached to the earth but basically if i have one land and i have some 100 trees assume these are trees looks like chicken lollipop but assume there are trees correct if there are 100 trees and i'm selling you the land land is not good for sure but are these trees goods are these trees goods am i selling the land and the goods or am i selling them separately but they are attached to the earth no basically is it part of the land or is it part of the goods so they say anything grass things attached to the earth but agreed to be severed severed means cut under a contract of sale it depends on what do you want to do with that tree if you want to cut down the trees it will be goods if you don't want to cut down the tree it will be part of land so most important in sale of goods act is what does the agreement say the contract what does it say will the land be when will the trees be attached to the land or will the trees be cut down 
if you have under if you have agreed that the trees will be cut down the trees will be sold separately as goods sale of goods act will apply very simple this is the goods definition which you should remember next different types of goods one is existing goods what are existing goods goods that are in existence at the time of the contract now you want to have one biscuit you will go to a store and say give me hide and seek biscuit you can write see there right in front of you will say sir give me that are the goods in existence yes they are called existing goods future goods are what it is going to come in the future for example bike 6 months waiting period is there that bike is not yet yours but the goods will be produced for you separately only when you order production it will give an order for production and it is going to come based on your order that it is called future goods when you go to a restaurant also when you order food that is also goods correct so the goods are future when you order gobi manchurian he will not give you first correct so those are future goods when you go to a cut fruit store cut fruits you would have already cut and kept no those are existing or future existing goods so goods to be manufactured or produced or acquired after making the contract of sale is called future goods existing goods are right there in front existing goods are also called as you know to some extent ascertained goods ascertained means what you have exactly know what to buy ascertained unascertained means you do not know what to buy unascertained also is existing only for example for example if you want to go buy biscuit so many biscuits are there different different brands are the goods existing yes but have you ascertained which biscuit you want no so when you pick one thing i want parle ji that becomes ascertained goods if you say i want only this side and see that becomes ascertained goods there are so many biscuits now yes specific goods on the other hand that's what specific goods are the best example is also synonymously called as ascertained both are the same specific goods means what ascertained i will go pick that one biscuit packet that will be called as ascertained Which goods are identified and agreed upon at the time of sale sir give me 1 kg basmati rice there are so many basmati rice. this quality i want 1 kg yes and they will pack 1 kg and keep aside specific goods or ascertained goods unascertained means what goods may be existing but i don't know which rice to buy there are so many different types of rice there i don't know which one to buy unascertained but when i pick one then goods are identified then it will be called as ascertained or specific it can be used interchangeably no problem these are the types of goods then types of delivery of good is also is very very important types of delivery of goods delivery of goods is transfer of possession or ownership possession or ownership it is only possession ownership would have already happened it is only transfer of possession and forceful transfer of possession or voluntary always voluntary at knife point if i threaten you and get your necklace that is not voluntary that's not called delivery of goods when the goods are physically transferred from one person to the other person you will go to the shop ask for 1 kg basmati rice that basmati rice packet is in your hand now that is called what actual delivery actual delivery then generally mr a has there's a warehouse mr a has some goods in that warehouse assume these are goods so my amazing and writing yes so goods are there one warehouse keeper will be there warehouse keeper will have something called as warehouse keepers receipt in that he will say quantity of goods 1000 kg value is so and so owner is mr a owner is mr a mr b will call this fellow and say boss i want to buy the goods that are in this warehouse of yours he will say okay sir you have to pay Uh, 10 lakh rupees b says no problem i'll pay a will say sir where should i deliver the goods 
B says don't deliver anywhere. I also don't have any uh, storage space. Keep it there only in the warehouse, no problem. I will transfer the money to you. B will transfer money to A. A will inform the warehouse keeper. From today, owner has changed. Who is the owner? B. So, the warehouse keeper in his warehouse keeper's receipt will scratch whose name? A's name. And write whose name? B's name. Have the goods been transferred to B in this case? Have the goods been transferred to B? Physically? No. But... Express way, is it done? No. Is it done in an implied way? Yes. How is it done in an implied way? By changing the ownership in the ownership and possession. Where? In the document. Ownership is changed in the document. What about possession? Possession is, what do you say? Implied or possession is physical? It's not physical, it's implied. Such implied delivery is called constructive delivery. Just like implied notice, constructive notice in Companies Act. Similarly here, implied delivery is called constructive delivery. It is called delivery by atonement or acknowledgement. Physical delivery has not happened. What has happened? Implied delivery. How implied delivery? By changing the ownership documents. Possession also has been transferred. So from today, who is the owner? B. B is the owner. Symbolic delivery. Symbolic is to do some action. What is symbolic delivery? A and B meet somewhere else. Somewhere else they meet. And A will hand over the keys of the warehouse to B. If you are handing over the keys of the warehouse, am I delivering the ownership or the possession? Ownership is already de delivered here. Possession I am trans I mean, transferring in a very symbolic way. If you see man of the match series, man of the man of the series, man of the match award, man of the series award, they will give you the car key. They will give you a check. Can he deposit that check in the bank? No. That key, can he start the car? No. It is just a symbolic way of telling you are own, owning the car. Car they cannot put on him, he will die. Correct? So obviously they will just give a key, like one cardboard key. It's a very symbolic way of telling today, from today you are the owner. That is called what guys? Third one, symbolic delivery. Symbolic delivery is doing some action symbolizing something. Handing over the document, you know, trans handing over the keys. It's called symbolic delivery. Constructive delivery is what? I am not changing the physical custody, but I am changing the acknowledgement. Actual delivery, physical transfer of goods. Symbolic delivery is what? Key. Giving the key and giving the handing over the documents to you. All this is called symbolic delivery. So, ownership can be transferred by transferring something called document of title. When they use the word of title, it means document of ownership. Your marks card. Is it the statement of just your marks or can you transfer the marks card by just changing the name? Can you can you transfer your marks to somebody by changing the name? No. Is it just a document showing your marks? Yes. There is a difference between document of title and document showing title. A Xerox copy of your driver's license, is it a document showing your, uh, what do you say? Registration or document of registration? Showing. It's just showing. Even if you take original license also, can you change the license to somebody else's name? No. However, your RC book of your vehicle. RC book is a document of title or showing title? Of. When you sell your car to somebody else, so that RC book will be changed, where the owner will be changed from you to somebody else. What is that? Document of title. So, document of title means document of ownership. Document showing title means document showing ownership. What can be transferred by changing the name? Document of title. Here I told you an example. The warehouse keeper will scratch A's name and write B's name. 
thereby B becoming the owner. So warehouse keepers reset bill of lading. All these things are terms given for you know goods sent via ship and all those things. Uh, dock warrant, different names are there. All these are document of title or showing title of title because you can transfer the ownership by just changing the name, just like your RC book. So if you see, what is document of title? Bill of lading, dock warrant, arrows keepers receipt, war finger. War is a person. It's it's war is a warehouse near the sea port. Dock. It's called a dock warrant. Wharf. A person who's looking after the wharf is called wharfinger. So wharfinger certificate, railway receipt, any other things. All these things will be what guys? Document of title. There's a difference between document showing title and document of title. A share certificate is a document showing title. It just shows that you own shares. It cannot be transferred just by changing the name, like your marks card. It is not a document of title. Merely shows the person that the person who in the share certificate owns the shares. That's it. Agent is a person who will sell the goods, buy and sell the goods and all that. Uh, one more important example. Pro I mean, definition property. Property means what? In a sale of goods, what is changing? Property. What do you mean by property? Ownership or possession? Sale of goods, ownership or possession. If I give this laptop to you, if I just give this laptop to you, have I sold it? No. I've just given the possession. But for a sale of goods to happen, ownership to transfer or possession? Ownership. Possession may or may not be transferred. For example, today morning you went to a laptop store and you will tell them, or let's say your mobile is not working, you'll go to a mobile fellow and say, sir, please repair this, I'll come in the evening. Have you sold the goods to him? No. Or let's say you want to buy a mobile. You buy a new mobile and you pay some 30,000 rupees and you tell him, sir, evening I'll take the delivery. I have this class. This stupid fellow is taking class. 12.30 I'll come. 12.45 I hope he'll finish. From yesterday he's telling he'll finish. He's not finishing. 12.30 I'll come. You please give the thing to me. Fine. Morning you bought already. Some offer was going on which you were supposed to buy before 7.30. You've gone all that done. So delivery will take it in the afternoon, 12.30. 12.30 you go there, that entire shop is burnt, fire. Some short circuit has happened, unfortunately gone. Who is the owner of the mobile? You have already bought, you have the bill, everything. Have you taken possession? No. So you will book a ticket to Tirupati. Yes, Nama. Yes. So yes, property. What do you think? When I say transfer of property, ownership or possession? Ownership. So that legal term is called general property. General property means ownership. For a sale of goods to happen, most important thing is general property. Secondary thing is what? Possession. What is possession called? Special property. Property means what? General property, ownership, special property, possession. For a sale of goods to happen, what should transfer? General property or special property? General. Ideally, general. Special may or may not happen. I told you, mobile example. But general has to happen. What if you didn't pay any money? There was no offer. You'll say, I'll come in the evening and uh, buy. Then, you are not the owner. Right? You are not the owner. Or one more. He will give you the phone. That fellow goes ahead and gives you the phone. Sir, you, you use till evening, sir. You come back and buy. I trust you are an old customer. Some people do that. You use the phone, no problem. You use it, come back in the evening. If you don't want it, I will only take it. Don't worry. Now, ownership transferred or not? No, you are just using it. You are just using it. When you are using it, you are using it. You trip and fall. It goes and falls in the charandi. Gutter. Now, can you go to that fellow? Who is the owner? You are the owner or that fellow is the owner? That guy is the owner. He has to book a ticket to Tirupati. iPhone he has given you to use. One kidney gone for him. Correct? He has given it to you use. He gave it to you of all the people. 
So now iPhone has gone into the charandi. Now, can you go back to him and say, sir, take my kidney? Correct? What do you think? So has the ownership been transferred? No. Who is liable? That fellow. Under Sale of Goods Act. Why? Ownership has not been transferred. But can he sue you under Contract Act? Can he sue you under Contract Act? Under Contract Act, he has transferred possession or ownership? Possession. He has transferred possession. So, when he has transferred possession, you will be able to answer once you watch Contract Act. When you have transferred possession, what have you transferred? The possession, obviously. What is that called? That is called bailment. That is called bailment. Person who transfers the possession is called bailer. Other person is called bailey, not Kannada bailey. Correct? Bailar and bailey. Correct? It is bailar and bailey. Bailment it is called. Bailment. So, in that case, who is liable? We have to see. Under contract act, it is different. In sale of goods act, is it? Sir, in the exam, what to write? Don't worry, they will only give you. They will give you as per which law you should write. They will say, as per the provisions of sale of goods act, please explain. That time you shouldn't write contract act. But can you write contract act as a note? Yes. If you write it as a note, people will feel that you actually understand the law and it will they'll de definitely appreciate. So, if they ask you the same question, somebody gave you some goods for you to take care and you tripped and fell and the goods are lost. Under sale of goods act, does the seller have any right? No, because ownership has not been transferred. That is the answer. But note, you can say that since he has given the goods to you, you are the bailey. And under contract act, Bailey should actually act as a owner. Whatever goods that he has, you know, you have given, he should look after it properly. You can tell that. Let us you buy a bike after becoming a CA. Hayabusa bike you buy. Some 20 lakhs it is Hayabusa bike. So, you will come in front of this office and you will do. I will come out. Hey, what is this da? Sir, new bike sir. You want a ride? I will say okay. I was about to sit behind the bike. You will give me the key. Sir, you ride. Now, I don't know how to ride a bike, but Manamarede will go if I tell. So, I will take the bike and start. Accelerator, I will put. Directly into that uh, pay and use toilet, I will go. Correct? I should have gone straight. I will go into the pay and use toilet. Men, women, middle, I will go and hit. Correct? So, what? Wall, gone. Haya Busa will become what? Haya one side, Busa one side. Correct? 20 lakhs, Damar. You will come and say, Sir, what did you do? I will say, Boss, it is not sale of goods. Die. Go to Tirupati. I will give you a free ticket. What do you think? Under sale of goods act, who is liable? Seller only is liable. Basically, you only. The guy who rode the bike, main guy, owner. You. You are liable. But can you sue me under contract act? Yes. When you gave the goods to me, I am a bailey. Bailey should step into the shoes of the owner. And whatever the owner should have done to make sure the goods are fine, who should have done it? Bailey. Now, I did not look after the goods properly. So, will I be able to pay? Yes. You will understand it better when you watch Indian Contract Act also. Don't worry. So, in the exam, always see what question they are asking. And at the foundation level, 100% they would have given which law you should answer. As per the Sale of Goods Act, explain, they will tell. You should explain that. But as a note, you can write an extra dialogue. Some 30 seconds it takes to write an extra dialogue, but it will add weightage. Evaluator, you will earn that fellow's respect. Evaluator will be like, okay, wow, this person knows other laws, is able to connect both the laws. That is what it is. Right. All that law you will understand when you start reading the main Bear Act. So, Bear Act is most important, guys. It will take a lot of time to understand, but it is more important to learn. Because tomorrow, once you become a CA, when people come and ask you these questions, you cannot say, the sale of goods act, actually, I only attended crash course. After that, I didn't understand. If you tell like that, that fellow will say, how did you become CA? Worst feeling ever, that is. So, you should know how to read the Bear Act. Whatever we have taught here, you will not remember anything, actually, three years later. But the thing is, your ability to read the Bear Act, is what will, what do you mean by Bear Act? It is the law as passed by the parliament. Once you start reading that, you will understand.
So that in CA inter will start, not here. CA inter will start how to read the bear act and all those things. So general is what? Ownership. Special property is possession. General is ownership. Special is possession. When I started teaching, I started teaching the bear act, people were all laughing, thinking that the stupid fellow is teaching from the bear act. Now the, again, what goes around comes around. Good questions they are asking from the bear act only now directly. The first four, five years, people were laughing at us, thinking that this fellow is teaching something which is not needed. Now, all those people who did shortcut method, they are crying. Because now, institute also has woken up. And they are asking, especially not in foundation, in inter and final, they will ask. And now, with the new syllabus coming, inter will become more like final anyway. So, you should study the Bayer Act, obviously, undoubtedly. So, general is what ownership, special is what possession. Everything for that matter. Even income tax, law, everything. Yeah. So, property, again come back. Property means what? It is the general property. Right of dash ownership. And not merely special property. Right of possession. So, as far as contract of sale is concerned, two things. If there is transfer of, transfer means what? Sale. Transfer of property. Whenever I use the word property, general property or special property? General. Ownership. If it is happening immediately, when will it happen immediately guys? If it is existing goods, which means what I am trying to tell is existing goods are there. Or the transfer of property can happen at a future date, means what? Future goods. What is it called? The transfer of property is happening immediately. It is simply called as a sale. If the transfer of property is happening at a future date, it is called what? Agreement to sell. Agreement to sell. These are the technical words. If the transfer of property is happening immediately, it is called sale. If it is happening at a future date, it is called agreement to sell. So please, you should open your eyes and see what they are asking in the exam. Are they asking sale or are they asking agreement to sell? Another dialogue, how to tell this is present sale. Sale is happening today. Of what goods? Existing goods. This one is what? Agreement to sell. Is it future sale of future goods? What do you think? Is it future sale of future goods or present sale of future goods? Guys, sale cannot happen in the future. Sale is happening today. It is a present sale. But the goods are coming when? Future. Present sale of future goods is called what? Agreement to sell. Present sale of future goods is called what? Agreement to sell. Present sale of future goods is called agreement to sell. Present sale of future goods is called agreement to sell. So, goods if they are coming in the future, for example, if I buy something, let's say I will say whatever, uh, you know, uh, crops you are going to grow in this land, which will be... Uh, which will come within next two years, I should get it. It is present sale. Sale is happening today, but goods are coming in the future. Present sale of existing goods is whatever you buy immediately. So that's called contract of sale. Divided into two parts. That same thing is there. So what are the essentials of contract? There must be at least two parties, guys. You cannot sell things to yourself. Subject matter of the contract must necessarily be goods. It cannot be immobile property. It cannot be barter system. A price in money should be paid. 
there should be transfer of property and all other essential elements of a valid contract must be present that you will learn when you watch contract act same thing pre consent offer acceptance you already know it but yeah there are those things same <coughs> here we have discussed all these things yes subject matter should always be sale of goods if there are specific goods there can be two things here destruction of the subject matter before making of contract means what before sale second one before sale but after agreement to sell this is future goods before making the sale only something happens what happens it is void it is obviously void before making the sale only the subject matter is destroyed then it is void so i will come to you and say i want 40 kgs of basmati rice you will say yes sir it's in the go down i'll get it immediately when you go to the go down rats have eaten everything now before the sale has happened what has happened to the goods destroyed will the contract be valid or void obviously void you i thought you had in the go down you also thought it's in the go down bilateral mistake of existence of the goods gone that is left hand side right hand side right hand side is what before sale but after agreement to sell so i will come and say february 14th is coming valentines day i have five girlfriends so please make five cakes i will give an order for five cakes i have to manage my time two two hours example i am giving guys yes so i will buy cakes five cakes so that fellow says okay that fellow full shock five five cakes is ordering stupid fellow same name also i mean the name of the girlfriend are different but the from name is the same so you like okay this player full player is so that uh, he will go and order that now when it is being when i as the sale happened no it's an agreement to sell why goods are coming in the future i placed an order now when they are making that particular cake etc there is a short circuit or whatever happens the whatever the cake they have made already or while transporting back to the bakery so there is an accident and all the five cakes gone now tell me what happens what happens uh, apart from break up what happens yes it is what happens to the contract void i don't have to pay for anything and whatever i paid also will be refunded because this has happened what after agreement to sell but before sale so you should see what happens to the whether the subject matter of the contract only is destroyed correct subject matter of the contract only must be destroyed and there cannot be any replacement if for example i ask for that 40 kg basmati rice if that is destroyed there he can get it from somewhere else ideally speaking assuming it's there but cake customized cake if i make you cannot make it within the next one hour so it's gone so when will the risks and rewards be transferred only and only when that ownership is transferred so only when the ownership is transferred risk and rewards will be transferred if i am after you become a ca you will be driving you want to you want to buy a bmw car correct bmw car so you are do, going in a bmw car your bmw sedan you are now using you are going what test drive you are going that fellow is sitting here and you are sitting there test drive you are going in uh, let's say or you are taking bmw on the roads of goa or kerala whatever it is test drive coconut will fall it will hit what the windshield gone destroyed now who should pay bmw or you it's a test drive you don't own it but then they will say that sir you did it or you made the coconut fall or or let's say you lose control and you go and bang into this coconut tree then some 10 coconuts will fall 
So there's a dent here also, and dents everywhere. Correct. To sell that, to replace that BMW, you have to sell yourself, your two wheeler, then everything you have to sell. Correct. Yes. So if you go around these luxury cars, you should be very careful. If you touch that, your vehicle you have to sell to fix that bumper. Correct. Yes, that's how it is. That is what. Right. So if you see, what do you think? Tell me. Now in this case, who is liable? Still BMW only is liable because ownership has not been transferred. That's why they will, let's say it's merely what? You have not even an agreement to sell. Basically you have not even agreed to buy. You are just going for a test drive. Like a sample. I'm going for a test drive to decide whether I'll buy or not. Still in this case BMW only is liable. That is why when you go for a test drive, they'll make you sign one document. Saying what? That if at all I go and bang it somewhere, I will have to pay. Under which law? Not sale of goods act. Under contract act. Why? That becomes contract of bailment. Owner is giving you the goods to, I mean, giving you the thing to ride. If you don't drive properly, anything happens, who will be liable? The driver. That is you guy. You will be liable. So, sale of goods act will still not apply to the test drive. What will apply? Contract act. Under sale of goods act, can you escape punishment 100%? Yes. So, if you see, that is this example. All this you can see, this one. Anuman automobiles. In this Anuman automobiles, what happened? Uh, the car was destroyed by a fire accident, which was not the mistake of the car company also, not the mistake of the person who had taken it on a test drive also. Nobody's mistake. Who is liable? Car company, no choice. Why? Ownership has not been transferred. Ownership has not been transferred. Then, one number 12, contract of sale versus contract of work and labor. This also they keep asking, what is sale, what is work and labor? You have to ascertain. When you go to, let's say, when you go to, uh, for a train journey, when you go for a train journey, they'll give you food, no? Like for example, if you go for go to Shatabdi and all that, food is in food is Rajdhani Express. Food is you know part of the deal. Is it sale of goods or sale of service? Service. Good comes part of the service. You will order one refrigerator from Chroma. They will have to deliver it, install it properly. Is it sale of goods or sale of service? Have you ordered the service and goods are coming along with it? Or have you ordered the goods and service comes along with it? Obviously, I have ordered the goods. Service, they have to do it. They have to install. They cannot, you know, just give. They have to install it properly. When you buy some uh, cot from Urban Ladder and all those things, those fellows will come and install it for you. They will just bring some planks and they will, in front of you only, install it for you. Again, that is sale of goods only. When you go on a flight and one sandwich you will pay some 500 rupees to eat some stale sandwich. That is what? Sale of goods as or service? No. There because since you are buying the item separately, it is sale of goods, not service. In Rajdhani Express, it is already included in the ticket. That's why it has become sale of goods. I mean sale of the service, sorry, ticket. The service includes the food. Right? So when you actually go to a restaurant, are you selling, are they selling good or service? Goods or service? Have you ever wondered that? Service tax will be on what? Will they charge 18%? Next time check guys, check all that. As CA students, you should check all that. Have you ever seen a bill in your life? You would have seen. Have you seen the tax amount there? How much percentage? It is not 18%. Why? Because there it is a bundled service. They are selling goods also, service also. Not in a self-service store. When you go to a proper restaurant. So they are actually selling goods. When you say Gobi Manchurian, they have to bring Gobi, no? They have to make the item and then give it to you. They will serve it to you. Preparation is a service. Gobi is a good. Correct? So, it's a bundled service. That's why government has fixed a lesser rate. Because service tax is for both goods and service, I am giving a lesser rate here. 
right? There are service charges also some restaurants will levy 10% service charge. It's like a tip that you have to give them for the service. So, yes, it depends on the facts of the case. When you go to a dentist for a grandmother, she will have to, she will need fake teeth. That fake teeth, selling goods or service? He will have to affix the teeth and all those things. No, obviously, you cannot tell, uh, gee, take it. You put on your, you put yourself. No. You have to first remove your teeth and then have to at least see whether it is properly fitting. All that, you know, things are there. Goods or service? Both. If you go to a tailor, he is, uh, you give, you give him a dress material and all and he will make. Are you, is he selling button, thread, and then making you a suit or is he selling a service and button and thread comes along with it? Service. So, for some you can distinctly make the, I mean, see the difference and some you cannot. Answer question number one. Question one. What do you think? Dentist making a small set of teeth for his patient with materials. And the buyer agrees to buy 2000 and they are properly fitted into his mouth. Generally, it's a service, guys, but see here. Wholly found by the dentist. Basically, he has only manufactured the false teeth. He is selling the false teeth. And the service, obviously, will be part of the sale of goods. It's like buying a refrigerator and installation comes along with it. So, here you are buying the teeth and the installation of the teeth is part of the sale of goods because of the use of the word only found it is sale of goods what if he buys the goods from somewhere else and if, uh, you know puts you in say he will give a different bill for service he'll give a different bill for that item he'll give a different bill here he has to since it's wholly found by the dentist sale of goods is one part then is what the fact that is installing it in your mouth that is part of the sale of goods only tailor goods or service or basically work and labor or service sorry or goods work and labor work and labor means service he is putting his work and labor he is not selling the buttons and all those things if you go to a club and you have any, for example, if you go to Super Bazaar, Maha Bazaar, whatever, you will get a card also, no, sometimes, where you get 50% off, etc. Is that a service or sale of goods? Subscription, if you pay subscription amount, you will get some additional discount. Nothing. All these things are goods only. That extra 10% discount is just because you are, a, you are a member there. Does it mean that there is any additional service given to you? No. It's just that you are a member, so ultimately you are selling the goods only at a discount. Sale of goods only at a discount. Why discount? Because you are a member, that's all. What about this one, bicycle? You will buy a, let's say, phone, for example, on EMI basis. iPhone you buy on EMI. One, it happened to my friend, he bought an iPhone on EMI, some 15,000 per month EMI. First day only when he was going, it tripped and fell. And it actually that you know, phone fell in Charendi. True story. Gone. Then he bought that old Nokia phone. He didn't have money. 3,000 rupees Nokia phone he bought. And he still was paying 15,000 rupees per month EMI. Nothing can be done, guys. Ownership is transferred at the beginning itself to buy a phone. Correct? Insurance, by the time he could get everything, gone. He bought the phone image, this one I am talking about 10 years ago, that iPhone first one had come, no? now it is 14, right? That iPhone generation second or third was coming at that time. That time he had bought that. Yes. Then, what about this installment scheme if I buy, higher purchase scheme? Here you see, 
dealer in bicycle gives a Hercules bicycle to a customer on the terms that 100 should be paid by him then and there and balance 375 and 5 equal monthly installments. We don't know whether it is a sale or a higher purchase system. Depends. That iPhone example was an outright sale. That's that the payment is deferred, EMI. So, in this question, we have to see when the ownership is transferred. If the ownership is transferred immediately, then it's sale. In a higher purchase system, when is the ownership transferred? Only on the payment of the last installment. Only on the payment of the last installment it is transferred. So, in this case, last installment or first installment, we don't know. If it is payment of the last installment, then it is not sale, it is higher purchase. Under higher purchase, can the vendor come and take away the goods whenever he wants? Yes. But in a sale, can I come and take over the goods? No. So, in this question, we have to see the time when the ownership will be returned back to you or ownership is transferred to you, sorry. If it is transferred immediately, then it is different. Transferred later, then also it is different. Okay. So, moving on. Let us just finish. So, the second chapter. First chapter is done, guys. Very simple. Sub chapter is over. Now, other things becomes easy. So, next one, conditions and warranties, conditions and warranty. So, what is this guys, condition and warranty. Condition is a stipulation, stipulation means a term, terms and conditions. Condition is a term that you have inserted in the contract which is the most essential part of a contract. Whereas, warranty is a stipulation which is collateral, collateral means secondary. Collateral means secondary. So, condition is a stipulation essential to the main purpose of the contract. Warranty is a stipulation collateral to the main purpose of the contract. You want some slippers, same kind of slippers, different different colors are there. You will call up the shop and say, sir, I want size number 9. You give me size number 9. They will tell what about color. So, I like any color. I have seen all the colors. Anything you send me, sir, whatever 9 is available, you send me. He will send you red color chappal. You will call him and say, I want black. Can you cancel the contract? No. Because when you spoke to him, you said, I don't care about the color. So, now the question is, when you try to fit into it and if it's not, uh, you know, fitting properly, can you exchange it? Yes. On the other hand, if you have specifically told that I want red color slippers only and he sends you some random slippers, then can you cancel it? Yes, that's the, that's all. Condition is what? The most important thing that you asked for in the contract is called condition. In Amazon, when you buy, you would have seen, let's say you want to buy some uh, uh, clips to hang the clothes. Will you care about the color? No. Amazon seller only will say, color will colors may vary. But you will buy a specific design of a clip. Those design will come in dirty fluorescent green color. Can you return it? No, because when you are buying only, you did not even care about the color. But if some of those things are not working properly, then can you cancel the contract? Yes, because you said, I want working condition clips. Obviously, when you buy, you will see. What about clothes? When you buy clothes online, are they telling that it will fit you properly? No. That is why all the cloth manufacturing companies will give you either refund option or exchange option. It's fitting properly, but slightly I want the next size, so you can exchange it, correct? So, what is a condition? Condition is the main term of the contract, it is essential to the main purpose of the contract. This will happen especially when you uh, go and rely on somebody to do it, essential to the main purpose of the contract. You want to paint this room. He will go to a you know paint shop and say, sir, I want to paint. Then he will ask you questions. What is it? Is it in the basement or is it on top? And how much is the sunlight? Will sunlight ever come? It all depends. Sir. The shade will you know, emphasize more if you use this paint. He will sell you a paint which is not suitable for painting at all. 
can you go and sue him yes because you relied on him saying that asking that this is what i want i don't know i don't have knowledge i am asking you correct so if you go to a restaurant and say sir i have peanut allergy i cannot eat peanuts please do not add peanuts then if the chef makes you something without with the add by adding peanuts can you sue the hotel yes because the main condition of your order was no peanuts but if you don't tell him that you have a peanut problem and then you actually he makes you something which has peanuts and then you have an allergic reaction can you sue him no so whatever you are entering into a contract the essential part if you communicate and that essential part he does not give you can cancel the contract and also sue for damages you can get the money refund and you can cancel the contract also on the other hand if you buy something like for example if you buy a phone etc my stupid phone battery drain one plus horrible it is so keep battery keeps on draining so i went and asked so for one plus all phones 20 days there will be replacement after 20 days it will only be what warranty warranty means what guys if anything is wrong they will replace that particular part phone and all you cannot give back they will replace that particular part you cannot cancel the contract and say i don't want the phone give me refund no you used it already for so many months that is called warranty in warranty there will only be what exchange and replacement of parts so warranty is what you can only claim damages in case of breach or you can repudiate also repudiate means what cancel the contract the aggrieved party can repudiate the contract means what can cancel in this case what a great party can only claim damages in case of breach in one case you can repudiate cancel the contract in the other case you can only claim the damages in case of breach here a condition is a stipulation which is essential to the main purpose of the contract warranty is a stipulation which is collateral to the main purpose of the contract collateral means side by side can you consider if i want the main part for example i have asked i want red color shoes only or let's say a phone you will go and tell i want this 32 gb this this all these specifications you will give i want gray only that fellow will send you some green color you will go back and say i don't want this cancel so can he cancel the contract yes should he give you the money back yes but he convinces you he'll say sir color may be green but anyway you will put one back cover nobody will see this phone is better sir it's another newer version your wish i can give you the money back but i feel you should buy this go ahead with this it will really be nice then in that case and you accept it and then he says sir if there's any problem let me know i'll exchange this product but it's a better version just that color they have released stupid color but it's a it is more upgraded version we have used this it is fast moving please buy this if you want to but if you don't want it's okay sir right now i'll give you the whatever you asked for that's not my problem but i'm advising you please go for it now tell me can you agree to that if you want to yes so you see breach of condition may be treated as what breach of warranty what are you doing now sir i don't want the money back okay i will take this and in case any problem happens you can exchange this later no problem exchange means you know i'll give you one more product similar product but breach of warranty cannot be treated as breach of condition breach of warranty cannot be treated as breach of condition is what they say so condition and warranty are import so we have two things implied condition and implied warranty implied condition means what these are the things sale by title goods by description quality or fitness merchantable quality sale by sample when i am selling certain goods are you entitled to assume that i am the owner of the goods yes i am selling this phone you are entitled to assume that i am the owner of the goods it's not some stolen good so sale of goods act protects the innocent buyer sale of goods act says when a seller is selling the goods to you you are entitled to assume that the goods are 
his that is goods are mine i own the goods and i'm selling you the goods what if i have sold you some fake goods who will be liable i will be liable for breach of implied condition as to title breach means violation so see first case here niblet limited versus no need of name and all a bought 3000 tins of condensed milk from usa the tins were labeled in such a way as to infringe nestle's trademark infringe means they were actually copying nestle's trademark as a result they were detained by customs authorities to get the clearance certificate you had to remove the labels and all that and sell the tins at a loss held the seller the main guy who sold the tins to you he is liable for what breach of condition as to title liable for what breach of condition as to title this is what breach of condition as to title breach of condition as to title of the goods liable for what breach of condition as to title of the goods when i bought the tins from you i am entitled to assume that you are the owner you have actually copied nestle tins the entire logo etc because of which i had to remove the label and sell the goods at a loss so you have sold it to me some fake products hence i am suing you for breach of condition as to title have you gone to some uh, ice cream store yes you would have had some sample correct ice cream sample you would have had so you will say give me that give me this and eventually you will buy one cone whatever you will taste chocolate vanilla and all that let's say you like chocolate so you'll ask him belgian chocolate please give me 500 ml i'll take it family pack when you go home and open vanilla is given can you cancel the contract yes because this is again breach of condition as to sample sample is not matching the final goods sometimes good good sale of goods by description also will be there sale of goods by description this happens especially in five star hotels correct five star hotels when you go they'll have some fancy description correct a crispy fried savory with a filling of potato and uh, you know what do you say a dollop of turmeric sauce means samosa right correct fluffy rice cake with lentil vegetables uh, you know stew and a hint of semolina with a pinch of salt idli sambar right so they will write in such a way that you will buy everything correct crispy pancakes with a dollop of butter and an amalgam of potato stew masala dosa you are seeing that only your blood will boil 500 rupees it will be either oh what is this crispy rice cake it seems dosa will come right but either way if it is not matching the description generally the description will say that uh, you know an assortment of dry fruits correct with a generous helping of vanilla ice cream this much vanilla ice cream like one cashew nut is there on top i'll come where is the generous amount of dry fruits one cashew nut you have put there so yes can you sue them if it's not matching the description yes if you go to this uh, what is a mcd and all those things you will see nice nice food which is displayed that real thing that comes looks like shit true can you sue them no next time you please observe there will be one star it says the real product may vary from the picture they are giving a disclaimer that's why you cannot sue them correct right? because that whatever they take pictures now it's all fake the pictures that they take is using not even edible items there are videos if you see the uh, you know advertisement versus reality you check you will see the difference easily so you cannot sue them but just in case you want to have some brownie with ice cream in the description in the picture two brownies are there and ice cream is there whatever came to you doesn't look like that but two brownies are not there only one brownie is there can you sue them yes that you can sue because it's not matching the description description says two brownies with vanilla ice cream and chocolate sauce nothing is there in that whatever you are given yes you can sue them so it should match the goods by description also sample sometimes both will be there sample and description ibaco have you gone to ibaco in ibaco they would have given description of each ice cream next time you observe and you can take sample also 
both should match you know actually by that particular thing it should match for sure right otherwise gone then quality or fitness means what basically whatever you buy should be fit for usage which means they cannot give you any expired items they cannot give you anything which is stale it should be fit for use if it is not fit for use can you sue them yes fit for use is what generally the quality is good but it has become bad now because of various reasons merchantable quality means the quality used only is gone like for example cricket bat you want to buy they have used some normal plywood can you use normal plywood for cricket bat no that is called breach of condition as to merchantable quality whereas quality or fitness is it is actually nice but it has gone stale like basically you have ordered something which is good but now it has gone it has you know it has uh, something some defect is there in that you have bought a you know a paper a4 quality excellent paper but you open it termites have eaten it no nothing can be done is it fit for usage no but merchantable quality means what the quality used only is not there the ordered milk shake milk only is not there in that water in the shops you'll get no yes adulterated completely only water so that is called what dominos if you order that uh, cheap pizza 100 rupees and all they will not add cheese they will add mayonnaise which is very bad for health they will call it cheese pizza but inside only mayonnaise is there mayonnaise is very very bad for health one tablespoon of mayonnaise is 300 calories one one spoon that's it cheese is at least healthy cheese is milk this is some horrible thing that is mayonnaise so that's what but it's 100 rupees cheaper no so when you go and have pizza there that's what happens but it is clearly mentioned there that whatever picture is shown will not be the final product so you cannot do anything about it and they'll not describe also if you see they'll just say che pizza with so and so items so merchantable quality means what quality which is so bad that it actually cannot be used for production whereas quality or fitness is whatever you have used is good but it has become bad now because of whatever reason when it comes to food food items which is not good quality in the sense it has gone stale you should for food items you should change the wordings to what breach of condition as to wholesomeness when they ask you about food better to write rather than writing breach of condition as to quality what will you write breach of condition as to wholesomeness breach of condition as to wholesomeness is what you will write that's the point you see some cases one or two you will see so let's say you will clear ca foundation and uh, you want to give sweets assumption you will want to give sweets to all the faculty so you will go to krishna sweets and say give me a uh, four packets of 250 grams each because i have to give it to four different people four packets of 250 grams each that fellow will give you one four packets of 250 grams is what 1 kg he will give you 1 kg in one box can you cancel the contract yes why it's not matching the description you have clearly mentioned 4 kg of 250 grams he is telling sir 1 kg is there i said no i don't want 1 kg i want 1 kg split into 4 boxes i was very clear about it you did not give cancel then cancel the full contract that case is this only see moor was and company was as lander name not needed check same whatever i told similar case i asked for 300 tins in 10 boxes each box should contain 30 tins what did you give each box had 24 tins i can cancel it instead of 10 tins you gave some 15 15 boxes but each one had how many 24 and i cancel yes not matching the description 
A purchased a hot water bottle from a chemist. The bottle burst and injured his wife. So what happens? This is what? Breach of condition as to quality or fitness. I have asked you for a bottle and you have given me a bottle which unfortunately you should have seen. There are some bubbles in that bottle that chemist would have seen that this is not proper. Quality is good only but it has gone bad. Thus chemist was liable or not liable? Liable. G purchased a tweed coat which caused dermatitis, in inflammation of the skin due to her unusually sensitive skin. You have gone and asked for bail puri. You will add peanut in that bail puri, obviously. You will eat that bail puri, then suddenly attack. Ambulance. Then you will go to hospital. Correct? Now, can you sue the bail puri fellow? No. Dila, sir. Everybody will not have allergy. We will add this. If you don't want to tell me, no, you should have told me. If you told me and then I added, then you sue me. Not everybody has any allergy towards anything here. You should have told me, don't add peanuts. You will go and have sandwich. Sir, don't put, uh, you know, uh, bread, if you tell. Yes. Don't put potato, if you tell, that's a different thing. Don't put bread means he will slap you. Sir, sandwich, don't put bread, don't put cheese, don't put uh, cheese, this thing, alu, don't put onion, don't put anything. He will put your face in that griller and, you know, close it. Correct? Yes. So, if you tell don't put alu, don't put potato and then he puts, definitely you can return it. 100% because it's breach of condition. Breach of condition. 100% you can tell. If you want to subway. You go to Subway, in Subway sandwich, they will ask you what you want. You will tell all vegetables. Then you will tell why you added onion, why you added this thing, why you added this. Sir, sir, you only told no all, all vegetables. That's why they ask you every time, what do you want, sir? Some people don't like jalapeno, some people don't like onion. And then they will ask you what sauce you want also. Otherwise, they will put whatever sauce they want, actually. So, you cannot sue them in those cases. Let's say you don't like honey mustard, mustard you would be allergic. You will clearly mention no honey mustard. If they add that, you can sue them. Otherwise, no. So, if you see, G purchased a tweed coat, caused a dermatitis due to her unusually sensitive skin. Held the seller was not liable. What can I do if your skin is sensitive? You should have told me, no. Everybody doesn't have, nobody has a problem with this particular material. If you have a problem, you should have told me. So, then you have the audacity to sue me. Not possible. So, seller was not liable. See the next one. P, P sold a plastic catapult. What is catapult? You would have seen, no, that instrument. I will put one stone there and now, that material of that catapult only was very, very bad material. It was not, you know, used, it cannot, could not have been used for that catapult only. Is it quality or fitness or merchantable quality? Merchantable quality. So, here they say, in fact, the boy used it, the boy was blinded in one eye. That stone, instead of going front, it went and hit his eye. Reverse. Correct? So, what happened? Hence, the hence P was what? Liable. As catapult was not of merchantable quality, it's not that they used good material, later it became bad. Material itself is bad. You cannot use it only for that catapult. Right? These are all the implied conditions. Very simple. Next, implied warranty. Similarly, implied warranty also will be there. Implied warranty as to undisturbed possession. If I have bought a second-hand car, it is my understanding that the buyer will say, Boss, from today, I am the owner of the car. I will enjoy the possession. Nobody else should come and say, it's my car. Warranty as to non-existence of encumbrance. If I bought the car from you, tomorrow bank should not come and tell, Sir, that fellow had taken a loan on this car. Encumbrance means what? Any, what do you say, right on the asset, right over the asset by somebody else. Somebody else, does he have a right on that asset? Car is yours only, but you have taken a loan on the car. 
and now you have silently sold the car to me. When I buy in good faith, point number one, nobody should come and tell car is mine. Because car is actually mine, I have bought it. Nobody else should come and say car is that fellow's car now. That is first one, undisturbed possession. Second one is what? Encumbrance. Bank should not come and tell, sir, that fellow only is the owner, I agree, but he has taken a loan on this car. When you take a loan on the car, it's called generally hypothecation. Will you keep the car in the banker's house? No. The car will be kept with you only. You can use the car. But just that, there will be just a car loan, guys. Car loan, if you take, every time you start the car, you have to call the bank manager, sir, can I go? No. You can use the car. But who has control over the car till you pay the loan? Bank. So you have created some fake documents and sold off the car already. Bank will come to you and say, sir, car is that fellow's only, sir, but loan is there. Do you have a right to ensure that, you know, the there is no encumbrance? Yes. Means you have a right to assume that nobody else has a right over that car when you are buying. This is for the buyer. When you see anything, uh, especially a deodorant, it would have been, have you seen that? Highly inflammable. Do not bring near fire. Now, if you start bringing it near fire and do certain things, who is liable? You. If it is written there very clearly, you cannot do those things. But if it is not written, every product they would have written, check. Highly inflammable or it is highly irritable, please do not bring it in contact with children. Some cream, etc. that you wear, do not bring in touch with the children below so many years or, or even normal cream also do not apply on the eye. Correct? All those things. You should disclose. Then there is one concept called caveat emptor. What is that? Let the buyer beware. The buyer will check the defects which are easily seen from the naked eye. Then he will be Buyer only will be liable. Let the buyer beware. If you are going and buying a toy, if the toy is broken, can you buy? No. It is your duty to check. If they give you some goods which are expired, it is your duty to check. Let the buyer beware. It happened with me recently. One of my friends is pregnant. She likes ice cream. But unfortunately, she is now, what do you say, diabetic. The pregnancy comes, uh, during pregnancy, diabetes will happen sometimes. So, she asked for ice cream. So, I ordered some ice cream from somewhere directly to her house. No sugar ice cream. Then, thankfully, her husband messaged me with the pictures. All of them are expired. The ice cream, that stupid fellow, I sent all expired ice creams. Expired 10 days ago. Now, I didn't check because that from that fellow directly it went to her house. Now tell me, whose mistake is it? Seller or buyer? Buyer. Because buyer, when he, of course, when you sell, you should sell the goods which are of good quality. Understandable. Quality or fitness is not there. But when you are buying the goods, who should see the manufacturing date, expiry date? Buyer. Ah, so that's what I, when, that's what, when a platform and you order when it opens, Shouldn't, it, shouldn't you check? Yes, I should check. Whenever you order a some food, don't you think so? You should check the food. Yes. Pizza you order, he will give one chapati, full mixed. Ragi mudde he will give you. Pizza mudde. It has happened many times to me also, where that fellow has maybe has an accident or something and he has given, when you open the pizza, it has become one mudde. Immediately should you complain? Yes. Will you get a refund? Yes. But in this case, what had happened? That fellow had kept it in the fridge, some five days over. Then he opened it, expired. It recently happened. I sent a mail to Sui. What? Yes, site may they will have, but they should send. No, the person who is sending, you should send me a correcting. But he is not responsible. I am responsible. I should check. That's the beauty of KV attempt. On the site, you will not see anything. No, on the site, what will they give? Ice cream for sale. You will buy the ice cream. On the site, will you see the... Nothing will be there. On the site, ice cream will be there. That's it. 
So in the site you cannot see the manufacturing. The same item we will not send. On the site only picture they will have given. That is hundred percent example of KV attempter. When the day they delivered, it is my duty to check whether everything is fine. Recently only I happened no, on Flipkart fellow. One fellow ordered one phone, uh, laptop. What came inside? Soap to cry and wash his face. Correct? Right? Soap came. Can you sue Flipkart? No. Flipkart said OTP also you gave. OTP me method is what? OTP is to check the goods and then give OTP. You never checked. We blindly give OTP like fools. You should never give. OTP is for what? Open the item in front of that fellow. Take a video. Open the item. He only should open. Let him open. And check everything. Then give OTP. So in that, that father gave OTP. Son was in the office. Father called the son. Laptop has come. So father, son gave the OTP. Father collected. Opened in the evening. Detergent soap. He sold, he sold Flipkart. Flipkart said, nothing doing. I am sorry. They are right. KV Temptar. Let the buyer beware. So KV Temptar is let the buyer beware. It happened recently only. Flipkart thing. Detergent came. Let me show you. I think I have it here. One second. It's not a video though. It's a picture. Let me just check. One second. Not here. No, this only. See, Gadi soap. You can see the time, cry and wash his face. Though it's actually for clothes, you can wash his face also with this. Man orders laptop during Flipkart's big billion day, receives soap. Nothing can be done. Policy is very simple. You should follow. Let the buyer beware. Same in this uh, ice cream example. Same. Nothing can be done. I, that fellow saw actually my mistake also i should have asked him to see i just got the, he just the delivery happened and he actually kept it in the fridge why will he see he also said, okay maybe this fellow has ordered ice cream he kept it in the fridge five days later he told me then i contacted swiggy he said what were you doing for five days valid question 100 percent valid question so now the only thing is gone money gone but i will never order from that place again obviously they will they have lost a customer but they have sold what old goods Simple. That's the beauty of let the buyer beware. You should see what is on the outside. Now the ice cream was, uh, what do you say, not of good quality. There were some germs inside. Then can you can you say, give you a tempter? No. Correct. I ate the ice cream, diabetes increased. I had to be rushed to the hospital. There they did a testing of the ice cream. It had germs inside. Can you... If I sue, can that seller say, sir, let the buyer beware. Before eating the ice cream, should have done one testing on it. No. KV attempter is only the latent defects. Latent means easily seen. Means obviously your manufacturing date, expiry date, all that you need to check. You need to check all that. Otherwise, you are liable. Yes. Seller is not bound to disclose the defects in the goods. It is the duty of the buyer to satisfy himself before buying the goods. But, if I don't know what i don't have knowledge about the good then i go and ask the seller himself i will go to one uh, pharmacist and say sir lot of headache sir please give me one tablet he will give one tablet i will take the tablet lose motion can i sue the pharmacist yes why because i relied on you can you tell kv attempter no i asked for par paracetamol he gave me you know lose motion tablet laxative so can i sue him yes because i have made known to the seller the purpose of purchase so solve this question what do you think will kv attempter apply or the seller will be liable check seller or buyer go through this question it is there in page number six
on sir does not apply what does not apply may attempt or does not apply uh you think so reverse is the answer answer what do you think yeah for the purpose of making uniform he bought some cloth cloth the cloth did he tell the seller did not disclose the seller you wanted to have uniform by uniform you went to shamiana cloth shop and ordered uniform for everyone is it you didn't even tell him why you just went and bought shamiana material correct not possible same thing here the cloth was found unfit however there was evidence that the cloth was fit for caps boots carriage lining etc advise banshi bhaiya whether he is entitled to have any remedy no remedy kv attempt will apply but if he had told that fellow that i wanted for uniform and he had given some uh, jacket material then you can sue him for sure kv attempt will not apply in these cases purpose is made known to the seller yes if i told him then kv attempt will not apply goods purchased under the patent or the brand name of course when you buy a sony product or entitled to assume that it is a good product you go and buy uh, by description you cannot say kv attempt like if i buy by sample if i taste chocolate and say give me that chocolate fine and amel if you give me vanilla you cannot say kv attempt because i have already tasted and uh, chosen it by sample all these things this fifth sixth point you will understand on your own when you see indian contract act i have explained it in depth there you can check it so what about uh, you know fake brands like for example if i go and buy if i go and buy biluri can i sue bisleri no not possible correct if i go and buy instead of puma coma correct all that happens in india guys it is there can you sue no obviously no why will you sue are you mad nobody will if i go and buy cool gatte can i sue colgate definitely not 100% no what about daily milk or dairy milk daily milk see all copy in india we are awesome then fair my love is fair and lovely for my for and love clever face all that is there in india guys yeah this is okay this is valid why if i buy nilgiri orthodox which means it should be from the nilgiri area this is called geographical identification tag correct ambur biryani yes which means it is from that area and in assam ambur biryani doesn't have a gi tag but some these have gi tag the teas and coffees etc have the gi tag that when i buy from that like even recently kashmir uh, saffron got the gi tag So if I buy some Kashmir saffron and you say, send it from some other place, I can show you, obviously, because it's a GI tag indicated. Ah, uh, Nike has become hike with some extra thing here. Hike. Then what? Johnny Walker is Johnny Worker, right? And black label is Labial, and all this happens only in our country, guys. Uh, Kashmir Valley, I told you, got the GI tag. Burger King, macha one different will do. King Burger, everything is the same. Reverse, King Burger. Ah, uh, what did you eat today? Legs, P one, chips, legs for lace, legs. Ah, uh, you know Lacoste is a brand, T-shirt brand. It is low cost. This is what see Starbucks, Satar Bucks. Satar Bucks Cafe is actually there in Pakistan. I'm not joking. Satar Bucks, Panasonic, Panasonic, and this is the best, guys. Eating mom sukma, this has become fat also. All right? Eating mom supito, Sunday special. That leopard has become fat also. This is there in uh, national market. I saw Puma has become what Upma. and they are selling one fat leopard and jump also poor thing yes 
So all that happens only in India. Now, if I buy all this, I cannot say KVI tempter. It's your stupidity. You should see all these things. No, yes. Similarly, if you make any unilateral mistake, you cannot say that it is what do you say, KVI tempter. You walk into a what do you say, a artificial jewelry store. It is written there very clearly, artificial jewelry. You will go and think it is real jewelry. Whose stupidity it is? Yours. That fellow will see Bakra has come. He has no, he doesn't know that it is uh, artificial. He will sell it at 10 times. He will sell 10,000 rupees. He will sell it at 1 lakh. He will buy and come. Can you sue them? No. Why? Give your tempter. But if you enter into a real jewelry store and then he sells you artificial, then yes, you can sue. So ultimately, the property when it is passed on to you, property means ownership. It means passing of ownership. When ownership is transferred to you, what is transferred to you? Risk also will be transferred. Risks and rewards will be transferred to you when the ownership is also transferred. So next day I will ask in the exam, at what point of time will the property be transferred? At what point of time will the ownership be transferred in these kind of goods? In unascertained goods, when will it happen? In ascertained goods, when will it happen? Sale on approval basis, when will it happen? This can be another type of question asked. If I sell goods to you on approval basis, what is sale on approval? I'll send, send you some goods. You will have to approve within your consignment. You will have to approve within one week and then send it back. If you approve, then yes. Now, when is the ownership transfer to you? Very simple. I will tell, sir, please use the goods and check the goods for one week. Keep it with you. After one week also, if you don't like, you can return back to me. No problem. But when is the ownership transfer to you? First one, after one week, obviously. Second one, second day only, you will send me a check. Second day only, you will transfer the money to me. Then, has ownership been transferred? Yes. So, first one, you see, adopting the transaction means sending you the money. Second, does not signify approval beyond reasonable time. My example, seven days. First one on approval by the buyer. He will automatically send me a mail saying that, yes, approved. He will not send me a mail, but he will send me the money. That is what? Deemed approval, no? Adopting the transaction. Why will you send me the money if you don't approve? Unascertained goods means what? Your third year validatory function is over, huh? Your college only, MLAC. Is, is the validatory function over? Okay, who is from MLAC here? Okay, validatory function is over or not? The third year people who are leaving. It's done. It's done already. No. Okay. So, this, uh, what was I saying? Ah, ascertained goods. A sale and approval is done. Who is from MLAC here in this group? How many of you have come? One, two, three. Okay, cool. So, sale on approval is what? On approval by the buyer. Sale on approval basis is on approval by the buyer. So, buyer, these three things will come. These three things will come. What are unascertained goods then? Unascertained goods. You don't know. Like, for example, you want to buy a TV. You have no clue which TV to buy. The moment you enter into the entire, you know, uh, chroma or whatever it is, you want to buy a TV, you have a budget fixed. Let's say 40,000 rupees, your budget is fixed. You don't know which one to buy. When will the ownership be transferred to you? First one, when the goods are ascertained. Means what? You will now choose a model. Sony, whatever the exact model you will choose. Then you will tell, sir, please keep this aside. What is, how much should I give you? for you to block this piece for me. He will say, sir, give me 10,000 rupees. Okay, 10,000 take. This is mine. Do not touch it. Then it is called ownership has been transferred. Appropriation of the goods unconditionally. Appropriation means setting aside of the goods unconditionally. Unconditionally means what? Without any condition attached. Means what? Tomorrow can you take the goods and give it to somebody else? No. What is unconditional appropriation? Goods cannot be given to anybody else. One is goods are ascertained. Second is appropriation of goods unconditionally. This is the point of time when the ownership is transferred. Third one, 
ascertained goods means what specific goods to exactly know when the which biscuit to buy hide and seek biscuit when will the ownership of hide and seek be transferred to you and the contract is made obviously you will go you will pay 10 rupees you will get the biscuit at the time when the contract is made the biscuit is in deliverable state price also has been determined both are done you pay the money the contract is made you will get the biscuit deliverable state price not determined means what deliverable state price not determined it's in a deliverable state and price has not been determined means what car not not car car price will be determined generally unless there is some car which they have not yet announced the date and you already blocked it it's a different thing but that will be a refundable amount this is generally your auction sale guys auction in auction it is right there virat kohli's bat auction i'm auctioning right price has not been determined you decide the price so you will start bidding and finally when the highest bidder will get price has been determined that time the determination of the price yes these artists and all will generally sell their art products and when you see some artists will give their amount 10000 15000 and all that some artists will say price on request some like this like this some five things items they would have drawn like this they only should understand what it is abstract art so then i mean with all due respect i don't understand abstract art they would have written something they would have drawn something like this this will be uh, they'll say price on request you will see something in that and you will start crying one will be your ex girlfriend in your abstract art vision i'm saying so you like that drawing a lot you will go and say i want this painting at any cost request price on request you'll say 1 crore okay all, all art pieces sell like that only 20 lakhs 30 lakhs 40 lakhs like that yes price when it's determined transferred non deliverable state means what yes this is exactly what your uh, bike etc 6 months waiting 8 months waiting is it in deliverable state as of today no when will you get, get it after completion of the process to make it deliverable after the completion of the entire process to make it deliverable 3 days 4 days 3 months 4 months whatever it is that's it that is called this part when it will the goods be transferred to you passing of risk as i told you unless otherwise agreed the goods will remain at the seller's risk until the dash is transferred property property is transferred there is one rule of law in sale of goods act you cannot transfer to somebody what you don't have am i the owner no can i transfer better ownership to you no that rule is called this one nemo dat quod non habet nemo dat quod non habet means you cannot transfer to somebody what you don't have do you have the ownership no can you transfer better ownership no basically a non owner cannot transfer ownership if you have stolen some goods can you transfer better ownership no but there are exceptions there is chor bazar in bangalore you can go and buy all items there that's all stolen items still you are you will become the owner how exception you see exception these are all the exceptions in that this exception no you will understand in indian contract act lake versus simmons philip versus brooks in these two case laws 100% you will understand in the indian contract act video go to mistake correct mistake misrepresentation and mistake and all that in that mistake we have explained this indian contract act in these cases best part is even though you are a non owner even though you are a non owner you can still transfer better ownership even though you are a non owner even though you are a non owner you can transfer better ownership means what you are not at all the owner but still can you transfer better ownership yes
first one mercantile agent mercantile agent let's say you have a helmet store and there's one yellow color helmet that you have which your girlfriend has gifted now that girlfriend has become ex girlfriend you will tell that your survey your worker do not touch that girl not girlfriend helmet right do not touch that helmet that helmet is mine don't sell it off by mistake also that fellow will listen and he'll forget about it right and when somebody else comes and he wants that helmet he does he have an authority to sell anybody anything in that yes he has an authority to sell any helmet does the buyer is he an innocent buyer yes he likes that helmet he wants that helmet this fellow sells it off is the mercantile agent an owner or non owner non owner but can he transfer a better ownership to the buyer yes even though he did not know i mean he knew that he did not have to sell that by mistake he sold it and the is does he have a right to sell any of the goods in the shop yes innocent buyer will get a good title that is called mercantile agent can a mercantile agent who's a non owner transfer better ownership yes he can transfer better ownership joint owner me and you have jointly owned this mobile one buyer comes he wants to buy the mobile i alone will sell the mobile to him and i'll tell him don't worry i already have the consent of the other joint owner no problem so can a part owner transfer better ownership to the innocent purchaser yes possible joint owner also can do it joint owner can do it estoppel is similar to partnership act you are not an owner but you are telling everybody you are the owner or the real owner is telling that you are the owner and you are keeping quiet correct estoppel today you have sold the goods which do not belong to you will that other person get a good title yes 100% yes you have a car which belongs to your friend friend tells this car is not mine this car is this fellow's only you are keeping quiet so the entire world unfortunately they think car belongs to you can you sell the car tomorrow yes and will that person get a good title who purchased it innocently 100% yes that is called estoppel then liquidator you have become official chaprasi so the insol the what is a court has given you a certificate chaprasi fellow next 4 years so you cannot touch your own assets who will touch liquidator liquidator will touch your assets liquidator is appointed by whom court liquidator is an owner of the goods or non owner non owner he will take away your assets and sell it off to somebody will that purchaser get good title yes exception to the rule that's why then this is pony pledge you will you want some loan you will go to manapuram gold loan company you will give your entire pledge your what gold is pledge a bailment or is bailment a pledge is pledge a bailment or is bailment a pledge which is a wider term pledge or bailment bailment is a wider term because in bailment you can give it for free also hayabusa example did you take any money to give the bike no or you can give it for money also for example you can rent a scooter in goa correct you are renting a scooter in goa yes that is called you know one more type of bailment so bailment can be what for free or not for free both my question is you now have uh, what do you say Uh, this thing pledge on the other hand is a type of bailment where you are given the gold you are transferring ownership or possession only possession to whom to the gold loan company they will give you the money you will use the money you have to return the return the money only then they will return the gold let's say you do not repay the money what can that fellow do sell is he an owner no but can he get, give good, better ownership yes definitely you can give better ownership so the person who makes the pledge you is called pledger other person is called pledge the manapuram gold loan company is the pledge non owner of gold but can they transfer better ownership yes 
finder of goods you are walking on the road and you find someone's kidney means iphone you will take the kidney in your hands correct it's all destroyed fully you will go and sell your pancreas and get it rectified so you will make it what a nice you know you will get a science student no all these things keep coming so what you will get the iphone ready fully now you will try to find the owner owner is not there can you sell that goods if you want to yes ideally you should not i mean will you get a, give a good title to the other person yes there are many shops where lost and found shops they are called lost and found so you can actually go purchase from that nobody no one has come to claim the ownership so you can sell it off will you get a good title yes 100% yes finder of lost goods will get a good title someone has wrongly delivered a what do you say an entire carton of mangoes in front of your house you wait for one full day two days you wait nobody comes and claims under sale of goods act can you sell off the entire carton of mango and keep the money if you want yes and under contract act should you return the money to the owner whenever you find the owner yes under sale of goods act you are not the owner of the mangoes can you transfer better ownership of the mangoes to somebody yes that is called finder of goods unpaid seller is what we will see now unpaid seller is what we will see all these cases are there only all these are very simple guys there are nothing great here for example some i'll tell the gist of the story here you ordered basmati rice they gave half basmati rice and one other kg separately sona masuri rice wrong wrong quantity they sent can you return the goods yes you can retain the basmati rice one packet and you can send away the other goods no problem what if you ask for 100 five star chocolates they mixed five star and perk and sent you you can either choose to take everything or you can cancel everything also if you want saying that it's not matching the description what if if they mixed basmati rice and sona masuri rice together and sent you you will do this matching long shot long shot long shot no when an inferior quality is mixed with superior quality obviously the contract is void 100% it is not matching anything it is void but when you are mixing the goods which are separable you can either separate it and take only the one that you chose or you can reject the entire thing that's the gist of the story then one more thing you have ordered some book from some random store not amazon let's say the book is delivered already to the railway uh, to the courier company courier company doesn't deliver the book to you who's liable seller courier agency or you some random company you ordered the book from they have sent the book already you they have, you, they have sent you the tracking id also which means book has been given to the courier agency courier agency has misplaced it and then it has reached it has not reached you you will sue the seller or the courier agency who is liable courier agency seller what is the most unlikely answer you what is the answer you yes as per sale of goods act when the contract is silent delivery to the courier agency is deemed to be delivery to the buyer deadly you see delivery to the courier agency carrier is deemed to be delivery to the buyer so if amazon says package has been shipped it means what you are the owner already but guys that's why you should read the contract in the co if you if any contract is like that at the moment we ship it you are the owner will you ever buy online no in every contract this dialogue will be there what subject to the terms of the contract contract only will add saying that no no if i deliver to the what you say uh, courier agency it is not sale i will have to deliver to you personally you please read every contract did you ever read any online contract no scroll down scroll down scroll down agree tick submit we do that no that's the problem some random company when you are buying you should read the terms and conditions which we will not read gone so that is what it is next deterioration during transit deterioration means quality is reducing 
I wanted apples from Srinagar. So when I go, went to Kashmir, I said, Srinagar apples, you please uh, transfer to uh, Bangalore. They said, sir, it may delay because there may be a lot of uh, problems. Well, transit, it may cause problems. It said, no problem, send it. When I, it came home, black apples came, black color. And inside, it became from uh, a vegetarian thing, non-vegetarian apples. Worms and all are coming out. Can I sue the seller? No. Because liability shall fall on the buyer always. If there is a deterioration in the transit. That's all. Last part. Very, very easy. Unpaid seller. If 10,000 rupees I am selling. Over 10 minutes. 10,000 rupees I am selling. And you have paid 9999. One rupee I have not paid. Am I an unpaid seller? I am a seller. I am selling goods at 10,000. You have paid me 9999. One rupee I have not paid. Am I an unpaid seller? 100% yes. Unpaid seller is a person with whom whole of the price has not been paid. Means 10,000 out of 10,000 has to be paid. Even if 9999 is paid, which means you are an unpaid, I am an unpaid seller. Or you have given me 10,000 check. I put it in the bank. What has happened? Bounce. There is no money in your account. So it has bounced. Dishonor. I am an unpaid seller. So I will give you a chart which will have everything. It will be, become easy only. So guys. Three scenarios. Check this. One seller. The goods are in the go down. Scenario number one. Scenario number two, goods are in transit. To whom? To the buyer. Third one, goods has reached the buyer. In which case do I have control over the goods? I am the seller. In which case do I have control over the goods? Just one or one and two or one, two, three? One and two. One, I have control over the goods. Two, it's already in transit. I can tell the lorry fellow, hey, turn around and come down. That second, I can tell. Third, when it's reached the buyer already, no choice. So, in which case can I retain the goods? And in which case I cannot retain the goods? In one and two, definitely I can retain the goods. In third, I cannot retain the goods. Common sense. Which means in third case, the only option available to me is what? Suing the buyer. In the third case, I can only sue the buyer. I cannot touch the goods. In the first and second case, I can play with the goods. And goods only have not reached you. I have control over the goods, no? So, there are two rights of an unpaid seller. One right is what? That, that is a right against the goods. Second right is right against the buyer. Right against the goods is called in Latin just in rem. Rem means good. Rum and all don't write. Just in rem. Just means justice. In rem. Just means justice or right. Right against the goods is called one and two example. This one just in personam. Sonam and all don't write your girlfriend's name. Just in personam. Correct? Just in personam. Personam means what? Person. So, right against a person is called just in personam. Right against the goods is called just in rem. Just in rem. So, in the first case, you have what? You can retain the goods. Second case, see here you can retain the goods. Means what? Keep the goods like that. Second case, you can retain the goods or regain the goods? Regain. You can get the goods back. In the third case, you can neither retain nor regain. But only thing you can do is, I can sue the buyer. At boss, I have already delivered the goods. Where is the money? I can sue you for the money. So the beauty of this is, unpaid is a very important point. There are two rights. Rights against the goods called just in rem, right against the buyer, just in personam. Three rights are there. For what? 
right against the goods right number 1 right of lien right of lien means what right to retain tell me when i can retain only in scenario number 1 which means goods have not left the factory goods have not left the uh, seller at all goods are with the seller only second one right of lien is also called right to retain right of lien is also called what right to retain second right of stoppage in transit right of stoppage in transit means what right to regain the goods it's going there i can stop and ask him to come back right to regain third one i will wait for you you will still not buy the goods can i sell the goods to somebody yes right of resale i have asked you for 10000 you have paid 8000 rupees I will keep calling you. Pay remaining two thousand and take the goods. Take the goods. You are not coming only. I said, sir, I am selling it. I am sorry. You come take your eight thousand back. I am selling the goods because I cannot keep waiting for the goods for you to come and pick the goods. So when I have already sold the goods to you, but the goods are lying with me. You are not coming and taking the delivery. I am an unpaid seller. You still haven't paid me though two thousand rupees. Am I owner or non-owner as a seller? Non-owner. Goods I have already sold it to you. can i still transfer better ownership by selling the goods to somebody else yes exception to the rule of nemo dat quod non abet see unpaid seller can an unpaid seller sell the goods to somebody else when the original buyer is not coming and taking the goods yes possible coming back yes right of stoppage in transit is what the goods have already left the seller has it reached the buyer no i can stop the goods in transit third one is what right of resale right of resale will happen when the goods are with me also or when the goods are in transit also i'll get back the goods and sell it off so this covers both one and two should i give notice to the buyer only if it is non perishable goods i am a bakery i have ordered uh, 100 loaves of bread you have paid 60% advance also i am asking you to come and take the delivery or not taking i'll wait for one day can i wait for three days entire bread will go stale immediately i will sell it to somebody without even telling you you will come and say where is my bread i said boss the delivery date was so and so i called you so many times you did not come i am sorry please take your advance thank you i have already sold the goods to somebody else right perishable goods no need of notice but non perishable goods you need notice now here in right of lien right to retain there can be many reasons reason number 1 only cash sales are allowed credit sales are not allowed i have told come and buy pay cash and take the goods you have still not come can i retain the goods till you come and pay yes second i have given it on credit two months credit but you have still credit period is already over you still not paid goods are lying with me i have told you sir in two months you make the payment take 50% delivery remaining 50% in two months you make the payment after that you please take credit credit period i have given credit period is over i am calling you i still not coming and taking the goods can i sell it yes third one i come to know that you have become insolvent when i come to know that you have become insolvent buyer i know for sure you will never come and buy the goods so can i sell it off yes interesting to know that buyer's insolvency is just one of the conditions here it is not the main condition just one of the conditions but when can you stop the goods in transit important to know the goods are going in the lorry to the buyer and court has passed an order saying that you have become insolvent who buyer immediately i can call the lorry fellow and say boss stop and turn back can i do it for any other reason 100% no i understanding guys in right to retain what is the one of what is one of the reasons insolvency in right to regain what is the main reason 
insolvency. Can I regain the goods if the buyer is solvent? No. Once the goods have left the seller, can I take back the goods if the buyer is solvent? No. When can I take back the goods? Only if the buyer is insolvent. If you see, if the buyer is not insolvent, this right cannot be exercised. The goods, when they have left the place and I have come to know that the buyer is still solvent, I cannot take back the goods. What is the other right that I have then? Only right against the buyer. I can sue you, right? Just sin personam. Just sin personam. Got it? So, in the right to regain, buyer's insolvency is the main condition. In right to retain, buyer's insolvency is just one of the conditions. Once the goods have already uh, left the seller, it is about to reach the buyer. Buyer is not insolvent. Right to regain, not possible. Goods have already reached. So, in this case, it is going already. Buyer is not insolvent. I cannot go for this. Second case, it has already reached there. Can I touch the goods? No. Then I can only sue the buyer. What can I sue the buyer for this one? One, suit for price. I can say, sir, where is the money? I have sold you the goods. Where is the money, sir? Please. I will sue you directly for the money. Second, suit for damages for non-acceptance. That fellow buyer is not allowing the lorry to come inside only. He is telling, no, I don't want. Thank you. I said, boss, you would never told me you are cancelling the contract. I have sent my lorry all the way and are not accepting it. Why? Give me a reason. No, no, I don't feel like. Today is Rao Kala. Come to Naleba. Come tomorrow. Tomorrow also I come. Same. Naleba. No. Then I can sue you for what? Non-acceptance. Third. For repudiation. You will cancel the contract before the due date only. Seller calls up and says, order cancelled. It's like telling you will order from Swiggy. That delivery agent has picked up already. You will call up and tell, I don't want. Can you cancel? No. Cash on delivery will order. You will order some item. That uh, thing is coming now. You will call up that delivery fellow and say, I don't want the food. Will you, should you pay or not pay? 100 percent you should pay. That seller, in this case Swiggy, through the hotel, will sue you or the buyer. For repudiation means cancellation before due date. You should have paid 1 crore today. You paid 1 crore after 1 year. Can I sue you for interest lost? Yes. I can sue you for the interest also. Definitely I can sue you for the interest. These are all the rights against the buyer and seller. The same thing is there here. You can just... Last part guys, auction sale. When I sell via auction, when is the auction completed? Amount is uh, done or when the fall of the hammer? So, there was an examination question for 4 marks. I will show you the video. You just tell me who is liable. This is actually, I show, was showing this video for fun. They asked it in the exam. Who is liable? Buyer, seller or auctioneer? Sound not needed. Very simple. He is just asking any other bidding, bidding number 1, bidding number 2. He will strike the hammer, Damar. Who is liable? Buyer, seller or auctioneer? Auctioneer is an agent. He will never be liable. Buyer, he will never be liable to outsider. Seller will sue him later. Buyer, seller or auctioneer? As per contract act, Sale happens at the fall of the hammer. But as per sale of goods act, risks and rewards should be transferred fully. Has it been transferred? No. So, what will apply? Sale of goods act or contract act? Sale of goods act. Who is liable? Seller only. Auctioneer is only an agent. Sale is complete when the 
auctioner announces its completion by fall of the hammer plus risks and rewards should be completely transferred. But if you make use of something called pretended bidding, the seller now is very smart. He knows that whatever item is selling, it will only go for 10 lakhs. But he wants to push it to 25 lakhs. How will he push? By playing on the ego of the persons attending the auction. It's all an ego game. He will plant 3-4 of his people only. And when the one seller is selling uh, 5 lakhs, his agent will tell 5 lakh 10,000. The actual uh, person cannot take it. The rich guy cannot take it. 10,000 rupees extra that some chopper fellow is ordering. I haven't even seen him. No, I will ensure that he will not buy it. He will tell 6 lakhs. One more agent I have planted. No, he will tell 6 lakh 10,000. Like that, what could be sold for just 10 lakhs? I will push by playing on the ego of all these rich people. I will push it to 25 lakh. I will push it to 25 lakh. Then he will buy for 25 lakh. Some random fellow will buy for 25 lakh. So when that 25 lakh fellow is very happy now. Yes, item belongs, this entire thing is mine. Then he is going to the washroom. Then he is seeing me, I am the main seller, along with all my agents celebrating. Champagne. Can he sue me? After the sale, can he sue me? No. Correct answer? Yes. As usual, ulta. Yes. If the seller makes use of pretended bidding to raise the price, the sale is voidable at the option of the buyer. It is also called as bid rigging. Rig means manipulation. Bid rigging. Write it properly. Bid digging and all don't write. Correct? This D will come here. Right? Bed digging, beer digging, all that. Right. So, if you see what? Sale is voidable at the option of the buyer, also called as bid rigging. This Latin maximum and all you leave, guys. Not needed. Cool. That's about it. So, this completes what? Sale of Goods Act also. Very easy. Chiller law. 12 to 15 marks will come in the exam. They will ask you case studies. Various case studies. So, what you need to do is follow the... Indian contact at tomorrow, 10 a.m. onwards, please watch. But this video will be uploaded after that Indian contact at video anyway. So basically, those who are watching the video, don't listen to tomorrow, leave it. So just go to the, my, uh, what do you say, channel and watch all the videos. And study well. Will you pass or fail? You should tell fail because opposite will happen. All law you are telling ulta only, no? If you tell fail, you will pass. Yes or no? Yes. I will fail. Good. Yes. Which means you will pass. Correct. All the best guys. I hope it was of use. Some use. Cool. See you next time whenever. Okay. All the best. Keep in touch. Do well. Watch the videos and uh, I think Krilna ma'am will be taking day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow she will be taking LR. Logical reasoning. Take care. Bye. See you.